Pro World Championships, so there's plenty to play for. With so much on the line, who will hold their nerve and be crowned our champions? What we are about to witness is more than just a game. More than just entertainment or a way to pass the time. Goodness. And so nearly! This is a test of mental fortitude. Oh, it's gone in. Reflexes, a strategy, and most importantly, teamwork. There are no more auditions, warm-ups, or training matches. This is it. Yes, come on. Winner takes it out. Come on. A chance to vindicate all the hours of work, training, and practice. Oh, that's beautiful from Dragon. This is more than just a game. This is a sport. Into I don't believe this. A sport to inspire fans. Shot from distance. To provide a sense of belonging and pure joy. The E Premier League Grand Finals. It's never just a game. You heard the man. This is more than just a game. And that film shows just how important this competition is to everyone involved. And so to look ahead at what's coming up today, I've been joined by a man who knows exactly how our players will be feeling. Brian Pessoa. It's lovely to have you behind the desk, but you've actually yeah. played in this competition before. I mean, how must the players be feeling right now? I think they'll be nervous, but they'll be excited. It's a huge opportunity, a massive event, and yeah, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to it. Talk to me about this, Ryan. The step up in competition, £30,000 yep. between them. These trophies that are here as well will be in our winners' hands. There's a lot to play for today. Yeah, absolutely. It's Championship Sunday. It's what all the players will aspire to, to achieve. They've made a the distance. They've come this far into the top eight. And they know it's in touch and distance, as you said, not just the trophy and the prize money, but qualification for the E-Champions League, potentially, and, of course, the FC World Championship. So they'll be looking forward to it. Now we know our top eight, Ryan. Just how close do you think the competition is going to be today? Extremely. As you mentioned, the top eight, it's the best of the best. It's the best eight teams remaining. I think we'll see some upsets, potentially, but, of course, some of the favourites were eliminated in previous days. So, yeah, hopefully for the players that they perform to their high standards. I was about to say I'm excited to see some of those upsets and then I realised that sounds absolutely horrible. So I'm going to say that I'm excited to see how all of these teams perform today. And here is how our quarterfinals are going to be lining up. Man City, Luton, Brighton and Liverpool all qualified automatically to the quarterfinals, courtesy of winning their respective groups back in January. Their opponents, meanwhile, made it through a tough knockout eliminator yesterday. And Ryan, let's quickly talk about what happened yesterday because it was tough for the players. It was grueling. They had to play two matches each and now they're back again. So do you think that warm up and that experience of playing on the stage already this weekend will help them going into the finals? I actually think it will. Of course, you had the four teams that were able to just sit and observe their potential opponents for today. But for the likes of Man United, Dragon, we saw lyrics as well for Tottenham Hotspur, they were flying. So for them, I think they'd kind of be wishing that the day could have continued, but they have to reset and prepare for today. Looking ahead to our first game, we've got two competitors who the whole of Eastwatch know, Matthias Bernardo taking on, and Tech taking on Lyrics and Tom Lees. Yep. Manchester City against Tottenham, huge matchup. Did you see enough from Lyrics and Tom yesterday that they can go on against the deadly duo of Tex and Bernardo? You know what, Lyrics really impressed me. Not just with his, his game style, his improvement of the knowledge of mechanics in the game and his adaptability, but the way he handled just sort of adversity and playing against a, a friend of his and Shells as well, and he won resoundingly. Is it enough to take on Tex? I don't know. I think Tex just has a little bit too much. OK, really, really quickly, we've got to discuss what we were talking about before we went live, because you yeah. actually think Banana is going to lose today. I think Tom, Tom Lee for me, is one of the best players in the world. And I'm not just saying that, I think Matias is as well. I think that game, for me, on paper, is closer than Tex versus Lyrics. Despite Lyrics doing so well yesterday, I just think Tex is, is the mm. top tier. And Bernardo was statistically the best player from the group stage. Well, boasting to FC Pro Professionals, Manchester City came into the E-Premier League as one of the pre-tournament favourites, and they justified that billing in the group stages as Tex and Bernardo topped their group with an impressive 22 points out of 24. And the pair seemed very relaxed heading into the quarterfinals. Relentless from Texas, ruthless. Bernardo makes it four. We bring experience and not experience. Let me explain, yeah. I'm the experienced one in the Premier League, but then we've got the newcomer, yeah, Matty, so we've got a bit of, bit of both. 
and I think that's going to gel and uh, we lift the e Premier League trophy. Well, the first round was incredible. I'm so proud of uh, my team, of, my, of myself. Four matches in my, in my first time in the Premier League and four wins, so I'm so proud. I personally don't like watching the tournament because it gets me a little bit nervous. I can't start thinking to myself, I want to play him, I want him out of the tournament, blah, blah, blah. And it gets my heart rate going. I get scared watching other games going on and my heart yeah. starts pounding. And for my side, yes, I, I want to watch my, my opponent for the tactics. is so important for me. Winning the tournament on Sunday will mean a lot because, number one, it repays the trust that City have put in me and Matty. Number two, it's winning a tournament and that's what we play for. We want to win tournaments. And number three, obviously, you've got your Champions League and World Cup sports. So, yeah, it'll, it'll mean a lot. <laughs> What a finish that is from Tech. Give me one word to describe your group stage. Mystica. <laughs> well, you can see how excited those boys are to get started at the E Premier League today. I'm joined by Richard Buckley. We're going to break down some of their play. I mean, we have to talk about the stats first because I called them a deadly duo. We know what they can do. What do the stats say, Richard? The stats tell a very dominant story, uh, I've got to be honest. If we can have a look at some of these stats very shortly indeed, you're just going to see true dominance, and that's the word for it. Bernano, four wins, zero draws, zero losses, 8.5 shots per game. When you look at the goals that they scored, 41 combined in their sort of games that they played as well. And corners are a very... It's a, a touchy subject at the moment because it, we said on commentary, it's pretty much a, a penalty if you get a corner at the moment. But what they're doing from corners, especially Tex, that was two performances there, is scoring different types of corners, going to the back post, going into the edge of the box. This is a couple from Bonanno as well, and he just made his group, I'll be honest, look really easy. He, he walked past everyone, and what Ryan was saying about his individual performances that's coming up against Tom Lees, I think that's a huge game. I actually think Tom's a slight favourite in his game. But for me, the match is going to be decided in that first game because Tex is a massive favourite against Lyrics. Um, I just don't know if Lyrics is going to have enough. 41 goals between Good them. Job. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Quick question for you, Richard. How do you stop them? <laughs> Lyrics has to get a, a decent performance out of himself in that first game. He showed that he's got that. Was it a one-off against Shells or is that something that we can expect from him? Is that his level? If he plays like he did against Shells in that game against Tex, first up, it gives Tom massive confidence. A one-goal loss, a two-goal loss, Tom can do that against Bonanno. Right, well, we'll see what happens, Richard. Thank you so much. As we know, Tottenham made it into the quarterfinals, and Leah, well, she's caught up with their players' lyrics and Tom Lees to see how they're feeling ahead of today. Hello, you guys. I am backstage as the players are warming up. We can ignore the height difference, but what we're not going to ignore is the performance of these two quarterfinalists from yesterday, Tom Lees and Lyrics for Tottenham Hotspur. Tom, we'll come to you first. How do you feel about your performance yesterday? Yeah, I feel good. Second game, I had my feet up watching Lyrics win 5 0, so hopefully more of the same today. We know it's the knockout day or the finals day now, so it's going to have to go up another level, obviously playing Man City, but confident after yesterday's performance. Amazing. And then Lyrics, of course, obviously with your ridiculously dominant performance yesterday, rolling back the years. How do you feel about that in comparison to the group stages? Um, yeah, it's a complete switch, and um, I don't think I won a game in the whole group stage, and I won both my games yesterday, so, yeah. Quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept a clean sheet in both games as well, so I was happy with my defending, and, um, yeah, look forward to more of the same today, hopefully. Amazing. Well, as we know, going up against the opponent, the juggernaut, Manchester City, the biggest game of the day, debatably. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, full of respect for Tex and Matthias. It's probably an argument they're two of the greatest players to ever play, so we know that this could be seen as like what people would see as a final maybe because of how, how good they are, but not scared, especially after yesterday, the way we played. I don't think we can fear anyone at this point. There you go. Eric's? Kind of the same to be fair. Um, I feel like the fact that I've been playing against Tex for a few years and I've competed with him for a few years, even though, you know, I had a little hiatus, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm confident going into it. Not Amazing. scared at all. Well, I will let you guys get back to it, get your practice in and back to you guys. It's interesting hearing Lyrics talk about defending as one of the difference makers because although he went 6-0 in uh, both, across both his games yesterday, uh, defending in this game has actually changed significantly since January. Yeah, absolutely. The meta has shifted. It sort of re relates to 
I guess the meta changing in terms of just crossing. The aerial dominance from Erling Haaland. You've got Ruud Hullet in the squad as well. But I feel as if Lyrics, as you mentioned, defensively improved. Offensively as well, he was creating a lot of chances. So I think that helps him as well. Are we seeing people get experimental trying to defend from Haaland at that front and back post? Yeah, we saw players use different personnel, especially in the right back position. They, would, they sort of tended to use players that were like the Rodri, for example. Six foot three, his stature in game compared to a conventional right back. We never really saw Cal Walker, for instance, but I think maybe the, the couple months difference between now and the group stages could have helped Lyrics a lot. Well, we've got to get the players ready, and I'm hearing that they're almost ready to go, in fact. So we are going to be live with the first quarterfinal when we return. Welcome back to the finals of the E Premier League 2024. It's almost time to kick off the first quarterfinals, so let's bring out those first two teams. Please welcome from Manchester City, it's Tex and Bonanno. And for Tottenham Hotspur, Lyrics and Tom Lees. And what a match we have here. Our first quarter final of the day. A huge one. Tex, Matthias Bernardo representing Manchester City. Lyrics and Tom Lees representing Tottenham Hotspur. Four players that all know each other well. Four heavyweights when it comes to esports. And these guys are going head to head. And I think we're ready to get into it, Frankie. We are ready to get into it, but before we do, please feast your eyes on my boys here in the commentary booth. Obviously, we know Grab brings the flair every time he's here. Brandon, today, give us a 12. Uh, I had about 24 hours to try and match Grab yesterday. Um, I'm still, <laughs> I he didn't say he was wearing about all these extra accessories he's added to his list, but he looks great as always, doesn't he? What is neglected to say is Inkara Silas is the real MVP of this production, but who is going to be the MVP of this first matchup, boys? Are you feeling Spurs? Are you feeling Man City? Uh, you know, we're commentators, Frank, if we sit on the fence. 
just give us a good game. That's yeah. absolutely not true at all. It's what you're going to get, so um, I'm sorry. I think you're going to be slightly biased towards Banana. He is the Spanish champion, or former Spanish champion, I should say. Yeah, he is, but uh, I'm, I'm a commentator as well. I, I cannot be biased, sorry. Oh. But yeah, my yes, it is. I'll, I'll take Spurs. If Apparently, I'm rubbish at staring off drama, <laughs> so I'm going to retire while I'm ahead. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Frankie. Yeah. Yes, welcome to Championship Sunday here. In this year's E Premier League 2024 Grand Finals for South Brown and Smith and Hammy Alvarez, guiding you through what is going to be an action packed day of action here in London. I mean, it's very simple. We've got tickets to the FC Pro World Championship spots on the line. Four tickets to an E-Champions League final as well later on this year. This really is the biggest day of competition for the rest of these players in the eight clubs that are left in this year's E-Premier League, isn't it? Definitely. And I mean, we're going to see just an astonishing match because we're looking at probably the best team we've seen in the knockout format, which is Spurs. But then Man City on the group format. I mean, Texas scoring 22 goals, being the, I mean, being an absolutely beast. But then Matias as well, having 12 points, the best defense in the competition. I don't know what to expect. Let's jump into it. Well, we've had to wait quite some time to see Manchester City back in action here at the Premier League. They were top of the group, as you rightly said, Gravis, and they were incredible with the form they showed. 41 goals scored and an unbeaten record, seven wins, one draw, and it could already be an early start for them as. Brutal it's slightly too keen off the mark. Referee pulls the one back for a free kick. We are kicking off on the Xbox first and foremost, which you could argue that this is the format that these players are used to from the group stages. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I do think Lyrics is more comfortable playing the first leg, and I do think Tex is comfortable as well playing the first leg because I I think in the past he, he has been playing the Premier League for so long now that I do think he wants to get the job done in a way. So... I do think he's the favourite coming up to his match, and it's not a, a I don't know, a risk-taking thing to do. But in a way, lyrics yesterday, two matches, six goals, zero goals conceded. What can you expect from lyrics today? Well, that's the thing, isn't it, Gravis? If we're being brutally honest about lyrics, it was a, a pretty terrible performance that we saw in January in the group stages from him. He played four games, he lost three of those, did get one draw, and he had one of the lowest XGs in the competition from an individual player who is averaging about one goal a game and only five shots, which in the grand scheme of things, if you look across the board, every single FC Pro player here is averaging sort of seven, eight, nine shots a game. They're creating chances, but for Lyrics, he just couldn't really get going back in January. Whatever he's done in the last two months, though, Gravison, he's come back flying yesterday, scored six goals, did not concede one, and basically pulled Spurs through to a quarter-final matchup here against Manchester City. Here is Lyrics looking to build up with his first real chance of the game against Tex. He only did draw one game in the competition. It's lofted into Haaland, could be on a hard volley back to Haaland again. It's defended well just about or not. We're still playing around the box. Lyrics is causing all sorts of problems. Virgil van Dijk, Lauren Blanc, it's brilliant. Oh. Feed. Needs Virgil van Dijk there again just to make the perfect block. But already 15 minutes in, you've already seen a small insight of what we can expect in an attacking sense from Lyrics. Especially with the skills, I mean, we've seen the cross, but after the cross, we see Croqueta, we've seen Elastico, we've seen a lot of things. Now, Tex decides to pause up the match because he's not feeling comfortable at the moment, but still, 20 minutes, just played, and I do think Lyrics is feeling comfortable in this game. Well, the one thing that I wanted to speak about was we were coming into this backstage, Gravison. The last time that these two played was back in 2020. They've not played for four years. And if you remember back in, the days of 2019 and, and 20 in terms of the FC game. There was a lot of competition there, and you could argue that both those two were at their best. That was when Tex was discovered, wasn't it? Back in 2019, he went on a rampage. He won DC Premier League tournament with Liverpool and Lyrics. He was very much in that conversation as well. He was performing well in big EA major tournaments. So the fact they've not played for four years, it's crazy. It only feels like yesterday. I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful because, for example, I was still a player at that time, 2020. I played against both of them. Lyrics was one of the best players in the world at that moment. But for him to make this beautiful narrative of him coming back after four years, still playing at his best, I mean, dominating as he did against Crystal Palace and especially Cells. I mean, he, he's definitely one of the players to watch after yesterday. Sadly, it's just confidence is oozing out in these sort of areas against a player like Tex, but you have to be confident. Here's Cole Palmer down the byline looking for potentially a cutback. You see Hyomin Son back there defending for Manchester City, of all people. And a big switch of play. 
Keep in mind that with just two wins, it's easier said than done. Your season can completely change. Two wins guarantees you an E-Champions League ticket and three wins, of course, will guarantee you this year's trophy, £30,000. And the, the money can't buy tickets to the FC Pro World Championship Finals later on this year, where only 32 of the best players in the world can be at. And the E-Premier League does offer two fast-track tickets to that competition. As we know, this year, the playstyles have been implemented into FC24. And we've seen a lot of finesse shots from players like Henry, players who have the playstyle plus, which is a kind of a booster for some stats. In this example, the shooting system. Uh, we did have a finesse shot coming out from Henry, and I do think, especially with Tex, he uses so much the playstyles in a really good way. So I do think we're going to see a lot of finishes this match and probably some goals as well. One thing you can expect from Tex, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fans watching from home. He will create chances, and when you play against him, you have to sort of think in two ways, Graveson. Either I need to score goals, and it's going to be a case of an outscoring affair, or I'm going to have to somehow keep him at bay and defend him really well, which is certainly not easy for a player that averages, what, eight to nine shots per game. You know he's going to create chances, you know he's going to be so deadly. You're absolutely right. It was nine shots per game in the group stage. It was the volume of chances. I mean, nine shots is a lot. Scoring 22 goals, that's just like, what, five chances? Like, five clear chances per game? And how do you think Manchester City would have felt yesterday? Because obviously they weren't playing in the competition. They had to sit back and just, I guess, soak into this atmosphere of the Premier League of seeing teams get eliminated, seeing teams win, 90th minute goals. Long ball over the top. Is there a flip on available? Two hands on it in the end from Allison. But it must have been a really strange feeling for them because as a, a, a pro yourself, Graveson, you just want to get going. You don't want to come to a tournament and sit, sit around all day. Not really. I mean, you just want to play. So, for example, Tex was playing throughout the whole day pretty much, warming up. He did have a chance to commentate in here as well, so he can do it all. But... Yeah, he was playing throughout the whole day in the warming area. I mean, you, when you're a player, you just got to play. There's a chance for Yonmin Song for Tex. Lyric dives into a tackle. There's the cutback. And there's Erling Haaland for Manchester City. Getting things started. It's the first time they've competed back in this competition since January, and they've been itching to get back on this stage. And it just comes in there. There was a slight hesitation with the tackle from Lewis. He dived into it. Tex took his time, found the perfect comeback. And just like that, I mean, who else would it be? Erling Haaland for Manchester City. One goal to the good. Yeah, I do think he should have had a little bit more of patience. But again, against Tex, it's hard because you kind of go for the tackle to pray for the best. But then with Haaland, the time finishing, green, you got what? You got few chances in these kind of matches. You gotta take the most of them, and he did. Green time into a net, one nil. Well, we've just blinked, and it's half time already between these two in our first quarter final match. And Matias Bonanno will be in action against Tom Lees in our next match following this one. He's just getting ready and getting set. That'll be over on the PlayStation. If you're unfamiliar with the format of the Premier League, it's two matches. It's an aggregate scoreline that comes together. For example, if Tex was to win this game 2-0 and Tom Leakes was to go and win on the PlayStation 2-0, we would then go into extra time on that PlayStation matchup. It's something that we haven't had to do as of yet in the e Premier League. But, I mean, look, this is a championship Sunday. The stakes are risen here, Gravis, and I'm sure there'll be some late drama of some sort, maybe a few penalties along the way too. Let's look back on the goal that Tex yeah. did score. Graveson, talk me through this, because although people might think it was a simple finish, he still timed the shot. Yeah, which is not an easy thing to do. I do think the tackle, it is the right decision, because I thought he was going for the shot with Human Son. Maybe a finesse to the back post, maybe he could have tried to go near post. I mean, the shot was there, but he was patient enough to just kind of wait for a couple of seconds. He tried to tackle, the tackle was wrong, and I mean, Finding Haaland and then green time shooting it, it was just a perfect attack. But the cutbacks are really a thing, obviously, here in FC24. Tex, straight off the mark in the second half, looking to find a second early doors. You have to think as well if Lewis can keep this down to a one goal scoreline. It certainly would shake things up or not. 
as Arlen Haaland could be on his way to a hat trick. They decide the match up. And again, he comes down from that pylon area again. Ben Chilwell did so well to just completely take Patrick Vieira out of the equation. And you see a little outpour of emotion. It's still going to be a long old road. But the first steps have been perfect. Is Yomin Song on side? No, he's not. You can see what it means to the whole city team. Zach Moore, Tex, Edu and Mati. And I mean, he took the bait. He took the bait, he pulled the right back out, in this case, Vieira, and he missed time, the tackle, which is twice in a row now. And I do think when we're, you're playing in this stage, in the Championship Sunday, you cannot afford to defend poorly, which he did. And that's the second goal from Tex. Chilwell again, looking to cause more havoc. Keeping on that man, Erling Haaland, De Bruyne. My fancy chance on the edge of the belt. Ogbeni, a couple of step-overs, but with the ball back again off Cole Palmer. City looking for a third, Texas feeling all the confidence in the world now, as you can imagine. This is a good result for him. I mean, 2-0 in the first leg, giving that to your teammate is... And I mean, look, it's really that good. PlayStation game is, is ridiculous. You look at the quality between the two players there, you've got a past E-Premier League champion in Tom Lee. So then, you, as we were speaking, Gravison, Matias Pedano, he's been a, a league champion in Argentina, in Spain, now has come over to have the E-Premier League onto his collection, his first ever time in the competition. He could be the first player in the world, in FC, to win three different regular leagues, which is an astonishing stat. But then, Tom, again, former EPL champion, one of the best players in the world, undoubtedly. It's not an easy thing to do, beating Tom. Well, the one thing that Tom has on his side, he's got one of the best sort of XGs of a player. He averages just under five goals a game from what we've seen throughout this whole competition from him. I know he's playing against Matias Bonanno, but nice he'll press. have to bring goals into that second Matchup. Yon Min Song on for a third, potentially. Haaland misses him out of the equation. Couple of step overs. Could have went down to ground. Still, this is on. Alive, it's bad to it. Does De Bruyne fancy his chances? Alisson, big save. And just about dealt with again by Spurs, who are hanging in on a two goal lead. It could have very easily been 3 0 to Manchester City there. And that's why the goalkeeper movement is so important because, I mean, the build up was almost perfectly. He found Kevin De Bruyne, it was a clear chance, but then he decided to move the keeper. He moved it right, and it could have been 3-0, which would have been almost an impossible mountain to climb, in a way. Just the goal, Graveson, would be a huge push-up for his teammate. One goal in FC is nothing. I mean, even a two-goal lead really is nothing. We saw that yesterday as... Manchester United came back from 3-0 down against Aston Villa. So go on a rampage there with Dragon there in action later on today when they play against Liverpool in one of our other quarter-final matches here at the Premier League. Also, Brian take on Wolves. Nice build-up. Luton Town against West Ham United. That's our final late in the competition. Tex is on a rampage at the moment, looking for a third on the finesse! That is Thierry Henry! That makes it three for Man City. And the gap just keeps on building. That's a beautiful goal. I mean, we talked about it, the finesse and the playstyle pluses. The build-up was right, triggering a run to the left back, which kind of overloads one side, so it's really difficult to defend a 3v1 situation. He then found Hullit on the inside, which was a really good pass, but then he passed it back to Chilwell, then he found an easy pass to Henry, and I mean... Cre He's been loving the possession on that side of the pitch, though, hasn't he, Graveson? Ben yeah. Chilwell's always been overloaded there, causing problems, and it's just constantly asking questions of lyrics. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a hard thing to defend against, because with Henry, he could have passed it back to Spanish Tiger or De Bruyne, and again, play styles. You have those... You have the danger of a finesse shot, you have the danger of a bullet pass, so you don't know what to expect, really, in the defence. But then he timed it perfectly <clears throat> again. Three goals, three time finishing green shots. When the chance arises, it's always perfect, isn't it, from Tex in terms of the timing of the finish. He always makes sure he's at a 99% or at least in the 90s. 
with the margins in his favour. Ooh. Nah. Could have been a... I'm sure that was one up. No, watch his sleeve. An orthodox kickoff, but it could have worked. Well, three nil down. Spurs are in this first leg, and it's all to do for Tom Lees. As they'll have to take on Matthias Bernardo. But this gap might extend even more. Vieira pickpocketed again, and he just doesn't really know how to defend. This text is oh! the deal. He's dropped oh! the shot. What a cancel! Incredible. The perfect timing to send the goalkeeper back in. And Man City are really on a rampage here in London. They make it 4-0. Oh, I mean, that was oh, the quality. And we can see what it means for Tex, but again, the shot cancellation. I mean, he's playing perfect FC at the moment. 4-0. The press is there, the build-up is there. The time finishing is there, and the shot cancellation as well. And for Texas standards as well, he's, he's on his way to come out of this one without conceding a goal. We're definitely expecting him to... Is there a flick on available? It could be on for another one, it could be all over. Oh, penalty! It's getting worse for Spurs! It could be five. And it's Erling Haaland. Looking to conclude a perfect hat-trick in a quarter-final for Manchester City, he does! 5-0! It really is a mountain to climb for Tom now. Five goals against Matias Bonano, arguably one of the best players in the world for the past three years. That seems like a tough task to perform. Well, there's such a... A team element in this E Premier League final. If you've got to do your bit for your teammate, it protects. But it's all Matias been on in the background there. It's just a big vamos. 5-0. I mean, he's in an, an unbelievable position that his teammate is going to set him up with. But for Tom Leach, you see in the background there, the stress that he must be feeling. A 5-0 swing he needs. I know he creates chances. I know he scores a lot of goals, and we've seen that throughout his tournament. But against the player of Matias Bernardo Gravis, and it's going to be... They need a miracle. I mean, every single build-up started with Chilwell, triggering a run, and Lewis didn't have an answer for that. I mean, it was just Chilwell, Henry, Hollett building up on the left side of the pitch against Vieira, and really, he, there's not much he could have done. I mean, Haaland, Haaland hasn't been shooting that much this match, apart from those two goals, but then the build-up, and also, I don't know, the danger of maybe a cross, maybe something. 5-0. Just a word on Tex as well, he is looking so confident now, isn't he? He said he was nervous before he came on the stage. Look at the press. A couple of goals has wiped those nerves away. Again, Chiwell on the run. Oh, mistake. He has to score at least once. And in time of one minute, it's the last chance for Spurs to get anything back from this game if they can. Haaland finds Carlos Tevez. It will take all the time in the world, tries nice to step defense. over his way through, and it'll be a massive win for Manchester City. 5-0. On the end of match number one between these two, it will go over to the PlayStation in the next couple of in-game minutes. But what a start, and I mean, what a tee-up for your teammate, of Matias Benign, to come into. Five-goal cushion, he really is in dreamland. It was perfection. It was a perfect FC match. The build-up was there, the press was there, the decision was there. Everything was there. I mean, when you win 5-0, it's just you played the perfect FC game. Uh, and sometimes, when I mean, it's, it's really a hard thing to do playing your first game of the tournament in the knockout format. You're playing against Lyrics, played who won 1-0 on 5-0, and then you beat him like this, 5-0. Tex, in a word. Their first game back in this tournament, as we said, in case you aren't aware of the Premier League format, for those four teams that top their group stages, they've basically got a fast-track ticket through to the quarter-finals. That was the first time we've seen Man City in action since their dominant group play. They had the most points of any team in the group stages. And this is where it all kicked off. 40 minutes into the game, Man City got their first. That was at the first half. And then four goals, Gravison, in quick succession in the second half. It just kept falling their way. As you can see, Chilwell, as I said, building up the play. He passes it to Haaland, Haaland into Henry, and when he sees the opening, he goes for it. We know Tex 
really loves those play styles. But again, I mean, this shot cancellation, he finds the pass inside. Whoa! That's amazing, the shot cancellation when there was on point, and then this final nail in the coffin, which was a bit lucky, we must say, this penalty, yeah. but still, you gotta score it. He did, and then he passes Matias Bonanno a 5 nil result. I mean, Matias is happy, and Edu is happy as well. Man City are happy, we could say. They should be, look, if we're being honest, they've got the most pressure on them in this tour of Manchester City. You know, the investment that they make outside of the Premier League into the ecosystem of the FC Pro. They've had players, obviously, in the FC Pro competition as well earlier on this year, and by their own standards, the performances weren't good enough. This E-Premier League tournament for them means everything in terms of qualification, not only to the E-Prem, uh, to the E-Champions League, which obviously, as we know, has replicated in the real world of football as well. They've got themselves a ticket that way. But those FC Pro World Championship spots will be everything. It's a massive task to do here for Tom Lees. But Gravison, how can he do it? Mentality. I know we know Tom is one of the best players, not only in the e Premier League but in the world. And again, he has come back a lot of times against really good players. We don't know if those players were the quality and the caliber of, I mean, Matias Bonanno. But still, he can do it. I mean, if someone can perform this task, it has to be Thomas Lees. Well, it would certainly make one of the best vlogs I think he's ever made. If he was to come back from 5-0 down, he was probably praying that maybe a slightly weaker player was sitting opposite him and not Matthias Bernardo, who was a runner-up in the E-Champions League a couple of seasons ago. A domestic league winner in Argentina and Spain. I'll be about to see an early star from him. Carl Palmer just sending a warning shot towards Man City's goal. If you are questioning why you've got Virgil van Dijk playing for Man City, Cole Palmer playing for Spurs, we are playing on ultimate team. There are grand finalists here at the Premier League. have got the ability to choose any current Premier League player and also past Premier League players in the form of heroes and icons, players that have had a career spell in the top flight of English football. That's why Rude Hullet and Sierra Henry also featuring a handful of these squads. Here comes Man City, looking to make it goal number six, finds it back to Thierry Henry, ball roll inside! And very nearly that got a lot worse for Tottenham Hotspur. What else can you do about that? I mean, that was really perfection, coming from Matias Bonanno. He could have went in with Henry, but the build-up again, we'll talk about a lot about build-up, but because, for me, it's what differentiates really good players from champions. And I do think the build-up we've seen from Matias Bonanno and from Tex has been perfect. Rashford, again, a, an uncommon start to the one for Matias Bonanno. Oh, goes down to ground, got to be careful there. Referee waves that one away. I mean, we've seen them give him for worse. Just a few minutes ago, yeah. I think that Tom's thinking as well, we're and every chance he has, he has to score. For me, you have to score and you cannot concede any goals. So you have to defend perfectly and you have to attack perfectly as well. Which is not an easy thing to do because we know if we could define Matthias' game style, it's defense and possession in a way. So you simply have to score every single chance, as you said. But then again, if you go inside Matthias Bonanos' head, should you keep possession? Should you attack? I think you should attack. And that's what he's doing at the moment. It is, but no, it's just desperate to get this goal number six. All in the back post, off the post. It's just about kept out. And maybe that is the lifeline that they needed. Because everything was perfect about it. It's even time green, Graveson. Everything. The cross was perfect. The header was perfect. He was time green. But still, so because it's manual, the headers, you gotta put it in the net. Holland just does enough to push off Ogbena. He was piling on all sorts of pressure. Big switch finds Kai Havertz from left back. Now it's a case of who's queuing up in the box to cause some havoc. There's Haaland, they just didn't quite match up. Take a look at those. Yeah, we have the first pause solicited for Spurs, which makes sense because something has to change. 
almost 30 minutes and no goals scored. But again, all beautiful over the top of the wall. Let's see what happens. Well, Bene's done so well here to get up the pitch from full back. Mm. And Bruno Fernandes will recover possession. That's the third of the game, good already. Man City still lead five goals to nil. After a dominant display from Tex in that first leg. Potential cross. It gets whipped in, there's Haaland, it's missed him completely. And it looked near enough like the perfect ball. Yeah, it really was. We know Havertz has that whip cross, playstyle. We we'll mentioned playstyles a lot today. But yeah, the offside trapping from Matias Manana has been really good. I think it's the first thing you need if you're defending well. Offside trapping and player switching. And he's been really good about both of his things. And for those that might be thinking, what are play styles and what do they offer to your players all across the pitch, Gravison, after this chance does come in, let me know a little bit more about that. There's Rashford, it's another great save from Van der Sar. Out it goes for a corner, but play styles, as you've seen, they offer a lot, don't they? Especially this year on FC24, since they've been introduced. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because sometimes, how do you stop? The area plus to Haaland. How do you stop the finesse of Henry? How do you stop the finesse of Hullet? How do you stop the whip cross of Havertz? There's not really an answer defensively. And that's why the play styles are one of the most important things in FC at the moment. <coughs> well, someone else who's had a great eye on that game across the first 30 minutes of this one. Manchester City, I mean, Tex is flying and has been flying 5 0. How on earth do you pull yourself out of this position? I don't think you can, if I'm being honest. I think a five-goal deficit, Gravison, is way too much. If maybe it was two, three maybe at a push, I think is doable for someone like Tom. But five no down, you come into the second leg, you basically have to go team press or constant pressure straight away. And there's so much space for Matias to capitalise on. And yeah, I just think it's a foregone conclusion. I can't see any way Spurs come back into this, I'll be honest. Well, they have to defend this corner before they can even think about attacking again. I'm sure. Edu and Matthias would have worked something here. Haaland on Haaland. So what's the back post it goes? Van der Sar on it. I do agree 100% with Ryan. Because I think if you lose the first leg 3-0, yeah. it's still doable. But then yeah. four goals, it's hard. Five? Five for me is... Do you know there's that little threshold we speak about, Garrison? It's like, players know. Where it's like five goals, how do you even approach the game? Do you go for it straight away? You can't really play your your own game if it was a nil-nil. It has to go now, Cole Palmer down the byline. It just did not tee up to Thierry Henry, who's waiting for it. Meant to not to get a goal in this first half, Ryan, you can... I think you're right off. Yeah, I think Tex was superb in that first game. I thought maybe the first 20 minutes or so, Lyrics had a few opportunities. He was forcing Tex into a couple of mistakes, but then as the game progressed, it was unbelievable from Tex. Man City on for six, maybe, or Benno. Oh. Another corner. So, catch it is what Tom's asking catch? for. Punch it away for another corner again. Last chance of the first half. Yeah. For Matisse Panano, he's, he's done his job, he hasn't conceded. De Bruyne. Schweinsteiger might fancy his chance from that far out dinked in. This is nice for Matisse Panano. Nearly just had enough space. To dink it over to there. Half time, Neil Neil, Man City still five and up and 45 minutes. Just not enough time. I do think in the first half, and Ryan can talk about this as well. When you're playing and you know you have 90 minutes to come back with five for goals, at least you gotta score once or twice. I think twice. Twice. In my head, I'll be thinking if I can get two by maybe half time, then maybe, you never know. But five and one half is something I don't believe we've. We've seen at this level of competition, not recently anyway. Five goals <coughs> against Matias Bonanno. Yeah, exactly. One of the best defenders in the scene, let alone in the E-Premier League. So it's going to be a tough ask to let alone get a couple goals, let alone five. Matias Bonanno in this competition has only conceded five goals. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to have to get that in game one number leg. five he's played in. Scored 19 of them in the group stages, conceded five. Obviously, we're here in the knockout stages now. He still hasn't conceded yep. a single goal. I was saying, Tom just wished that Matias Bonanno wasn't on the other side of the stage and it was someone else with not as many accolades offside. 
What do you think about that shot cancellation? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh. Down the goalkeeper. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Kai Havertz, bombing on from left back. Tom Lees and Spurs just desperate for anything. His time just trickles away. Matisse Bernardo doing such a good job of making this such a compact midfield and defensive line. Nice step over exit. Van Dijk's there on his toes. Unfortunately, Haaland just nowhere to be seen. Back nice to De Bruyne, press. could have finessed that. No, not mm, unlucky. Nice good press. press. Win again. Down this byline area and just patient. Matthias Bernardo, although he might have panicked slightly there on the press and given possession away again, but recovers so well, Ryan. Yeah, incredibly well, just as Gravison was saying, the player switching, defending, knowing when and when not to press in on the attacker who's in possession, cutting the lanes well as well, manually. As you see, these are the, the situations, just the counter-attack, there's going to be so much space and options. Well, this is the risk that Spurs have had to take, they've had to send so many bodies forward. What else can you do, really? I mean, you have to press like Tommy's doing, because he's one of the best players pressing in the Premier League throughout his whole career, pretty much. But still, when you have that mountain to climb, it's really hard. But I do think, and I want to talk about this with you, Ryan, yep. I do think defense comes down to three things, which are the offside traps, the player switching, and the second man press. Mm -hmm. And when you performing at the level that Matias is doing, how can you attack that? It's so difficult, especially as you said, <laughs> attacking it if it's just nil-nil in a one-off game is hard enough. But when you're down by five, you feel the pressure of... We saw Tom there, when he got the ball back from the pressing high up, just giving the ball away easily countless times and it's just because he's rushing he's panicking he knows that he, can, he has to score so it, it just feeds into Matias' hands they couldn't really have asked for it to go any better could they Manchester City at this point 5-0 they lead they'll be taking on the winner of Luton against West Ham that follows up after this one here in our second quarter final just see a small glimpse there of the changes that Tom Lees is having to make and I'll leave it, I'll leave it. Time is just running out of their hands. As I said, it's such a team element here at the e Premier League. Two legs of an aggregate scoreline. That first match is so important. Constant press. And if it does swing one way, as it has, the gap just becomes so big and too hard to even think about a comeback. Although he's not scored a goal grabber, so Matisse Pernay has just done a great job of containing all the pressure that's come his way. Oh, the defence again. I mean, you don't really need to score if you defend like this. The space. Able to break away, Matisse Pernay looking for goal number six. He certainly does want to add one onto his tally. Because why not? Back to Hullet. Into Verne around the keeper. 6-0 Man City. They're on their way to a semi-final. It's just a fantastic goal, I'll be honest. Just the player switch. I mean, the, the player lock, the cancel as well, Gravison, just to bait Tom to step forward and then actually playing the pass afterwards with the player lock. I do think he's not going to stop. It's a tough position for Tom because you got to press, but I don't think Matisse is stopping. Haaland. It's just, it's just such a scary roster, isn't it? That Man City team. Yeah. Tex Matias Bernardo. You look at the accolades between them. You look at what they have done in this space. You know, regardless, there is a lot of pressure on them to go and win this competition. But the reps that they've got to land, the, the experience they've got of big matches like this. And no doubt one of their hardest games in this competition. And they are on their way to a semi-final, potentially keeping a clean sheet on the way through to. It does look like if a goal is coming in, it's from Manchester City at the moment. He's not done yet. 
Oh, this is superb. Schweinsteiger. Oh, does it have to go? And I think if you're on this side of the bracket with Man City, you just want to avoid them. You do not want to be on this side of the bracket. Still looking for a consolation spurt. It won't be much more than that, unfortunately. This time just trickles away. And unfortunately, it will be a top eight exit. Just all areas of the pitch. Virgil van Dijk there covering possession for Matthias Bernardo, who has even got the confidence to pull out a smile there. But it was heartbreak last year for Spurs. They came second in the Premier League, losing to the hands of Leeds United. They always make the knockout stages, but it will be a case of coming back for 2025. But for Tex, though, it'll be the first time that he has made it through to a top four in the Premier League. And we got to say, that's the reason why we love and respect Tom so much. He really is trying. He is trying to score a goal. He's trying to play at his best. But it's, it's just a mountain to climb. Seven goals at the moment. This has to be GG. Well, the attitude is spot on. He has to do everything he can. But it's the same for Tex. We know we won this competition back in 2019. Since 2020, he's, he's always crumbled at this stage. Top eight, if you remember it, two years in a row, when he was representing Liverpool, did crash out in the quarterfinals. It was back in 2020 when he actually made the top four. So he's back amongst the top four again. Is this Man City's year to go and make it two Premier League trophies in a row? After that win a couple of years ago in a dramatic penalty shootout ending against Leeds United where Shells was able to win it there. Lofted in towards the back post. It could set up nicely for just a consolation. The goalkeeper movement was perfect. Man City have been perfect in all senses, in all areas of the pitch. Any time to follow. Can you really look more than the perfect performance in this? It's been unbelievable, Gravison. Even just the defending from Matisse, they didn't look as if Tom had any way back into the game. Not really. Game management, defence, mechanics. He's got the best defensive record in this tournament, Matisse Bernardo. Still five goals conceded, but a massive 7-0 for Manchester City, which will see them through to this year's semi-finals of the competition where they'll be taking on the winner of Luton Town or West Ham. A huge 5-0 first matchup from Tex against Lyrics. And as much as Tom Lees could try and get himself back into the game, Matias Bernardo defended so well. And it was a case of, unless Tom started scoring early doors, Ryan, there was never going to be a chance of a comeback. But Matias Bernardo showed what he's all about, added two more goals onto the tally. And uh, yeah. This Man City side is pretty scary right now. Yeah, I, I feel like the tie was done from the first leg. I just think a five-goal deficit is way too much to, to try and come back from. I think Tom had a tough task on, on his hands to even win the game with Matias playing like that, let alone come back from a five-goal loss in the first game. Yeah, definitely. It's just not not only scoring, but scoring five goals. I do think it's, it's almost impossible against a player like Matias Bonanno. Uh, yeah, I mean... It's so tough now. as well, isn't it? You come into that second leg. Obviously, we know your teammate. You, yep. you go up against Tex. You're seeing 2-0. Okay, 3-0. Keep it at 3-0. Part of the bus. <laughs> yeah, then it just... Four, five. Next thing you know, you're thinking, how on earth am I yeah. going to be able to, to, to pull this back? However, the game is done. Manchester City are in the semi-finals. I believe Leah is catching up with Tex now. Thank you so much, Brandon. We are here with the winners. Manchester City Tex is alongside me. Obviously, a very dominant performance from you, setting up Matty for the second round. How do you feel? What do you think? I mean, I'm happy. The last two years, I've come out in the quarterfinals, so I was hoping this, this, this time I can go a step further, get to the semi-final, and hopefully go on and win, so now I'm happy. Of course, as a previous champion, you're looking to do it all over again. Obviously, secure the E-Champions League spot after one more win and the FC World Championship after two. Does that give you any more pressure, or are you kind of feeling good after this one? Yeah, that's what makes the Premier League this year so, like, pressurizing. Like, it leads to all the other tournaments, so it's just the biggest tournament in our, in our season. So, yeah, that's why the E-Premier League this year, it's the scariest thing ever. Fair enough. Well, I think you've given yourself a good start this Sunday afternoon at the E-Premier League. I did hear through the grapevine that you've been learning some Spanish. And this morning, you woke up and said, 
Tell your soul. Y... Obrigado. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any Spanish. It's sunny and it's going to be a great day, is apparently what you said to match it through the grapevine. Truth or lie? Lie is <laughs> Well, a great day it has been for you here. You have two more wins and then you secure yourself a spot in the E Champions League, a spot in the FC World Championship, and of course, 30,000 pounds. Are you ready for the next matchup? Do you have anything prepared? Are you feeling stressed, nervous, motivated? Nervous, but the same as this matchup. Just play our FIFA, play well, and we can understand win the tournament, so yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Tex. Congratulations and best of luck in the next round. And we will throw it to Frankie to summarize that matchup. <laughs> Obrigado, Leo. It turns out Tex can't speak Spanish, but he can speak a bit of Portuguese. Coming up after this break, Luton Town will be taking on the boys from West Ham United, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the E Premier League Finals 2024. And you can see from those cheeky little faces on the screen that Man City did indeed take the first quarter final of the night over close rivals Tottenham Hotspur with a blazing 7 0 result on aggregate. It was exactly the performance that Tex needed a 5-0 start and they've booked their place in the semi-finals. The curse of Tex going out in the quarterfinals in the past two years has well and truly been broken. But who will they be playing next? Luton Town or West Ham United as those are our next two teams to face off. And Grabison, last time we saw West Ham play, it was only yesterday because Luton Town qualified way back in January and it was a very closely fought finish. I mean, it was really a tough match, especially playing against Nottingham Forest, which was a team that was heading into the knockouts with confidence, really. And they had a former winner in goal puncher. Yeah, but I mean, Brig Army. He's one of those, he's a kid. I mean, he has to be like 18, 19, but he's one of those players to watch, especially here in, the, in England, because we believe, and people here believe, that he could be one of the best players in the world in the following years. And he did that yesterday because, I mean, this beautiful goal with a Haaland, again, the green time shot. I mean, everything at stake at the moment. If you miss this, you're probably out of the competition. Green timing it, celebrating it like this. 
they are a force at the moment. And we almost can't underestimate GRK's contribution as well because he actually won his first match 2-1. So he gave a little bit of a cushion for Brig Army, a bit of confidence. And actually his defense yesterday was really impressive. Especially because in the group stage he wasn't playing really well. He wasn't defending, he wasn't attacking, he wasn't playing at his best. But it, it doesn't really matter if you just come to a knockout and perform like that, especially defending as you said. So if he plays, if he keeps playing like this, I mean, <laughs> who cares about the group stage? Well, I care about the group stage because the Luton Town were the surprise victors of Group C. They won it on goal difference above Crystal Palace, just one goal. So let's find out more about them over in our analysis corner with Ryan Pozzoa and Kyle. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, all right, Ryan, we need to talk about this now. Luton yep. coming into this game. You like to give a prediction every once in a while. You predicted that they'd go far from the outset. What's impressed you so far? I feel like just the way they go forward, they create a lot of chances. They're very savvy with the mechanics in the game as well. It's not just on the floor, the fundamentals, but they're used to, to crossing as well. We're able to take a look at some of their clips as well from the group stage. This was a game against um, Fulham. From the get-go, they started with the initiative to push forward, to create a chance. They just build up, they choose the right passes at the right moments, the skill moves, and here the quick snappy passing into a green time shot as well. As I mentioned, the mechanics being top tier, finding the back of the net. And that was a theme throughout their group stage, just scoring a lot of goals. How important is using those mechanics when it comes to the big stage, when it comes to the right moment, yep. making sure you choose the right pass and know when to shoot as well? It changes everything. Of course, the, the fundamentals, the passing, dribbling and shooting, that's the core mechanics in the game. But the extra levels, the player locks, the time finishing, the goalkeeper movement, they're very, very important just to learn to bring you up to that next level and lose and have it in their locker. Right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing these two go head to head. Luton taking on West Ham. Frankie, what a match this is. Truly, it is going to be a bomb burner. Who will be taking on Manchester City in our first semi-final? Let's meet the teams. From Luton Town, it's Harvey Waters and Luke Downing. And from West Ham United, their opponents, Brig Army and GRK. The boys are getting ready to rock and roll against each other. Remember, Luton Town have not played on this stage since January when they stormed Group C. It was their LAN debut. It's hard to believe that this is only the first year for these boys and they're going up another relatively untested team. So this quarterfinal could be extremely close. Calling the action, we have none other than Red Lack of Nottingham Forest joining Richard Buckley and Brandon Smith. Thank you very much, Frankie. Yes, we needed a special guest for our second quarter final here. And Rich, we, we picked quite well someone that knows one of these teams quite well. Yeah, well, I were in the players area watching the last game. I was really looking around and I thought, I need that experience of someone who's been in the booth, who's played against West Ham. Unfortunately, uh, you'd have been in the booth right now if things had gone your way, Red Lack. But you wanted to get involved, you wanted to do a bit of commentary. What's it feel like sitting down in that booth on a Championship Sunday when it's, it's, it's there, you can feel it? Yeah, it's a weird feeling really to explain to people, but it's one of them things where you're so nervous, but there's like a, a feeling between everyone in the arena, what's going to happen today, no one knows, but all the players will be nervous whether they look it or not, and it's going to be an exciting day. Obviously, you've played in this tournament a handful of times, a second year in a row for Nottingham Forest now, you had a good run there last year, a top eight finish for you. You've had a bit of time to digest what happened yesterday, thoughts and feelings now looking back on that obviously you can understand the disappointment yeah um, it was really sad you know straight after the loss um, but then you have time to digest I've watched the games back um, I think I played well I think my teammate you know we, we done our best it was no one's fault like this these things happen in FIFA I was very bad in January for my standards um, and my teammate will say himself I don't think he was at his best yesterday so it's not his fault like I said but we tried our best it didn't work maybe we'll be back next year or maybe we'll go a separate ways. Well, let's break down this duo for West Ham here when it comes to FC as well, because they are a, a, a real sort of unknown quantity. You've got Brig Army, who's been an up-and-coming player. Probably, you would say, the last 18 months he's been on the scene. And this year, he, he's made a couple more events. We had the opportunity to watch him just at the Etihad not too long ago as well, Brandon, in a PlayStation Cup. And he's just getting reps underneath him. 
Yeah. Talk to me about Brig Army. Talk to me about GRK as you know them as, as professional players. Yeah, well, Brig Army, you know, he's a young player. He's come in the scene recently and he's had a few outstanding performances. You know, 7 0 in an online qualifier, European tournament, very, very good player. And GRK really coming into his own recently and yeah, league game starting. Well, the one thing that I love about this team as well, Rich, is that three of the four players, this is their first ever e Premier League. Yep. I mean, it's a great example of what this e Premier League is all about flourishing UK talent and bringing new names to the forefront. I'm also really, really excited to watch Luton because we've not seen them play. We've not seen them. Have they improved since January? You would imagine they have. What have they learnt? You've also got the experience of playing two months ago on this exact stage. And I do think that you were talking about the nerves, red light wear. Usually it's all in a weekend. You get knocked out in the groups, you're not coming back for a knockout. You had that experience, you had that time to process what it's like with the stage, the cameras, us commentating, you're on the other side of it now, because you'll be they'll be hearing exactly what you're saying um, when you're commentating the game as well. And it just adds an extra layer to what is already an unbelievable setting here at the EPL. Did you expect this performance from Luton? In, um, January? in January, no. In January, no. They were underdogs, both young players with, you know, not a lot of experience. But since then, they've really kicked on, and I think they've improved a lot since January. Um, yeah, both respective performances. And here's a chance, early doors for West Ham, defended well by Virgil van Dijk. But back to that point, they're two debutants that are playing the first every Premier League. They have no expectations, do they? No, and they've got no pressure, and they've got a lot of expectation, um, and both really living up to it, I think. When we look at this game as two individual matches, you're looking at Harvey versus Brig, Luke Downing versus GRK, Saka winning the ball high up the pitch again here for West Ham. Brig certainly stepping on the press in the early stages, but that pass just intercepted by De Bruyne. Do you feel as though it's a similar tale to the match that we saw previously with uh, Man City and Spurs, where the first game was everything? We all said it backstage, we said it on the stage. That, that first game is really, really integral. It's a massive win back from Brig Army, Son, back to Saka. And it's a corner for West Ham, who have piled on the pressure from a couple of mistakes there from Luton Town. So they fancy a finesse on the edge of the box. I mean, it's Kai Havertz and Rodri, the players. You don't really want the ball to fall to. You can see someone queuing up at the back post for it. Erling Haaland could be the man the possession goes to. Falls back again, so Carly to Omri. Coming so eventually, West Ham will punish him. He was just caught in a trap of just constant fear, and he was just attack, attack, attack before you knew it. He just reworked and recycled possession. 1 0, West Ham lead. Yeah, I think unfortunately for Harvey, there, the, the inexperience may have shown. Hold on. What are we seeing here? <laughs> we have seen that a couple of times already. Um, talk to me about the goal because it will. Three or four minutes of pressure from Brig. Yeah, I think Harvey got trapped in his own box quite a few times there. So I think he will think that's his own fault rather than, you know, just Brig being too good. Um, but like I said, that's inexperience. He's only young. He will learn from that. But for now, he does need to, you know, fix up a little bit. Well, just to add on to this as well, we've got to remember, Harvey has not lost a game. He's not lost a game in the Premier League. He won three and drew one in the group stages. He was a big reason why Luton Town were able to top the group, as we see that. Shot come in from Cole Palmer, 30 yards out. It was not the highest percentage of chance of falling into the, the back of the net, but the idea was there and the finish was still timed. So I'm going to go back to the point I'm making before the goal, before Brig rudely interrupted me. Um, the, the incentive for the Man City Spurs game was everything on text versus lyrics. If lyrics can get a result, if you can lose 1-0, lose 2-0, that's a good result for Tottenham. Is there a similar story in this game? Will Brig and Harvey both feel as though they have to win this game to give their teammate any sort of advantage? Or is the second game more sort of... Is one game weighted in a different way to the other? Yeah, so I feel like this one's a bit different, actually. I think the first game, you know, Brig's going to feel like he needs to win, maybe. Um, I know there's been a few practice games going on and Luke Downing's been getting the better of GRK. However, Luke Downing's one of them players, I think he can be a special, special player in the future. He's a very good player as it stands. And um, I think he's one of them players he either wins by a lot or loses by a lot. So it could get interesting. Massive switch of play, finds Kai Havertz for Luton Town. Harvey Waters is dispossessed. Obviously, teammate was goal poach who did play for West Ham last year, did get a top four finish in the Premier League. Was there ever conversations between you and your teammate of, look, this game, I know I'm in for maybe a more of a tougher game than you are. 
get me a mind's edge just to try yeah. and yeah keep keep the score in low. Yeah, well, especially after the group stage in January, I drew all four of my games. Um, God Poacher got three wins and a draw. So for me personally, I thought, you know, I need to gain that trust back, show him how good I am. Um, with me playing Josh Nine at Fulham in the first game. Hello, there's a flick on Erling Haaland for Luton Town! Out of nothing. We'll bring Harvey Waters back into this game. And you're absolutely right, Richard, it was from nothing. It was a flick on. It was Rude Hurley doing the flick on, it's not Erling Haaland for a change. Typically, yeah, as you said, Haaland is the focal point. Talk to us about this aerial meta, because it is very, very interesting. Um, so 4 3 2 the formation most people will be using, and they'll have a balanced fullback. Now, that, that means that these players can get down the line with ease, with one switch of play, and then they've got Erling Haaland with that aerial cross at the back post, just ready to win any type of header. Now, from that header, you can shoot, or most people like to head it down to a teammate. And when you've got such a presence in Haaland and everyone's playing a pretty similar way, for me, it opens up other avenues. That's where we're seeing the finesses coming in more. We're seeing player looking to Haaland and then faking it and going a different way. You saw Hullet even getting involved there as he was the, the assister to Erling Haaland. I mean, in your eyes, who is the... Uh, I mean, who is the plaster to stop Erling Haaland? Is it Rodri? Mm, he, he, does, he does a job. I think Ogbeni really does fight in the air against him. Um, unusual item to use at right back. Oh, Palmer! Wow. Times it green and just like that, Lewin Town have completely... Flip this game on its head. Turn the game around in four minutes. See the reaction from Harvey, from Luton Town, frustration from Brig. How is that constant just timing of a shot? Because obviously, as a as a pro yourself, is it just it's just muscle memory for you? Because it seems like we saw, especially in that Man City game, and we've seen it here. When the moment comes of a 95, 90th percent chance of scoring a goal, just timing, your timing, your timing, everything. It's all green, it's all green. Yeah, it's all about timing, especially at this level. They make a lot of shots that, you know, wouldn't usually go in, fly past the keeper. And it can go the other way. I feel like yesterday I was timing too many shots to the point where I was yellow in it or even red timing it, and it was just going completely off target. Talk to me about how Brig will be feeling now, because I'm sure you've been in games where you, you go 1-0 up, you feel like you're playing pretty well. He's not played poorly in that first 45, and he's going down, trailing 2-1. Yeah, well, the momentum's now against him, so he's going to need to maybe slow the pace down, take a pause. He's lucky half-time's just come about. Um, just take his time and then just, you know, ease back into the game. He can definitely score one or two goals here, so it's up to him, really. Also, when you're the teammate, what on earth are you thinking? Because you just sat back watching, and you're like, hey, are you trying not... Because you can't really impact the game at all. Yeah, I think this happened. This exact scenario happened to me yesterday, sort of. We was 2-1 down. Um, I think it was 1-1, and then I was thinking, oh, this is fine, but maybe we could do an extra goal. As soon as he went 2-1 down, I thought, you know what, we don't want it to be two goals. Like, the more chance I have, the more confident I'll be with going into the game trying to win. Obviously, a draw, that leaves it in my hands. Well, Luton Town, but 1-0 down. Well, the new kids on the block and the new team in the Premier League. I quite enjoy the Premier League this year. Top of Group C after five wins, one draw and just two defeats. They were an unpredictable duo. Playing their first ever E-Premier League. And currently they lead two goals to one against West Ham in a quarter-final here. The winner of this will play against Manchester City in the semi-final stages. Obviously, it's Brig Army. In action on the Xbox leg here, we'll be going over to the PlayStation side, Arthur, where Luke Downer will take on GRK. Watch out for Huller here. He might have a bit of space at the back post. He dinks it into him. And Lewin Town find a third. Oh. Yeah, it's a great ball in. I think bringing out the keeper there from Brig was the wrong, wrong thing to do. It's just leaving Huller at the back post with a tap in. It's not company off. It makes up your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it gives him an easy decision to make. The pass from Havertz, the switch apply. He's done it a couple of times, just completely opens up the pitch and takes nine players out of the equation. Yeah, so he's using the R1 and square mechanic uh, of using PlayStation controllers. It's really overpowered. It's sort of a manual clearance. You get full control over yeah. where the ball goes and the power of it. Yeah, it basically makes you be able to kick the ball harder than normal. <laughs> got, the, got the cheap boots on when you're younger. Here he is, look for it now. Yeah, you just see Rodri right at the top of the pitch, underneath where the scoreboard is. It's like a two-on-one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, every he's time. He's about to build himself back on side there. 
And if he can provide the flick on to Thierry Henry, and they really are in trouble. It's a two-goal cushion now. West Ham need to bring this scoreline down ever so slightly where they can for GRK. There must be that point in your brain as well when you're the playing member of that first game and you've got a teammate coming up as well. If you're Brig Army now, you're thinking, OK, it's 3-1, no more goals. I'm not conceding again because two's, two's doable for my teammate. Three is a real steep mountain to climb. Yeah, well, in these six-minute halves especially, it goes by very fast. Harvey now can't win it. If it gets to three goals, I'd say it's... Game know, over? Not game over, but it's, it's as good as done. Final third. In this first match of Luton Town will be happy to take a third goal in this. Ooh. The power shot, which... was certainly interesting. Went out for a goal kick in the end. And nearly a throw-in. Yeah, I think that's the inexperienced sort of show in there. But Harvey's starting to dominate this game, so if he keeps that up, he's looking good. I was surprised to see what Luton had, I've got to be honest, after the groups. It was a shock result. Um, I think the one thing... Well, they, they look to be the real deal, I'll be honest. The one thing they have on their side as well, Rich, they've got two players who are just so eager to grind out any tournament. That's what they, they're a great example of just UK talent coming through that have been grinding out tournaments for £100 here and a variation of different prizes. And it was only going to be a matter of time before they sort of really got. Are oh, we getting a message? First event. Message from Harvey. A, a direct message, maybe once every fortnight. Are you bringing any cups soon? To me. Anything coming up? Any tournaments that I can play in? Yeah, I think in Jan, they were sort of an unexpected package there when they come through the groups. But since then, they've really risen to that level. And I feel like they're actually playing at a level now where they should top. Look at the space for Harlan here. Keep us off his line. Is he going to go for a shot? He is. He does pull out a huge save from Van der Sar. It was a bit risky from Priggan. And now it comes from a corner. We'll see what happens here. But the corner's for you, Red Lack, is it? Do you know exactly what you're doing every single time? Have you got sort of three or four different ideas? Power shot comes in. It could be a tap at the back post for Haaland. Goes out for another quarter into a pause. But corners, have you just got set maybe two or three different ideas there? Or is it a case of you get there and you just think, right, what am I going to do this time? Yeah, well, two or three is a bit low. I've got a few on each side. It's like, you know, if you're on the right side, you're going to be an outswinger. Um, whereas if you're on the left, it's an inswinger. So there's sort of different angles you can use and different ways you can actually whip the ball in. Do you feel as though, when we're looking at this game now, Brig, he'll be thinking, I'm getting I'm getting beaten quite comfortably here. It could be four or five. He, he's, I don't know if you agree, he, he's too aggressive with his goalkeeper at the moment. Yeah, he's moving quite early. It's like he's letting Harvey have the decision. You know, he doesn't have to make one. It's sort of shooting that side of the goal. Um, I feel like he's... he's it's sort of weird, like Harvey's coming into the game, but if Brig concedes again, GRK has zero chance, in my opinion. Um, which is why you need to just keep at it, maybe try and get a goal. And if we're going off stats, Rich, I mean, look, these are the two stronger players. Absolutely. In the duos. That's it. Ireland again, 4-1. What can you do? What, what can you do in those scenarios? You, you can't stop him. Yeah, I think you've got to move the keeper very aggressively. And we just talked about how moving the keeper aggressively doesn't work, but in that instance from a corner, you have to mark it because you're not going to win the header. I think the thing for me, the more that we've watched over sort of this Highland era, it's the quickness of the corner. If you can take the corner quick before they can select the defensive Highland and pull him to that near post, it's almost a guaranteed goal. If they pull that player to the near post and it's a Highland v Highland matchup, you've got a, a bit of a chance. But when he's taking it that fast, it's almost inevitable that Haaland's going to win the header. Yeah, well, if you're taking the goalkeeper out of the equation and yeah. it's Haaland v Haaland, if the goalkeeper's in no man's land and you've got the run on him, you're going to win the header 80% of the time. And the thing that's... The funniest part about it is if you mark him with Haaland, you're still, you're still not guaranteed to there, stop there's him. Also, there's also other good headers of the ball. We saw Varane. Yep. Um, score a couple. You've always got Van Dijk. Well, he's there dangerous. as well in the same conversation. Look, we are... It's a big man's world right now, and we are living in it. I think it's also a Luton Town's world right now. They are flying into a potential top four scenario. Remember, there is still a second leg to come up here. There's Luke Downing will have to jump on the sticks to take on GRK. Out he goes for a corner. If West Ham can just grab 
an extra goal or two. And would certainly tee up GRK in a better way. David Ginola comes on for West Ham. Not many players have looked to fall back on the Premier League hero. Certainly offers you something off the bench. Well, Bene does well into William. Back to Haaland. He tries to just push it through. Is he? Is he just forcing it a bit? Yeah, I think he's a bit desperate, which is just that's normal. He's, he's got the press on, as you see there. Yeah. Um, which is a risky play. Maybe so one that's needed. Five. Yeah. Five is. Yeah. Game over. If it goes yeah, five, but maybe if it's if it's two. Yeah, it's doable. Game it's doable. On. Five looks more likely at the minute. Harlem with the flick down. Fortunately enough, the Virgil Van Dijk is there. We've we've talked a, quite a bit about Brig Army. This is Harvey Waters right now. Performance that he's putting the game out of reach before his teammates even kicked off. The. The level that he's shown in this matchup is very, very impressive against the West Ham side who had felt really confident coming into today. Yeah, he's playing very well. Like I said, in January, maybe they weren't expected to do it, but I feel like they've really like risen the level since. Those, them topping the group has pushed them up and said, you know what? Yeah, we did top the group. It weren't luck. This is where we're at now. We are two of the top players in the UK. Yes, yeah, that confidence yeah. that they both needed, really. Well, West Ham will have the last kick of the game and it will do us there. And in time of two minutes, Harvey Waters has done his job as part of this Luton Town side. From 1-0 down to 4-1, he leads a huge three-goal cushion to take into the second leg for his teammate, Lou Downing. It must feel good as well when your teammate pulls in a performance like that. You look across, you've gone right, you've, you've set me up in in the most perfect way possible. Yeah, well, that's the beauty of having two good players that, you know, you get on with, and they've got that morale, that friendship, that they trust each other. And, you know, Harvey will trust Luke, Luke will trust Harvey. So in this instance, it's worked. Luke's now got a three-goal lead. And on the other side of that, that booth that we can't see now of West Ham United, what's the conversation there like? You know, you, your teammate knows he's lost 4-1, but you, you've still got to get in there and say, look, you need to help me out here. I need to score three goals. Yeah, I think Briggs is just going to have to be like, GRK, can you do something for me? Give it your best. Jockey will give it his all. Um, it's all he can do, but three goals down, it's going to be a hard, hard... If GRK pulls this out, fair play. Because when you look at his results that he had in the tournament, weren't super impressive. He didn't, didn't win a game in the group stage. was not super impressive. His best performance actually came probably against Forest. you got to say, in the complexion of it, um, beating your teammate GP two goals to one. That was a massive win for him, and it just sort of set the set the tone for that run that they went on. When you look at his win earlier on in the day, I think eight six, they beat Brentford, West Ham in the first knockout round as well, and he, he did score goals in that game, but also Leeds goals. So it, we'd have to see something from GRK, which he's capable of that we've not seen yet. Yeah, at the EPL 24. He had the great great performance yesterday against Skorpocha. Um, I think he needs to step it up even more, and I think if he does actually pull this one out, it will really set like set him up in the scene and grow his name. And that's Lewin Town. I've got a rod is to make matters worse. I think what what you've done, Harvey, you not only gave your teammate a big lead, you've given him a four-one lead, but you've also just you've probably eliminated the nerves. You've built his confidence up. You've given him momentum. All those psychological factors that could impact how a player plays are all pushing in the positive direction for Lewin. It's Haaland! Yeah. And everything you've just said there, Richard Buckley, might have just come true. It's just what he's... He's gave his, his teammate a massive helping hand, and it's also forced the hand of West Ham because they've got to play in a certain way. You have to press, you have to go aggressive. Leave space in behind. Yeah, coming into a game already losing, Mentally, it's a, it's a big factor. You've got to change everything about how you want to play. You're already chasing without even conceding a goal. Um, but Luke, very, very good attacker. So I'm not really surprised he scored. There will be more goals in this game. Unfortunately, Brandon, you'll have had two games where it's been pretty one-sided in a row. Yeah. It comes down to that first thing again, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe this could be the tale as well, that the first games are really decisive.
Who in town aren't done yet. Dinks it in towards Erlin Haaland. It's going to fall back again to De Bruyne. Luke Downing, first of a time in the Premier League. And has not looked out of place at all. De Bruyne. If you had a preference, would you rather play first or second? Mm, I think first. I think first you can play your, your normal That's game. That's a big chance. Tierra Rima score! Yeah, I think first you can play your normal game. No other factors involved, just sort of play the game. But when it's a two-legged affair, it's sort of a bit different. You may have to factor who's playing the next game or who their opponent is, so it can be different. There's one. Potentially, Haaland cuts it inside. It was all so perfect. It was just missing the finish. You feel hard done by if you're GRK, because you've made the space really well. You've created the opportunity. Haaland's left foot, pretty unmarked in the box. I thought that, when he took that shot, I thought he goes in. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be very disappointed with that. That team of the year item does have five-star weak foot, so left or right foot, it, he's an absolute banker to score, but I don't really know what's going on there. Just unfortunately, he's going to have to get up and go again. He's just a joke, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's got everything. The best striker we've ever seen in Ultimate Team over yeah, the years, you definitely, think? Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's cards like, there's items like R9 and stuff like that. Um, there's been a few CR7s not, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, but they're not as, you know, Game altering. Yeah. Yeah. Sack up. Back to Hullet. He could have went there on the right foot. Haaland! He just can't hit the target. That's two goals. Another day, you're right, Rich. It's two goals and suddenly you've got a very nervy. Looking town player on the other side of the screen. But these chances and must be giving him some confidence just to say, look, I am creating chances, I am getting into the right areas. And it's only be a matter of time until one chance sticks or finds its way through to the back of the net. Yeah, this is the thing about Luke. He's very end-to-end. -end. Um, not much game management going on, just sort of trying to get that next goal to put the tie to bed. Um, and as you can see, the pressure is mounting from West Ham. Rodri does well over in this left-hand side of the defence. Finesse, maybe, from De Bruyne, who he thought about it. Schweinsteiger into Haaland, De Bruyne. Patient as ever, oh, Thierry Henry. Might be one of the goals of the day. Just the, the patience, reworking the position. Taught me through it, Redlock. Yeah, an amazing goal. As you can see, there was many, many times where he's done a step over cancel, which means he initiate, initiated the step over skill move and then cancelled it, meaning GRK tried to mark where he was going to exit and he just cancelled it and exited before that. But like I said, I think Luke Downing can be a special, special player and his attack is it's amazing. If Luke, can, for another one. if Luke can attack in the way that they're attacking now, Man City, it's a real, it's a, it's a great game. Yeah. I don't think it's as one-sided as people will think. No, not at all. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of factors that will go into that, and Luton will be hoping they can pick up the win, they've providing also, they get through this. They've also got to realise as well they're coming into that again with no real, f no expectation on them. Well, the entire expectation on City. Exceeded it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from minute one in this tournament, they had no expectation. Yeah. They come in with a fresh slate and just the chance to do what they can. And on the other side of that, I know you you, you probably felt it as well doing interviews, talking to media, talking to us, when you're doing all sort of, uh, just getting the vibe. It's expected that Man City win the E-Premier League this year because the team have assembled, the, the roster that they've put up. So they would feel that internally as well, that we should, we should be winning this. Yeah, I think their teams are a very, very strong lineup. Obviously, other teams, the lineup sort of had other factors going involved, yeah. people not qualifying and stuff like that. So I think Man City definitely the strongest team. Um, but like I said, there's other factors like pressure and all sorts of things are going on. So we'll see what happens. Is there a goal back in this for West Ham? Before half time, trying to still find the pocket of space. Is it now Van der Sar? Just not falling for him. He's creating good opportunities, his GRK. He's actually played quite well in this second leg and it'll feel hard done by to be 2-0 down. Nice chance of the half, looks like it will fall to Luton. As they look for goal number seven of the tie.
into a pause menu we go. But to Richard's point, Red Lat, look, you're right. It's one of them. You get into the right areas, you're creating good chances. It's just not falling. The bounces aren't there. Haaland should have scored two goals, rightly so. He's not hit the target. Yeah, I think coming out of this game, providing West Ham do lose the fixture, I think Jacques will be upset. But if he does watch the game back, he'll be proud of himself and the way he's attacked, made chances. He could have easily scored three or four goals in this game. So he's just been very unfortunate. I don't know if either of you two feel the same way. Maybe I'm watching a different set of games. It doesn't feel like a 6-1. No, I feel like there's been an even amount of chances, maybe. I think Harvey definitely had more chance in the first leg, but Giacchi now turning on in the second leg. Corner comes in and Luton Town very nearly. Perhaps it doesn't feel like a 7-1. <laughs> very nearly make it 7-1. Into a pause, many we go. I mean, it's a huge gap, as we said. For GRK. Is there, is there anything, around. anything you, you, you'd be able to do in this situation? Just throw, throw bodies forward? Yeah, I think you just got to put constant pressure on. Um, if you do that, you've got the best chance possible. It's still going to be very hard because that means Luke Downing can play against that. He can, you know, play slower, maybe use the gaps that you leave when trying to press him and take advantage of that. Have you ever turned five goals round in a half? Not in a half. I did in a qualifier on FIFA 21, FC 21. Um, and yeah, it, it's very hard. It's sort of one of them things where every chance you make, you have to, you have to score. And every chance that the other person meets, you have, to, yeah, you have to defend it or get lucky or do whatever. Hold it. Henri looked down and wants a clean sheet and he wants a few more goals. In case you missed it, Manchester City won 7 0 against Spurs in there. I'm in mean, quarter final here in the Premier League finals. They're in the semi finals waiting for the winner of this game. Just at the moment, looks like it will be Man City Luton Town. We can only hope there'll be as many goals as they've delivered us in these quarter finals. So it will be able to turn his man. It was a time green finish. West Ham United and GRK just about keeping it in possession. And already 10 minutes gone in this second half. With that sand timer just. Slowly disappears. The sky's that pass well to Saka. Is there a flick on from Haaland? He's just not landing, is it? It's not falling where he wanted to. Omri wasn't there and Eva was Holland. Well, he's creating chances and there's not much more you can do than that. I think he just needs to try and, you know, obviously put a few in the back of the net. But I think he's played very well. I think he's done himself proud in the second leg. Yeah, the build up play has been pretty good from GRK. He's, he's hitting all the right notes, maybe just. It's the wrong piece of music he's been playing at the minute because he'll watch this game back, as you said, and feel as though I've done, I've done all right. I've not played poorly. Yeah, I think if you look at the game as an individual individual entity, I, I don't know how he's 2 0 down. No. So you, you just can't get the ball in the net. Um, he's still going, he's, as you can see, he's gone constant pressure, which means he's going to be taking the you know, every risk possible. It could, could end eight tonight. Yeah, it could get ugly, but... Lou Downing's on for a further. Is there a one more pass? Round the keeper. See you later. It's party time for Luton Town. As the Hatters are on their way to a semi-final in their first ever E-Premier League. And we can say how great GRK's been in the final third, but Lou Downing... Maybe there's a reason why the teams who top the group Top the group at the minute. 7-0, Man City, 7-1, Luton Town. If the story goes on, Brighton and Liverpool are going to be cruising through their respective quarter-finals. I don't think they will, but they very well might do. For half of these players as well, first time in the E-Premier League. And they are enjoying every single moment of it. There is no bigger tournament to play in the UK than this one. £100,000 prize for GRK, looking for a goal eventually. Harlan will turn up and will score a goal for West Ham. Yeah, I think you can see the disappointment on his face, even though he's just scored. I think he knows he could have had, like I said, four or five goals in this game and really turned it around. He's coming back again, the pressure. 
pull it. Omri, back to Harlem, one more pass. He's working it maybe a bit too much. No, he's not. It's a really nice goal. The McGeady cancel inside the box, changing direction. I think for GRK, you're in this situation, you're still four goals down, but if you can win your respective game, it, it doesn't mean much right now, but you can look back and feel pretty proud of your performance. Yeah, well, I think he's obviously going to be disappointed at first. But looking back at this individual game, I think he'll be very happy with it. Um, if he done, if he put a few in the goal a bit earlier, I think he would be in pole position right now. But you know, Luke's very, very good at taking advantage of that press and you know scoring his chances. Nice run for an onslaught here of West Ham pressure. Hold on, is it falling? Omri, Rodri, back to Saka. Back to Omri. Oh. He's had a couple of those where the ball's just not quite bounced for him. If you think back to the chances he's had, the header from Haaland in the first half, he had another chance where Haaland put it wide of the post. You could be looking at like a 7-5, sort of 7-6 game here. Yeah, there's even chances where you know the keeper might save it and it looks like it's going to fall yeah. to GRK and it just doesn't. The keeper jumps on top of it. The time is running out. Luton Town still with a very healthy four-goal cushion. While we've got you, Red Black, just a, a little pause here. I want to get your expert opinion on what's to come. Um, some big games, Brighton, Wolves, um, Liverpool, Man United as well. Um, Who, who's going through? What's where, do you see, where do you see those games going? I'm friends with a lot of the players, so I don't want to make any predictions. Well, you are. You're <laughs> on the broadcast. You're part of the talent team now. You're not a player anymore. Brandon doesn't make predictions. Hey, <laughs> you sound like you, you, you are enjoying this commentator role. We don't <laughs> give predictions. You are absolutely right. Um, what, what can we expect from the games? Brighton Wolves. I think Brighton Wolves is the game of the day, especially the game of this round. Um, I think both teams are very, very strong. And it's one of them where one game could decide the whole tie. And Stingray versus Dragon. We're not talking animals. We're talking... Serious, serious FC players. And they were both in the same group. That could be a, a crazy game. Yeah, it's a game from the groups where they did draw. But looking at, you know, it's been two months since then. Stingray, a very, very established player in the scene. And Dragon, as we mentioned, retired, unretired, <laughs> retired, unretired. And now look at him. He's, he's, retired, he's, he's retired. retired, but in brackets. In brackets. <laughs> it's not official yet. It's in brackets. Or well, at Coach Dragon. <laughs> so... It really goes show you, as long as you've had the talent, you can use your experience and the know-how how to win games. In case you missed it yesterday, what a comeback that was to Manchester United against Aston Villa. 3-0 down they were, and then Dragon was on fire and did enough to pull them out of a really difficult position, on ball into the box. Final four minutes here and we can start teeing up what a semi-final that one is going to be, Richard. Manchester City against Luton Town. I mean, when you look at that game, the individuals on the stage, th there's a massive difference in experience at this level. But when it comes to the quality that the players are putting up, Luton will feel no danger whatsoever in that game. Th they'll see that as an opportunity to win that game. Of course, a massive upset. You're looking at a e Champions League final tickets, Guaranteed into the biggest tournament. Green time off the cross tiger. But also, if Luton beat Man City, Luton are the favourites to win the tournament then. Yeah, for sure. What a result. And barely any reaction out of Luton Town as well. They know there's still two more massive games to play, a semi-final and a grand final. And they are in the top four in their first ever E Premier League. The first time Luton have been in the top flight for quite some time and in the E Premier League. But more importantly, these two debuts in this competition and they have not looked back. They topped the group, as we said, back in January and they've not looked out of place here at Lamb for our finals as well. Redlack, I mean, they're great. They, they, keep, they keep delivering. <laughs> they, yeah. they are great. Well, when they topped the group, like I said, it was sort of like a shock. No one really expected that and they've really kicked on and shown their level in today's game. Haven't crumbled under any nerves either, Rich. They're, they're rising to the challenge, game after game after game. Their biggest challenge coming up against Man City in the semi-finals. Will Luton continue to defy the odds? We'll wait and see. Absolutely. Well, as we said, two teams have already played their quarter-finals and won the Man City Luton. is one confirmed semi-final. Still two quarter-finals to come up here from the E Premier League. But for now, it's back to Frankie. The action just keeps on coming. After the break, Brighton take on Wolves in our third quarter-final.
Welcome back to the show. If you've just joined us, shame on you as you've already missed two fantastic quarterfinals which have seen Luton Town and Manchester City qualify for the semi-finals. Well, here are those results and confirmation that uh, Brighton and Hove Albion will take on Wolves in our next quarter final. They'll go through to the semi finals, one of those, and they'll take on Liverpool against Manchester United. The winner from that one as we continue through here at the E Premier League. Well, Brighton won their group back in January with their players Marley and Jaden only losing one game between them. So the pair are quietly confident when they can go all the way and lift that trophy. Brighton at the top of its group. They cannot be caught now. The group stages went really well. Yeah, we're really happy to have topped the group. Yeah, really look forward to the knockout stages. Um, anything can happen. You know, you're only a few games away from, from winning the full thing, so it's a really good adrenaline rush. We've been jumping in a call together, both of our coaches, and we've just been analysing our games and playing a lot of practice the past few weeks. Take a bow! The player lock is something that we've been working on a lot together. Yeah, I remember being told a few years ago um, just to practice that specifically, so that's all I've done for a week or two, and now I'm, I'm really good at it. It's really good to make it a 50 50 chance every time your opponent's trying to defend you. So many people spam it a lot and they all use it, and then when it comes to the actual tournament, you don't see many people using it as much. But I think, I think this weekend you're going to see it a lot more from a lot of teams. If you can master that mechanic, put yourself at such a, a good advantage. I think if we're walking away with the trophy, you know, we'll feel amazing. Um, we'll probably be like Jack Grealish after we won the Champions League, you know, for a few days after. We are Scottish after all. Well, what a matchup we've got right here, Richard Buckley. Let's talk about Brighton. Let's talk about those players. Quietly confident, I said. And I mean, their, their play so far in the tournament, it proves it. Yeah, absolutely. Top the group for a reason. We're going to break down just a couple of their moments throughout this. And I think the thing with Brighton during the EPL so far, they've not necessarily topped, other than the group, any particular stat. They've just been consistently brilliant. And one thing in particular is the player lock. They mentioned it when we talked to them in that little interview there, and it's just the different elements. You can see it right here. He play locks to the back post, Harlan gets up, and it's just a dominant header each and every single time. If you can master the player lock, which they seem to have done, it adds that extra dimension. You press both sticks in, and then you can flick the right stick to a different player. It creates a diversion, it creates a different element. And I know them and their coach, Adam Ryan, have been working very, very hard on the play lock. Looking at the stats just here, I mean, goals is what I always like to focus on because they win you games. 17 for Jaden, 11 for Marley right here. And that comes from everything you've talked about. Yeah, and one thing that I really do like as well about this Brighton team, they're not only great friends off the pitch, they're proud Scots as well. They're sharing the load. It's not one player getting four wins, one player getting four draws. They're both doing their bit. And I think as a duo, they're really, really tough to beat over two legs. Right, well, Richard Buckley, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm excited, and I think it's time to welcome out the players. Walking into the arena for Brighton, it's Jaden Grodin and Molly. Woo. And for Wolves, please welcome Mitch Haywood and Kai Harris. Right, well, what a matchup we've got just here. Brighton taking on Wolves, a huge one in our third quarter final for the E Premier League. All of these. Four competitors going head to head, hoping that they can make their way through to the semi final. A huge matchup, and I'm excited for this one. I'm going to throw it across Ryan Pessoa and Grav. Thanks, Kyle, and I'm joined by Gravison. I'm excited for this one. Two great teams, four great players, 
Gravison, maybe you agree with me on this. I think they're four players that sort of go under the radar in terms of their accomplishments. They're players that perform consistently well at many events, including the E-Premier League, but they don't really get the credit they deserve. Yeah, I was thinking just about that because you may think if you just put like the all of FC players here in the Premier League in a tire, maybe, yeah. and you think about maybe tire S plus, and you think about Matias Bonanno, probably Tex, Tom as well. But then, yeah, players like Marley, like Kay, like Jaden, they go under the radar for a bit. But I mean, performance-wise, they're probably one of the best players in the Premier League at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. We saw Wolves in action yesterday. We didn't get to see Brighton because they secured their spot at this stage from the group stages beforehand. Wolves, they had some touchy moments. We yeah. saw Mick Hayward. I agree. <laughs> yeah, almost giving a game away with a, would I say, a, a huge mistake defensively. <laughs> but we haven't seen, of course, Jaden and Mark Marley. They've been waiting in the shadows, overlooking their potential opponents. And it's a big game, Wolves versus Brighton. I find this one, for me, is very, very hard to separate both of these teams. Yeah, I do think uh, coming up to the previous matches, we had the, the first uh, group like both of the the teams that qualified to the semi-finals top their group yes but I do think in this case Wolves could take it home I think Wolves as I said Kai and Mitch Mitch is somebody you associate a lot of possession I think mm -hmm. Kai going forward he has a lot more flair he scores a lot more goals it'll be Mitch going first though against Jaden as the action kicks off of course Brighton in their favoured home strip kicking from left to right with Jaden representing them Mitch Hayward kicking from right to left representing at Wolves and yeah, first player luck. We should count them because it's going to be probably, I would say, maybe hundreds of them. Another I, one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very key what Jaden said in the, the video, how you can practice it, but doing it when it matters most is what a lot of players struggle to do. You can do it in practice, you can get the reps in, but it's just about applying it when it matters most. And I found that myself. Sometimes you practice, you, you learn a lot of the mechanics, but you're sort of scared to implement them when it matters most. But for the Brighton players, especially in the group stage, from what we saw, they just perfected it all. Yeah, 100%, especially because they've implemented in the in the build-up. Not only they cross with the player lock, but then in the final third, they use it as well. For trying to find the open space, trying to also find maybe an over-the-top through ball. But it's a weird thing to do in the last third, and it's working out well for them. So, I mean, they're probably the best players in the world using it at the moment, the player lock. Nice interception by Bruno Fernandes, which is kind of weird seeing Bruno Fernandes with the amount of midfielders we have at the moment. But those play styles, I mean, especially the long pass like this, it's just perfect. Perfect, yeah, pretty much. As we can see, Virgil deciding to pass the ball. Maybe, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of switching up. <laughs> yeah, already 12 minutes in, we've seen. It was very comfortable to switch the play a number of times. It's, it seems to be a common theme on how they build up. Mitch Haywood pushing forward. Rodri in at right back, Gravison. If you were to play this competition, would he be your, your selection? Probably. As we ah, that's a poor touch by Willett. Yeah, I think I think I will probably pick him because as a right back, I don't think there's a stronger one you could use. But I think we have someone in here who's probably and definitely a better player than me and can talk about us which is the best right-back at the moment. Thank you so much for joining us. Tom? Thank you for having me. Yeah, talking about best right-backs, I think it's probably the position that is most up for grabs now. I'm seeing everyone using different kind of players. I went for Rodri, Fixie Vieira and the Ogben, the Luton yep. right-back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just spoke to Tex after our game, actually, and he said he's using Ogben because he can't lose a header. So mm -hmm. maybe, that, maybe, yeah, maybe that's the, the best option. But I think it comes down to who you prefer. Rodri, for me, is really good on the ball, and I like my players to be... You know, good passers, good dribblers, get me out of trouble. Comes down to personal preference. Of course, we just saw you early on. You had a tough task to overcome a 5-0 deficit. Going into that second leg, your mindset, was it just to press straight away or was it trying to play your own game? It's kind of hard to do because preparation sort of goes out the window at that point. Yeah, you spend all night getting yourself ready for a game and preparing yourself and then, you know, you're thinking, oh, what do I do if I'm 2-0 up? What do I do if I'm 2-0 down? Or you don't really think about what do I do if I'm 5-0 down? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit too much. Uh, but as I say, when Tex in the mood like that, I think it's really hard to stop him. And, you know, I sympathise with lyrics because it's, it's not easy. Oh, last ditch tackle there prevented a, a shot at goal from Wolves. Was there ever a point, though, Tom, in that game where you thought, maybe I should tell lyrics, just try, just keep the ball? Or was it just play your own game, just leave him to it? 
At 3 0, we did say about slowing it down, maybe playing for a bit more aerial battles. He brought on Hoyland, trying to get some ball. It just said ball in the air, try and disrupt Texas' rhythm, because when he's in that rhythm, it's so hard to stop. But, you know, he presses so well. And when you're already 3 0 down, not playing as well as you like. Off the post. Oh. Could have been the breakthrough from Wolves. Simple play down the byline, a cross goal there. I thought it was going to lead to a, a breakthrough there from Mitch Hayward. What, do you, what are your opinions about this game, Tom? Uh, especially this Jaden against Mitch. What do you reckon is happening style-wise? I'm not going to say a prediction, but style-wise. Uh, firstly, I really rate Jaden. I think he's one of the best players in Xbox. See him attacking here down the right. Goes to that early cross. Whipton headed down. I think that's just onside as well. Cole Palmer. And that's the breakthrough Jaden and Brighton needed. It's one goal for Brighton against Wolves. It came from the cross. They're headed down from Erling Haaland. The dominance in the air. Just a one-two between Cole Palmer and Rude Hullet. And Cole Palmer finds the back of the net. Tom, speak about crossing. You mentioned, yes. <laughs> you yes. mentioned how important <laughs> it is just to have players to nullify Erling Haaland. But going forward, did you ever think about maybe catering your attack strictly just for crossing the ball? Yeah, I have massively changed my play style recently. I'm someone that likes to keep it on the floor, try and play a lot of nice driven passes. I was obviously playing the 4-2-3-1. I had to kind of stop that because of Haaland. I'm actually moved Haaland to right forward in the end because yeah. my left back was the one overlapping. I needed that back post cross. I think I scored one against Newcastle yesterday, actually, where I did the play a lot to the back post. So, so effective. I think everyone's kind of had to adjust their gameplay. You know, certain positions get changed, certain play styles, I think definitely adds a different element to the game and uh, Haaland is just so hard to stop. It is. We're seeing now how Brighton is able to build up well, but I think the press is what's on point at the moment, especially because Mitch is really good keeping the possession. But yeah, you talk about Jaden. What are your opinions about Mitch in this, this stage of the game? Yeah, Mitch, someone always plays really well at Prem. I played with him for England. Oh! Yes. That's a nice finish as we were talking about Mitch. He decided to cross it as well, a knockdown. And I mean, that's the state of the game of the moment. The crosses are so OP, and the finish was there from Haaland. Yeah, we spoke about player locks for Brighton, but it fell the way of Wolves and Mitch Hayward this time. A knockdown header, very effective in this game. It's something that you kind of have to do in FC24. We spoke yesterday about lyrics and dragon. They sort of have their own play styles. They, they sort of stick to the, the fundamentals, the ball on the ground gameplay. That sort of has to go out the window a little bit and just focus on keeping the ball in the air. Yeah, I can tell you that doesn't come naturally to Mitch, the crossing. He's yeah, not yeah, someone, yeah. He's not someone that would do that normally. Uh, I've played with him for years. He's someone that likes to keep the ball, keep it on the floor, hold a lot of possession and really think about his chances. But I think that right there is how people have changed their gameplay. I mean, I spoke to all of the players, you know, even speaking to Tex, what he said about defenders, that he's not bothered about their stats anymore. It's all about can you win the ball yeah. in the air. Simple as that. It's kind of like a height test or a jump test before you play the game. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't come natural to Mitch, but I think when something is that good, you're going to have to use it. Yep, and that's half-time between Wolves and Brighton. Jaden and Mitch Hayward, nothing to separate either of these players. But we're able to take a look at some of the other players in the players' lounge. You see players from yesterday and also players yet to feature today. <laughs> Stingray and Darius. Give us a wave. Players that have also performed <laughs> in the E-Premier League in Ethan. <laughs> Jack Sharp for Chelsea, a number of names in the Premier League FC24 scene. Watching games, Tom, beforehand anyway, did you, do you sort of tend to bed into what happened in previous events? Of course, Manchester City, you knew that you were going to play them coming into if you made it to today. Did you watch their previous competition or did you kind of not look at it just because of, obviously it's a new patch, the game's changed a little bit? I didn't watch Matthias too much on the basis that the last gameplay I could watch was Eprem in Jan. Yes, so exactly. it's been two months. That's, yeah, that's the thing. And it's hard for me to find any gameplay. That, I did watch him play friendly in the week, but I kind of don't like to look too much into it. I like to assert my style. Just basically, if there's anything I need to know, if there's anything he does that's you know out of the ordinary, I'm like, tell me about it. But I already know how Matthias plays. He's going to slow the game down. He's going to be really methodical. The way he defends, he's not going to come out pressing me from the front. Yeah. yeah. So as long as I know that, I feel like I just needed to know. I watched his corners, to be fair, because I knew he was good from them. Yeah. I try not to have an information overload because sometimes it then becomes, what does the opponent do? And you don't think about what you can do. Mm -hmm. You're so worried about, oh, he does this and he does that, and then yeah. he can do that. And you think, hold on, I can play the game as well. Because of that, though, we'll speak about after this attack. Oh, that was a nice player look. And then corner, probably going to Haaland this moment. He decided to switch his, I can he switches tell you. up. 
the heart rate's going when the court is <laughs> heart rate's going. It's going up. So two. Yeah. Not taking short, but yeah, he decides to cross it to Haaland. It wasn't precise enough, and now Brighton is building up the play. But yeah, what were you thinking in those crosses, especially in the corners? What were you thinking about first post, back post, penalty point? For Matthias, I watched him, and he does a quick one to the near post, so yeah. I was told to make sure I bring the keeper out to the near post straight away and then let him change his corner after that. So I managed to do that, actually. I mean, it was a bit of a small detail considering the score, but I was still on it and made sure that he, he went to the back post in the end. I managed to read it, but sometimes if they, if they have a routine that is really, really good, I, I think it's very, very hard to defend them. You can stop them. I think Nick Sneb stopped me yesterday, but, yeah, they're such a, a key thing. Reminds me of football, like we actually have routines now, you know, people are writing stuff in notepads, <laughs> people, are, people are studying the game. I'll be honest, I spent, I spent an hour on Thursday just doing corners. Now, I'm someone that just likes to play the game. I don't yeah. like doing that stuff where I don't have to, but you have to bite the bullet sometimes. Just adapt at all costs and, yeah, uh, yeah I was sitting there, you know, doing set-piece training. I felt like I was a football club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to do what works, and I mean, corner works are a big thing at the moment. I remember back in the days when, for example, Nicolas was a yeah. huge player yep. in the crossing system, but now you, you have to train it as well, because if not, it's a huge factor it's of being trained. To the back post. Wasn't able to find the head of Ruud Hillet. 60 minutes have been played, but yet to see too much to separate either of these teams. Scoreline tells the, the main story. Pretty much just one chance between both of these two teams. Tom, of course, it's, it's obviously easy for me to say now, probably yourself, would you have preferred to play second in that particular matchup against City? No, I wanted to play first every game. And we already knew that, me and Lyrics had already yeah. figured it out. I think last year, I lost in the final 3-0. Like, I went into the final 3-0 down. Okay. So yeah. I said, I never want to be playing yeah. second again. I want every game first. Yesterday, I came in second against Newcastle, very nervy. And then when I played Knicks there, I just felt free. I yeah. I could do what I want all night. Great play. Quick, snappy passing. Jaden oh. couldn't find the back of the net. Great goalkeeper movement there from Mitch to prevent a guaranteed goal. He still has the corner to defend. This is the perfect example of how Brighton attacks. We could see prior to this, the player lock into the strikers. And then it's a 3v2 situation between the strikers and the centre-backs. So it's really... And just you can you can do the both things. You can maybe attack with the speed boost, or you could look for another pass. He looked for another pass, but then the play the play the keeper movement was really good. Yeah, I, I think the keeper movement is intelligent because he knows he's got bodies sort of blocking the shot across goal. So obviously the main thing there is just to move the keeper across. Oh sorry, to the, the near post. I yeah. would say because you know if the shot goes across goal, it's very likely it'll be blocked. However, moving it to the the near post sort of prevents the goal. This brings up one question because Tom, you played against RSD in that match. <laughs> You're going to remind me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But what were you thinking, especially, like, let's just say, analyzing? Like, you just, it's your fifth chance, it's stopped. What are you thinking, like, for the sixth one? What should I do to try to break it down and score a goal? I think a lot of my animated reaction was frustration with myself, because I know how key movement is. And I think I got to a point where I couldn't think about what I was doing, I was just shooting. Yeah, I'm yeah, I, was, yeah. I always follow advice from Tex when he says this. Tex always tells me, just wait. Yeah. He says, just have the composure. He's so good at it around the pitch, he always stands still. And he always says to me, when there's key movement, just wait. There will be a side that opens up if you're yeah. quick enough. Like, as soon as you see him move, then do it. And I think maybe it was just frustration myself, because it is good key movement, but I think you can, if you're composed enough in the box, and you just yeah. wait that extra half second, you will score. But. Once you miss two or three, I'll be honest, your brain just <laughs> like brain fog. Oh, great play wow. from the corner. Diving header from Haaland. Great save there from Van der Sar. That's an intricate corner. It was played short and they're going for it again. Jaden. It's dangerous for these. Yeah, yeah, yeah look. Yes. Oh, wow. Whoa. Sometimes I wish I was five years younger. The way these, <laughs> the way these are. <laughs> Taking it direct this time. It's whipped in. Couldn't find Erling Haaland after a touch there from Ruder and Mitch Hayward can break forward. I think this sets us up perfectly. If, if of course the result remains the same, there's still 20 minutes left to go. But I'm sure Kai Harris and Mark Marley will be eagerly anticipating playing. Mark, of course, his first time playing today and throughout the, the knockout competition. I'm a fan of this being tight. I think the first two games have had a bit of an advantage one way. Yeah. You know, I like it going into second leg. You know, I want to see some extra time with penalties. Now they're not falling my way. I want to see some, <laughs> yeah. I want to see some late drama. Beautiful switch of play. Brother decides to pass it back to De Bruyne. Could be 
bullet pass into strikers? No. He decides to take it up the edge, Malen. Maybe a possible cross? No. He decides to. Ah. Fast to walk out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hard on mistake. That is rare. Pause queued. Speak to me, Tom, about. For people at home, they might wonder why players pause it so frequently. Oh, you had the example in the text game. Yeah. We started really well. Lyrics first 20 minutes all yeah. over it. Pause came in text straight away. So I knew he was going to do Tempo it. I could, done. Yeah, I could see yeah. I knew it. He's, we played with each other so many times in 2v2. As soon as we struggle, he says, pause, pause, pause. Again. Yeah. just wait. He doesn't even do anything. We just sit over 60 seconds. Yeah. He says, just let the momentum slow down a little bit. Think about why it's gone wrong. You don't need to think about it. He's happy to just wait. He, he will take his time within reason. Obviously, there's only a certain amount of pause you can have. He knows what he's doing with that. And I yeah. think it did kind of take the stuffing out once he scored the first 100%. goal. Because I think the first 20 minutes, Lyrics was on the ascendancy. I felt like yep. he was in control. Tex was being forced into mistakes that you never really associate with Tex's gameplay. Yeah. Just forced passing, rushing out the back in, in a offensive positions as well, not making the right choices. Lyrics forced him into that. But as you said, the pause sort of just changed the whole dynamics of everything. Yeah, he's, he's smart, Tex. You know, he's smart. As you know, I could say he's experienced now. Yeah. He's been playing maybe six he's years at the top now. level, and you do have to adapt and change and improvise certain things. I think you see it with his gameplay, he's probably yeah. a bit more mature instead of being, you know, I think we know him as a swashbuckling skills and the rainbow flicks, but as the game's adapting and everyone's improved, he, he's kept up with that as well. And he's, you know, with the play style he's having now being slightly different. It's just, yeah, what I'd call experience. We're seeing this build up in the play to a pin. Possible cross to Haaland. Yeah. Passes it to Hulet, who decides to shot it into the back of the net. Great goal by Jaden, especially in the minute we're in, 80 minute. Great cross into Haaland, who knocks it down to Hulet and decides to score. We can see what it means to Jaden. And now Brighton is leading up the game 2-1. That's it. That's the. The FC 24 meta, you have to keep the ball in the air at those moments. Play for the mismatch and Erling Haaland with a free header to knock down to Hullet. That's It sort of pends into the defensive side. You speak about player locks offensively. But player locks defensively in that situation, you could use it to switch to another defender and try and cut the, the, the lane down. As this attack from Wolves, trying to respond as soon as possible. Play to the edge there. Rude Hullet with a five-star skill moves and nice weeks, defense. tried to play a pass. And as Gravison said, great defence from Jaden. He could be in behind. I think Haaland's onside here. In on goal, bearing oh, down against the goalkeeper. Keeper movement is enough to prevent Jaden from taking a two-goal lead in this game. I know you love this, uh, Tom. What about a pay, uh, power shot with yes. Alan? I always vote power shots, yeah. Nice goals. I scored one yesterday with Hullet. Yeah. I think the power shot this year, the animation's quicker if you've got the playstyle plus. Yeah, and okay. Catches people off guard because you don't know whether they can cancel it. Some people are waiting for a cancel. You can just shoot. And it's, it's what under, I did yesterday. It's extremely it, underrated. It works well, yeah. yeah. When you talk about them player lock in defence, I spent a whole game before I started then uh, in Walmart just practicing that. So yeah. Lyrics was sending the ball long, like to player lock every time. There is so many mechanics he's in here. He's onside. In behind here, an awful offside trap. Keeper saves it. But it falls to the feet of Thierry Henry and Jaden. Last kick of the game. Those three went up. Gravison, that offside trap is just so costly. Yeah, I mean, offside trapping for me, it's, it's one of the most important things at the moment in FC24. That offside trap was a little bit too late and it can cost a goal. I mean, what a goal because the 3-1 coming up to the second leg, it's big. It is 3-1 and 2-1 is, is genuine. I know it's one goal, obviously, it's an extra goal, but it's just the mindset going into it, Tom. You're now down by two goals now if you're Kai Harris, but he's somebody that can retrieve it. He scores a lot of goals and he's great going forward. Yeah, it's funny how the psychology works because if he was 3-0 down and Mitch has scored to make 3-1, yes. suddenly yeah. you're going, oh, we've yeah. got a chance. And yeah. now yeah. it feels exactly. like a sucker, but, but exactly. no, the way it is, I think, yeah, two goals, okay. Mm -hmm. I think Kai will keep how he's playing because if it was me, I'd think, get one before half time. Yeah, and this was the goals from Brighton, a familiar theme, knocked down and a nice quick snappy pass in between the two players to get the back of the net. Yeah. And then Wolves responded relatively quickly just before half time. Erling Haaland on the volley. And now he decided to go for the cross again. He knocked it out and hold it. Nice. But what, what wasn't nice was this offside trap from Wolves. But he decided to. It was a red time, but even though the keeper is out of position, it yeah. doesn't really matter. So 3 1 coming up to the second leg, which is a really good result because Marley has been a player over the years who's really good keeping the possession. Yeah, I don't know if you agree, Tom. Yeah. 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 So good. Yeah, I played Marley in the EPL final in 20. Yep. And he, yeah, whew, I had to press a lot to get that mm. ball back. I had to work really hard. And 
he will be comfortable with a two goal lead. I think it is a tough lead to have because you don't know whether you attack or, yeah. or, or you wait, but I wouldn't want to play Mali with being two goals behind. Yeah, and I, I do think we talked with Adam Ryan and, and Richard talked about it as well in the analyst screen. It's crazy how, because Jaden likes to play these kind of offensive games with player locks and let's just say aggressively, but Marley has kind of swifted uh, over the couple of last years maybe from playing more of a possession kind of gameplay now to also implementing those mechanical skills. Yeah, I think who you practice with help, uh, changes the way you play quite a lot. You know, you will mirror the people you play with a lot. Do you think having a teammate, for example, you played with Texa among the years, across the years as well, especially even with the, the E-Lions this year. Do you yeah. think practicing with players like that sort of improves your gameplay as well? Yeah, Tex basically gave me a career. <laughs> Just copied <laughs> him. On. I copied him. I copied him for three years and then started doing it myself. But <laughs> honestly, I remember in 19, we were in a... Uh, what you call a boot camp where you're just practicing together we stayed in an office together for about a week and I learned more than I learned in about three years elsewhere I think you just pick up these things when you're playing against someone without realising yeah. your brain is just picking up on it and I think same for Marley with Jaden they've been teammates quite a lot of the time but they do start picking up certain things from each other I think Tex and Matthias you'd probably see a little bit more similar there than these yep, days compared really. to what they used yeah. to play I think Tex sort of plays more similarly to Matthias now in yeah. the sense that it's less skill moves it's more regimented it's structured the way he builds up defends and sort of Jaden and Mark Marley for me are two different ends of the spectrum in how they play yeah. I think Jaden goes forward a lot Mark Marley every time I play him he's very composed as you mentioned possession he's happy to keep it but it's, it's, it's also good to implement other styles in your gameplay, for sure, because, I mean, Tom, your press has always been amazing, but now you can also player lock as well, and you can cross as well, which is something yeah. probably a couple of years ago you wouldn't have done. I do long think, throw here. Yeah. He oh. comes out here very far, manages to get a touch on it. Mikai again, trying to find space. A power shot blocked from Marley on the edge of the box. He's still attacking. He's onside, quick, snappy passing, couldn't find the space in the box there, but that's more like it from Kai. He's going to need to to try and bring this game back in touching distance because, as you mentioned, the 2-1 would have been a, a completely different complexion coming into this game. Smarty goes forward. Well, he says he twists and turns for a bit, passes back to Hulit, maybe a chance for another pass inside the box. Player locking, step a step over as well, but he decides to keep it simple. And yeah, he's not even. Whoa, that's a nice player lock. Whoa, what a save! But then, as we just said, Marley, a player who maybe isn't as mechanically gifted as his teammate, but then again, that player lock is quick and effective. Yeah, very similar to Jaden, right? We've seen him attack like that. I think Kai's, Kai's very good mechanically as well. You see that throughout the game, the, yeah. the use of the player lock, I think, is necessary for everyone now. Could be a chance here. Playing it to the edge for Marley, going to just recycle possession. Cole Palmer on the left here. Doesn't have too much to support. He found space. Oh. Great player lock cancellations there. Twisting and turning with Erling Harley. He's not really a player you would like to have in that situation. But then he recycles again because he's not in a hurry. He's leading by two goals. He knows K has to press in a way. So he's happy to keep the possession. As we just said, he is really good at keeping the possession. Maybe a possible cross. It's great controlled sprint. Runs out of play that time from Mark Marley. And for example, Tom, you were playing, as you said, back in 2020 against Marley. And it was a position you, in which you had to press. What is it you do mechanically? You second man press a lot? Yes. I mean, I, it all just happens naturally, I think. I've always, <laughs> always been someone that just always believed in pressing. I hate sitting back and waiting for the ball. Just because I struggle to do it. Like, I feel like I need to win the ball high. I think in my head, as it's happening, I'm focused on where I'm second man pressing, but also the person you're second man pressing with, you need to switch too quickly. Because yeah. if you only second man press, they can just walk around you. Yeah. You need to be at them with every time they have the ball just running at them I think it's also not being scared to make a mistake or two like with your strikers go and get them okay if you don't win it that time the next one goes the next one goes we also have to know when to stop because you can't just keep stepping the whole way a bit of mistake there from Marley we speak about mentality a lot in competing Tom oh and nice press lyrics didn't have the greatest of group stages however you did Thank lyrics's you. performances 
yesterday. Did that give you a huge boost of confidence, not just for himself as well, but for you going into your games? Maybe you could have, you feel comfortable in the sense that he's playing his, his top level, so he can do a job. Yeah, I knew it from maybe like Tuesday. I could sort of, watching Lyric's gameplay, I thought, hold on, this has been a massive improvement here from when we last played. And I feel like I wasn't playing that well, so I knew I had to step my game up. Yeah. Coming into it, obviously watching Lyric's play, Painter at Newcastle first game, definitely gives you confidence. I think, see here, Palmer. Yeah, keep a movement preventing the cross here. It's Marley's just patient, just trying to find the spaces, forcing oh. into a mistake, step over, speed boost. And again, oh, he green timed it, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, I mean, the step overs has been, have been really good at the moment. And I do think he's passing the ball, he's keeping the possession, but when he has to attack on that last third, He's doing it. I think with the teammate thing, it's why Tex and Matthias are the clear favourites because you have the confidence level. Matthias didn't actually play a game yet. Yeah. Before he comes in, he's 5-0 up. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He hasn't actually played in the knockouts and he's already 5-0 up. There is no bigger confidence boost you'll have. Not really. A great chance with that player lock because there were many defenders inside the box and he couldn't pass the ball. To Haaland as he could have enjoyed, but yeah, I mean, Marley has been comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's sort of been a perfect half without the goal scored from Mark Marley. It would have been, it was gone so far the way he would have liked. He's kept a lot of possession, he's created a lot of chances, he's nullified Kai to, to barely any opportunity to score. He could have this last attack here, play down into Rude Hullet. Edge of the box for Nesh shot, green timed, was blocked there. No chance, the luck. Wow, that player look has been amazing and effective, both things. And the first half ends nil-nil. Again, as we remind you people at home, Jaden did win the first leg 3-1. So at the moment, Brighton is leading up the game by two goals. So now, for example, Tom, let's just say you are in this position. You're losing by two goals. Are you making any tactical changes? Probably not until minute. 55 when I pause it I'd say give it five minutes don't because the problem is for Kai if you concede it's probably over yeah. so you have to be very very careful I think minute 55 make some changes probably press off possession loss and then maybe 70 is when I'd say kitchen sink time everything goes yeah so just relating back to your game your approach obviously you're down by five what happened then in your head did you think if I can get one by 15 maybe two by half time but yeah. or was it just it's basically over uh, I never think it's over yeah. there's no point playing but I was kind of like I need him in the first 20 minutes to get something then I changed the way I played because I knew I know Matthias struggles against a certain player like the way Nick Sned plays the way Gold Poacher plays yeah, we Stingray see Stingray preparing for his game relaxing listening to music what is he listening to lounge. what is he listening to um, <laughs> oh many men yeah he, li he likes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that revs always, him up gets him yeah. ready for the game he's got a big game against Dragon representing Manchester United. We'll see that just after this game as well. That's another game in the quarterfinals of the E-Premier League. Look at that Dragon yesterday, Tom. Wow. wow. Unbelievable performances. It's a good over-the-top through ball to Cole Palmer. He decides to control. But yeah, Rodri again, best right back in the Premier League. Great yes. ball as well. Yes, I like Rodri a lot. That's a nice defence, yeah. I mean, Marley's it's a really tough match for Kay Harris at the moment because he's not one of those players who could maybe, I don't know, score like two goals in five minutes. Like he's really, really consistent and he has played pretty much the whole tournament perfectly in a way because of his group stages, standings and then also in knockouts. But it's, it is really a tough match to play against at the moment against Marley. Yeah, they would have had goals. experience playing against each other as well. Do you find that hard, Tom? Do you find it more difficult playing against players you've already played? You technically would know a lot of their, their tendencies, but or do you find it harder to play against the unknown quantities? Let's say Luton, for example. Hold on a second. Oh! oh on, Into the top corner. Kai Harris, that's the goal he needed. Ignoring the header, that's my kind of goal. Yeah, I, was I, I love the say, power shot. you were speaking about. Look the at the shots. replay here. Brought down that's by Hullet. Green timed as well. Arrowed into the top corner. No have, keeper stopping that. Have we spoken about Hullet on broadcast and how good he is? No. Up front, I don't think enough. Go for it. Yeah, everyone's using him as striker. It was yeah. a late call. He obviously only came out maybe a week but, ago. Yeah, last week. And didn't know where to play him. I was like, right, we've got this unbelievable item. Yeah, Hullet is the best. Mm -hmm. And it turns out he's a striker. Everyone yeah. is using him up front. You see so many goals from him. I know it's been the Harlem show up there. But Hullet does everything. It's, yeah. the, really, it's the play really style good. pluses of both the finesse and the power shot that come in handy as well. And obviously... Pull it a conventional, well, we use them conventionally in midfield, but up front, having that five star skill move and weak foot 
combination helps a lot going forward. Yeah, especially with the playstyles. I mean, it's both the finesse shot and power shot. Yeah. So what? Those are the play for playstyles for a striker, pretty much. Yeah. Top, top three playstyles, Tom. Oh, I put them in spot right. Uh, for, <laughs> for what? For what? Like a, offensively, offensively. Offensively, finesse is a must. Yeah. yeah. I am biased to power shot because I use it all the time. And we see here. Keep it, yeah. but catch it. Manages to get a punch, actually. Get it, gets it out there for Marley. He can try and his best to keep possession. And he's, he has done it right, maybe. Yeah, that's a big mistake. mistake. It's ner nervy now, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I scored in 60 minutes and you're trying to see the game out. I wouldn't want to be Mark right now. But no. in this position, Tom, from experience, do you sort of shut shop and just go with it completely defensively or do you still sort of play your game but just a little bit more reserved? My mentality is to score at this point because I think hold, if you just hold for 30 just minutes, you're inviting pressure. Inviting pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the way, there's one thing defending, say if Kai's 30 yards out, he can just cross it. Yeah. So it's like you can do all that defensive work and then the ball goes in the box and suddenly it's like, oh, it could be one chance. So I think Mark will be getting told right now, you need to try and break out and score. Yeah. Because so would that lead to maybe potential substitutions? Would there be a change of tactic? Or just keep the tactic and just play your game? I think then? you need defensive subs anyway. You need fresh legs for Mark. I would bring attacking subs on as well. I feel like this game needs to be played at a tempo. If you completely slow it down, you just put yourself on the back foot. Yeah. Like all yeah. the best players know. I think you see so many high scoring games all across all the tournaments I've watched, all the leagues I've watched, every game I've seen. The top players are winning, like 7 5. It's not a case of, oh, I win 1 0. It doesn't, it's not a game suited to that. So yeah. I think Mark's in an awkward situation. I mean, obviously, he'd rather be winning, but I think he's got to go for it. He's got to get a goal. Yeah, yeah. especially because of styles. I mean, Mark has been managing to keep the possession and trying to play in, in kind of a low rhythm for, let's just say, four or five years now. But then this game comes out and you have to attack in a way. So it really is, for me, difficult as a player when you're playing here in the biggest stage and then you're coming to this situation in which, I mean, you are against the ropes. You are leading the game, but you know it could change in a moment. Yeah. So for you to change your style and attack, for me, it's the hardest thing a player can do. Yeah, and he's had a long pause there. Words of wisdom from his teammate, Mitch Hayward, for Wolves behind Kai. Do you find having a coach is very important at this stage? Because you had Shuri yesterday. Yeah. I mean, today. That's why we lost. Sure Shuri wasn't there. <laughs> 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 but the influence of just having somebody just behind you, not necessarily, they don't have to give gameplay tips, but just somebody. You yeah. tell me, actually, how did, how did the impact you? Uh, if you heard Manish Shuri's conversations, you probably wouldn't believe it because <laughs> yeah. we don't really talk about the game too much because I'm a believer that you do all your practice before and... I like being the one to tell my coach what I think is right and wrong and then they just kind of feed into it. Yeah. So would I you... don't like an information overload because yeah. then you start doubting yourself sometimes. You think, oh, I don't know how to do that and someone else does. So you'd prefer not to be micromanaged, just sort of let the game go? And... Yeah, everyone has a different style. I'm, I don't think there's a right way, but I just like having a good atmosphere. I just think if I'm playing a big tournament like this, there's loads of pressure on it, there's, there's money on the line, there's prestige, you yeah. want to win. Here it is again, Brighton building up here. Goal would do them the world of good. Played into Rude Hood, it couldn't turn in the box and Wolves can push forward. Uh, I think that was a mistake, the pass to Hullet. He didn't need to rush the situation like that, but probably the constant press is going to be on in a second, maybe a possible cross. He moves the keeper, he skips Back running. Oh, the play lock was great there from Marley. The keeper movement with the keeper just about got there from the, the initial keeper movement running back onto his goal line. And the press is on. I do think now Kay has all the time in the world to build up for, let's just say, two and three minutes. But when he gets to the final third, he has to attack. Here he is going forward. Is that going to be onside? It is just about. It's great movement and skill oh. moves. Oh. And he manages to keep the ball. He passes it to Rodri. Back and forth between Rodri and Rice. Oh, that's a nice defense. But yeah. 10 minutes to play. Let's see what happens with this player lots. Yeah, Kai Harris couldn't find the space. The last 10 minutes of the game now. Surely now, Tommy, the results are just maybe slowing it down completely, keeping the yeah. ball. Yeah, at this point, maybe the second goal. Because really, you can limit him to no more than two attacks here. Yeah. If he plays his cards right, two attacks, I think Kai's all logic's out of the window for Kai. He just chase the ball now. Everything goes. So it'll be perfect for, for Kai if the ball goes out. But he's managed to, that pause has been queued for a a while now as Marley keeps the ball in the corner well there. Good dribbling with Cole Palmer. 
the dribbling. Yeah. From the Mark Marley special. Yeah, it is. On the line, it's so hard to get the ball off him. It's just a controlled sprint, and it's very easy to do at home as well. He's literally just holding the R1 or right bumper. Oh, he manages to take the ball back, and this is probably one of the last kicks of the game. He decides to build up from the back with the right back, Rodri. Oh, he needs it. This is the pause. This is where everything has to be thrown at this game for Kyan Wolves to get back into the game. Jaden can't even look. Mm, oh, <laughs> can't. yeah. It's, as a teammate, the one watching, not great at all. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Jaden, I sympathise with you. I, I mean, sympathise with all. It's a high pressure situation. Yeah, this is huge for those at home. This is a spot potentially in the semi finals. It's a huge, huge game. The winner of this will play the winner of Liverpool and Manchester United later on today. Of course, just a win here secures your, your extra prize money. You get a spot or a spot in the semi-finals where if you win that game, Tom, it's a, a spot in the E-Champions League later on in this season. Of course, it puts you in the final of the E-Premier League. Yeah, yeah, that semi-final is going to be big. I hope to see a lot of limbs in the arena. Can I be biased on broadcast? Like, yeah, for on, sure, go for I'd it. love to see a goal now. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to see a late, yeah. a late goal. So I've been practicing against Kai for months and yeah. uh, so I'm hoping that he can, can do this because he's a good lad and he's, he's very good at the game as well. And I, to be fair, I just want to see some big celebrations. Yeah, <laughs> we're with you. We can see Kai okay, at the moment, it's pretty cool and calm in a way, which is a really thing, but a good thing to, to be, especially approaching these last minutes of the game. Yeah, but let's see what happens. Here we go, last three minutes in, it's a, it's a ball over the top, he's gonna just about keep mm. it in, but it falls the way of Brighton and it's two minutes plus added time left to be played, fantastic dribbling from Mark Marley as he pushes towards the final third. Oh. Fantastic dribbling. He's keeping possession, that's the aim here, he doesn't need to score another goal, he doesn't need to give away possession needlessly, he's keeping it in the corner, game management. And again, one last minute, one last chance, forward. he has to go forward. One minute of added time for Wolves to try and find a goal. He, he has to go forward here, the player lock into Haaland. Played wide here, Human Son in possession. Oh. Couldn't find a way through, it's a mistake, Son wins it again. Played outside the box, and the celebration comes from the coach there, Brighton. Not even celebrating, this is a, a huge win for them to advance into the semi-finals. And commiseration to Wolves, Kai Harris and Mitch Hayward doesn't, they don't do enough to progress into the next round. Again, I hate to mention it, but that goal in the first leg, the last minute. Yeah. I know it's easy to say it, but just those mistakes can prove to be very costly in the E Premier League. It's always about the small details, but you cannot play a perfect FC match. Like you always have to afford those mistakes. The thing is, if your opponent capitalizes on them, then it's really a really tough thing here. But yeah, Jaden and Marley progresses to the semi-finals, both the Brighton team. And yeah, I think it was a pretty strong performance by both of them with their styles. I mean, Jaden with the attacking and mechanical FC, yeah. but then Marley managing to keep the ball for a bit. Yeah, Marley must feel strange. He's just lost. Yeah. Then he's also won yeah. the game. Because <laughs> he's actually he's managed the game pretty well, even though he's lost 1-0 yeah. at the end. He kept the ball really well last 15 minutes. So he's probably not happy because that's the only time he's played and he's lost. But he's it's about doing a job. Yeah. Exactly. Don't care how you do it, you've won. Exactly. And Brighton have their spot now into the semi-finals. Consistent performers. We always see Mark Marley in the later stages of the competition, but we also always see Mitch Hayward. Doesn't manage to get the job done today. Yeah. He's eliminated in the top eight. But yeah, some strong competitors, and as I mentioned, the, the semi-final will be between Brighton and the winner of Liverpool and Manchester United, which will be taking place shortly. Summarise that game, Tom, the second leg. KG, KG is the word, yeah. You can tell people are starting to think about the final, it's knockout day, you can see, you know, I think if that was a group game, you wouldn't see it play out like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining us, especially after losing a game as hard no before worries. the finals. But yeah. no, being professional to be here. Thank you so much for being here and joining us. And we are throwing it back to Kyle. Thank you, guys. Cheers, Grav, Tom and Ryan as well. What a matchup that was. We now know three of our four semi-finalists. And after the break, we'll find out if it will be either Liverpool or Manchester United that complete our semi-final lineup. I promise you, you don't want to miss it.
Welcome back. You are watching the E Premier League Finals 2024 and what a result for Brighton and Hove Albion as they become the third of our semi-finalists beating Wolverhampton Wanderers in what felt like a bit of a stalemate head-to-head uh, -head really. Both of those matches were kind of a case of both players playing with such patience and almost a little bit of hesitancy. However, Brighton did come out on top, but who will they be facing next? We have one more quarterfinal to play, and it's going to be Liverpool versus Manchester United. And to talk about these teams, I have the wonderful Ryan Pessoa. He is our resident ex-pro. I don't I hate saying ex-pro, Ryan, <laughs> because you're a professional now it standing. Makes you feel old as well. Oh, can you, we, we have this conversation all the time. No one is allowed in this broadcast talent team to say they feel old in front of me. Thank you very much. Ryan, I want to talk to you, first of all, about Stingray, yeah. because if we look back to January, he topped the group. He was king of the Travellers. Yep, exactly. Uh, the key mention there, the Travellers. However, there's been a patch. They're not as effective as they once were, but you'll be able to see the clips here. Stingray scored a lot of goals from them. The ball roll into the Traveller, the green timing, though, which is a key component to his attacks. He's very efficient and effective in front of goal, but he's not afraid to take shots with obscure players. You saw their Cal Walker, a Traveller from 25 yards out. And of course, a whipped ball in there in front of goal, perfectly timed against Spurs, who we saw earlier on today. But Stingray and his teammate Darius, they've, they've been the team that had to wait the longest in terms of the four quarter finalists that were already, already put into this stage. So they've had to watch the tournament unfold. They've watched potential competitors and they'll be eager to go. So very quickly, what's going to replace the Walker Travellers? Is it going to be like KDB finesse? I'm going to I'm going to say finesse shots. I would say <laughs> finesse shots are obviously a key component. They've got the, the play style pluses as well. Another player who we been playing against the first game, Stingray up against Dragon. We saw him yesterday. He was superb. He was unbelievable going forward. He scored. Correct me if I'm wrong, 11 goals in the first two games he played, the, the highest scorer across the two games, and he was just relentless. And not even in his games then, he had to come back from three goals down against Aston Villa, and he, he done it in incredible fashion. You can see some of the goals there, the skill move cancellations, the passing, threading of the needle passes to, to, to players that maybe some players wouldn't have even opted to go for. And that, that was the goal to put him 4-3 up. And the goals just kept on coming. He ended up scoring six goals in this game. Intricate playing, intricate passes, and he wasn't afraid to celebrate as well. I remember him telling Casey in the pre-match interview, I'm going to play a little bit more defensively. I'm going to balance out my game. We've known him in the past as this free-flowing attacking player. Yeah. And to be honest, I feel like that's what we saw yesterday. Yeah, right? we did. In fairness, though, his defence has improved a lot. I remember Dragon from years gone by. It's always been a weak point. But yesterday, he didn't concede that many goals. So that would give him a lot of confidence. Quick prediction. Oh, no. I'm at, oh, I said quick. I'm not doing it. No prediction today. I say, well, because I did say quick, I'm going to get that from you in just a moment <laughs> because right now we just don't have time. We've got to kick off our final quarterfinal. It's going to be a banger. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool. <laughs> From Liverpool, it's Stingray and Dariush. And for Manchester United, it's Dragon and David Murray. It's going to be so exciting to see these two teams. Ryan Purcell would not give me a prediction before our players walked out. And to be honest, I think I know the reason why. I think he cannot call this. Because judging by the way that Dragon played yesterday, everyone is going to be his prisoner on that stage. The mental game is going to be particularly interesting in our first matchup between Dragon and Stingray because these players know each other very well. You might even consider them rivals. What would you say, Richard Buckley and Gravison? I would say we've got two of the biggest and best teams to ever grace the footballing pitch and two huge football clubs, Liverpool versus Manchester United. An E Premier League winner in Liverpool 2019. And do you know who they beat in that final? Kyle Lees of Manchester United. One of them potentially could be going all the way here this evening. It's going to be Liverpool and Stingray stepping up to the mark first, taking on Dragon of Manchester United. The man who has retired and unretired more times than I have had hot dinners myself. He is back on the main stage once again to prove why he is one of the best to ever do it. What an intro, man. Congrats to you, I'm clapping. I'm clapping to that intro, but yeah. 
Ryan didn't want to give a prediction, but... You will. I will. I think Liverpool takes this game convincingly. It all comes down to the first game for me. <laughs> if Dragon can get something out of Stingray, if he can get a, a draw or even a win, I think it's going to be fireworks. I really do. You're going into that second game, you're going with Darius versus David Murray. That's a real unknown. You just don't know what to expect from that game. In this particular match, the scoreline could be anywhere from 2-2 two -two to 6-0. Let's remind people at home that these teams competed against each other in the group stage with Liverpool winning the PlayStation match 3-1, to one, so Darius bet David Murray 3-1, to one, but then the Stingray against Dragon, the match we are watching on Xbox, was a draw. Here is Dragon getting underway. He's putting in that stripey kit from right to left and all in red, as you would expect for Liverpool from left to right. Oh. Flair not making... Thierry Henry looking towards the back post. So Howland heads it down. Rude Hullet asking questions of Alisson. Early doors. Henry takes over. Beautiful play inside the box from Stingray. He's come out with one thing on his mind and that's to give Dario of Liverpool a good lead going into the second leg. I do agree with Ryan Pesoro because he mentioned how probably he did use a lot of tribellas in the group stage, but I do think he's going to go for the finesses, especially with Henri, with Son. Son. That's it, the trivial, I called it, uh, the finesse, sorry, I called it, but yeah, especially because of the finesse shot. I mean, if you look at those strikers and midfielders, I think three of them has the finesse shot plus, so... Well, Stingray also, I mean, when you look at his individual career, yep, some really good achievements. Yep. Uh, 2v2 grand final, um, we saw him last season in some of the biggest tournaments in FC. There's Mo Salah on the finesse! The Dragon is roaring in the quarterfinals. What an amazing finesse. I wasn't expecting a Mo Salah finesse, but then so again, far out. the space and the angle was right. And Dragon, I think we both agree on this, he's an orthodox player yes. in the FC 24 because we could expect more player locks, more skills, but he knows the fundamentals and he keeps using them right. And, and he also plays so differently compared to most because he's got that unpredictability in his game. It, did, it was down the middle of the pitch, that finesse shot. Rude oh. Hullet, directional nutmeg into a oh. three. Oh. <laughs> Take a bow, come on. What a goal. I mean, take us into it, Richie, because oh. again, the Ocus Pocus. Come on. Come on. He tried it twice already. He tried it twice. He, the first time he got tackled, that time. Just a brilliant goal. Oh. And those are. This is pretty much what we're going to see. This is what we thought. Yeah, and this is what we're going to see throughout this whole first leg. We're going to see Dragon using the fundamentals in the right way, but then Stingray, mechanically, one of the best players in the world, that Ocus Pocus was just incredible. And you just saw a nod of appreciation as well from Dragon, Carlos Tevez getting the starting shirt, leading the line alongside Erling Haaland for Manchester United, that switch of play. Wasn't strong enough, but yeah, I mean, we know Dragon likes to use some interesting choices. Unconventional. Unconventional. And Mo Salah, it's probably one of the first times we've seen him in the starting eleven. And Carlos Tevez, yep. the same. But it's working out well for him. 1-1, one, one, 26 minutes on the clock here. You're watching the E Premier League 2023-24 Grand Finals. We're at the quarter finals stages, top eight. Oh. We'll soon go down to a final four. Erling Haaland bundling past his man, cuts oh. it back. It was green time, but Allison dove across his line to keep it at a level game. Stingray continuing his pressure. Possible cross. Floating into the back post, Sons up, wins the header, but Schweinsteiger in the right place at the right time. Yeah, a really poor touch by Haaland in that cross. And this is, this is dangerous. And the back post could be on. What a pass! What a pass! 
I don't think he meant it. I don't think he meant it as well, but anyways, it's a goal, so that's what matters. Yeah, that was a great pass. I think he meant it for the... The player at the front. Yeah, I do think. All the way through. I think it's because of the power bar, probably. I mean, it was a full power bar. This is a great over the top. Power ball oh. from the kickoff. Nice defense by company, in my opinion. Can't take a breath. No, no, can't. I mean, it's a stingray game, for sure. We cannot take a breath. Possible cross to Haaland as well. He decides to go for it. No. I think it was a good idea. Poorly executed. Just see Dragon just getting a little bit of the ball here. Knocking it around the back, trying to... I like settle, but just... Oh. Haaland? No. That's a typical pass you could have expected in 2019, 2020, you know, the triangle. But I do think now you should use the driven pass in those situations. But that's the thing about Dragon. He plays in... Uh, he plays his way. Yeah, in his way. Tevez into Haaland. Mo Salah. Twisting, turning. It's found its way into the back of the net. What's a game? It's what we, it's what we built to. We can see how he decided to pass to Haaland. This, I'm, I gotta tell you, the trip, the the ball roll was really nice, and Stingray was complaining a little bit because he moved the keeper to the right post. But sometimes when a shot is that clear, it just goes in. So we oh, understand. Salah, two goals. <laughs> Dragon. <Yeah. laughs> and he's potentially trying to turn the sister here as Haaland was going in behind. He saw the space, but the pass just couldn't quite find its way through. And if we remind people at home, the game they played in the group stage, 2-2. But now they've managed to done it in 45 minutes. Stingray seems to be uncomfortable, probably, about a few things inside the game. Well, it's been four goals. It's been end-to-end -end FC all tie long so far. Stingray getting some words of wisdom from... Diogo, who sat behind them. These are the goals that you might have missed if you are just joining us. Mo Salah opened the scoring for Manchester United. Yes, you're seeing that right. Against Liverpool. Rude Hullet into Thierry oh. Henry. The hocus pocus and then a lovely finish into the back of the net. What we're saying on this one, Son was the player intended. It's gone all the way through to Haaland. And the final goal of the half, five minutes before the ref blew up. Van der Sar, not enough on it. And we are back underway. The game is kicked off for the second half. You've not missed a thing. Liverpool against Manchester United. Definitely a game to watch here in the E-Premier League. That's poor touch by Thierry Henry. But still, he has the chance to recycle it. Schweinsteiger into Rude Hulley. It's his pass. A little bit weak. It should have been a driven pass uh, as well. But I, I get it. Like, I know Dragon. Like in previous titles, you didn't no need to use the air one as, as much as you use it now. So it's tough for him, I'm sure. Play lock into Sun. Nice. Triple, it does well just to get back and win the ball. However, Ogbene, who's the original pass maker, has won it back for Liverpool. Henri, he's got a bag of tricks. So has this man, Hummin Sun. 3-2. Took Stingray about seven minutes into the second half. And this is the difference of game time we've been talking about. We know Dragon likes to keep it to short passes, but Stingray, as soon as he got inside the box, it was a step over. Aggressive. Into his pupils and a really good time shot into the back of the net. But, but the thing is, as you mentioned it, aggressiveness. Wasting no time to get back underway. It was Carlos Tevez leading the attack. Stingray defended well in a nice chance. Nice lock. For Stingray, Son could be away from the middle. He's got to mark that, does Dragon. He's also got to mark the man on the ball. There is Son. Oh, 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 oh. Brilliant goal. Brilliant goal. I mean, the build-up has been amazing. Perfect. Brilliant passes to Saka. And I mean, I did not see that pass from Son to really happening. And we can see what it means for Stingray because a two-goal lead. It's huge. It's a big league in the quarter-final. Well, he was successful the last time out he played in the 
a domestic league on FC. He went over to France last year, did Stingray and picked up that trophy. He wants to come back home because he said he's got unfinished business here in the E Premier League. He wants to go all the way with Liverpool. Book his place into the FC Pro World Championships and the E Champions League. Good build up as well. Thierry Henry sliding through Rude Hull, it could be five. Oh, I don't think he meant that. But again, <laughs> get another chance. Allison with a great save. Harlan cuts it back just offside, I think, in there. Oh, that was really that was a big chance. I think he meant to do the heel to ball roll, but it was a mistake mechanically. Chipped it. Yeah, he chipped it. Rude Hullet coming forward for Manchester United. You're looking for that extra pass maybe into the box. Mohamed Salah twisting, turning, Harlan. Nice and Dyke steps out and wins the ball back. And it's pretty route one, to be honest. Hmm. From Stingray on that occasion. Pause queued in the top corner. If you're wondering at home, well, when I pause a game, when I'm playing kick-off, it just goes straight into the pause here on the competitive version of the game. The ball has to go out of play for that pause to be initiated. So he could be waiting four, five, six in-game minutes. And there is a bit of a, a meta game to that. If you're Stingray right now, you know he wants to make changes. Keep that ball in play. Definitely, because you're not in a hurry. And we know the stamina of some of the Man United players might be a little bit low at the moment. So I do think he has to try to keep the ball as he's doing at the moment. Possible cross to Haaland. Some nice header, green time, but it goes out. And Stingray now has given Dragon the chance to make some tactical changes, maybe some substitutions as well. And maybe Carlitos Tevez is off the pitch. It gives us a chance to sort of dissect what we've been seeing, because we said it's been, it's been frantic, it's been a very fast-paced game. What have you made so far? 73 minutes you've watched. Is it going the way that you expected? Probably, probably. As I mentioned, I think Liverpool were the favourites and I think they were going to win the whole thing. But the whole thing I seen this round. But in a way, Dragon's playing really well. So I do think if he scores a goal, it's a 4 3 result. And it's a. You take that if you manage It's United. a decent one. Yeah, it's a decent one coming to the second leg. Rodri passes the ball. Nah, that's a big mistake. Ben Feinstein has bailed him wow. out. What a tackle. Garnacho. Garnacho! Oh, come on. I love Dragon Man. Young <laughs> <laughs> Minson into Paul Futre. <laughs> this is what we thought it was going to happen, and it happened. So thank you, Dragon, for giving us different players to be commentating. Garnacho on. for Manchester United. This is a good build up. Son, he's got the pace to get away from Van Dijk, expect him to recycle, maybe play to the edge of the box. Woo! And there it is, Bruno Fernandes. Try to scoop it into the path of Erling Haaland. He is a magical nice player, dribbling. but he can't quite perform miracles with that ball. Garnaccio, a couple of step-overs. Oh! I thought I was going in. I thought I was going in. <laughs> What just happened? What just happened? But yeah, he manages to keep the ball with with Ogben at the moment. And in the same in the same phase of play, Liverpool come down the other end, potentially looking to get a fifth and seal this game off. Ogben Son waiting for the support. It comes in there, form of Hullet and Henri. Here is Hullet again. Wrong skill again. But yeah, Paulo Futre. That's a nice pass, and he might be through. No. Company strong. Vincent Company, probably the second best centre back in the E Premier League at the moment. So now Stingray has one more chance. Do you think he'll take the last kick of the game? I think he's, the way that this game's going, you've just got to go. You attack every single time you go forward with the intent of scoring a goal. Saka, what's he got in the locker? Ball off Gupton, taking the space. Reverse Elastico into the gap. And it does give Dragon a chance to potentially half this deficit and go into the second leg with a 4-3 scoreline. Garnaccio taking all the space he's being given. Gets the corner, the referee will play it. Last chance of the game. 
He should be looking for Haaland. Maybe the penalty point. Let's wait and see. Play a lot. Haaland near post. It's going to fall back to Paolo Futri out wide. Referee doesn't want to give it, and that will do us a truly end-to-end affair of some real elite attacking quality. Stingray, 4-2 win in the end. Maybe it feels as though could have got more. Dragon will feel a little bit hard done by not to have got a third goal in that game. It ends, and you could have got another leg of that, being completely honest. I do think Stingray, if you look at his reactions right now, he's not entirely happy with the result, but it's still a 4-2 result. Yeah. 4-2 win coming into the second leg. I think he should be happy. I think, yeah. But he might just feel as though I could have done more. Yeah. There's, there's a sort of a... In a, few, a lot of the teams, most of the teams, it's a bit of a 50-50 split, but in a few of the teams, the sort of captain of that squad, and he's definitely the captain of this Liverpool side, so he'll feel the responsibility to give my teammate a, a five, a six-goal lead. But then again, coming into the second leg, the PS5 leg between Darius and David Murray, this is a rematch as well, it's the group, group stage. What happened? 3-1 result for Darius. So coming with a two-goal lead into the second leg and then with a previous match between them. And look, the last time David Murray was on this stage, he probably thought it was his last time on the stage because he lost 3-0. Dragon had to bail him out. It's the other way around. And David Murray has to win by two clear goals if he wants to keep Manchester United in the E Premier League. Let's start the second leg. Good step overs, good pass into the Bruyne, maybe a possible cross into it. Stinked in, but Van der Sar no. just does well. Not good enough. I think he mentioned it. Uh, he he tried to cross it to Haaland, but yeah. You just see an early post cue there as well from Darius. The first time we see Darius on the main stage here at the EPL finals. Yeah, maybe settings or something, you would say. Yeah, potentially. Could be. It happened yesterday. I think uh, we've, we saw a couple of times. Boss is made in the first minutes of the game for the settings to be changed. But if you are Man United... Oh, what a mistake. Goes to ground there, oh, does... Rafa Varane. Yeah, Darius wins the ball back. It looks like Henri's playing right back. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe tactics? I think, yeah, something's just not quite set up right. Which I'm telling you, this is a big mistake, in my opinion. Like Unless it. he wants Henri to be playing right back. Uh, maybe. Son just yeah. didn't turn his man, however, couldn't quite find the pass. I'm just trying to see who it would be. I mean, the, the weirdest player of position has to be Henry as a right back, but it could work. The thing is that defensive stats are not there at all. But yeah, it could be. I mean, if you're comfortable playing uh, with Henry as a right back, it's okay, really. Like, you have to play the way you're comfortable with, in a way. I really like the way... That's offside? No. I really like the way David Moore is present at the moment. With the strikers, as we can see, with Thierry Henry at the moment. With the centre midfielders as, as well. If you want to come back from a two-goal deficit, you have to press. And he's doing it right. Rune Hullet just looking for that dink over the top. Rodri just about clears it, and that's like a pause will come in now. Let's see what is changed. Now they have time to catch a, a breath, drink some water. Maybe we can see in a moment if Henry has changed. Yes, I think it probably will be. I don't think it makes sense for Thierry Henry to be a right back. De Bruyne whipped into the box. Haaland's doing his defensive due diligence, and you can see that the change has been made. Ogbené back at right back. He was sort of in the centre mid position, so I think there were a couple of players that were just out of shape, but now he's back in where he wants Whoa. to be. Nice step overs. Ah, that's a weird pass. It wasn't, it wasn't converted, but still, 
Look at the press. I mean, the press has been insane. Yeah, David Murray stuck it on him. That's what you got to do when you're losing by two goals. Havertz has come a long way out of the back there, though. And there could be space in that left-back position. Not Benning just trying to slide in. Young min Son. Yeah, maybe over the top through ball instead of a driven pass. I think it was the right choice anyways. Sometimes you do the right choice, but it doesn't work. Haaland up against Van Dijk. Virgil always the favourite in those individual battles. At this moment, I think the game is, is comfortable for Liverpool because he's finding the strikers. Let's see if he can find something else in the last third, which is the thing that has been missing for Darius at the moment. Nice dribbling. It's no, there's no urgency. No, he's not in a hurry. For me, the thing is, you got to build up right, especially coming out to the last third, but then the last third, you got to be aggressive. Even though you, Yeah, even though you're leading by two goals, you still got to be aggressive. Because if not, it could happen what happened to Marley a couple of minutes ago. And then you're in a final 10 minutes where you're nervy and the game could go either way. Yeah, most definitely. That's a nice press by Ferdinand. It's played well in the defensive areas, has David Murray. It's got a click in the final third, but he was just offside with Rude Hullitz. I do think probably Man United's tactics at the moment with the depth is probably 70 plus, in which you offside trap a lot automatically by the game. And looking at the way the defense is at, I'm probably sure the depth is over 70 at the moment. Fernandez, long ball pass plus activator. That's going to stay in play and it's going to fall right. On the boots of Rude Hullet. But Chilwell positioned correctly by Darius. In a good line to intercept anything coming his way. And again, that pass, Ogbene. That's since moving over to right back, has had plenty of the ball. Look at Haaland. Possible pass to him. Made a running field, has Erling Haaland. Does get involved now. De Bruyne, finesse territory. Elects to go into Erling. We'll take the corner. I was surprised that didn't get finessed. Thought De Bruyne left foot, maybe. I thought the angle was right. Yeah. The space was right as well. Whipped in from De Bruyne. Haaland v Haaland. Rafael for run inside the box. Son dinks back post. Haaland's up. Good save from Edwin van der Sar. Man United live on. He has one more chance to attack. Decides to pass it to Bruno Fernandes. We can see how the right back it's running up the pitch at the moment. Yeah, if you just look at the, the radar on the bottom of the screen right now, that's where you're looking for the space. Who's the free man? This is a big Not. mistake. Big mistake. Right there. Mm, I, sh I think he should have attacked. Would you like to be a bit more instinctive and go forward there? Last attack of the half. I'm going to explain you why. Uh, so, Hubbard, the corner was... Habert jumped with Haaland in the corner, so Habert was supposed to be the left-back, so he was out of position. But then when he attacked, he triggered a run to Habert, so Habert was running with the right-back. So it was the right-back, Habert and I think Haaland as well. As soon as he took the ball, it was only the two centre-backs against the four strikers. I understand you're leading by two goals and it could be dangerous, but I think you got to attack. Let's have a look. As you can see, Habert's in here. Yeah. I think it's just... The space is there, maybe down the, the byline for a through goal, or you, you go backwards. I think you got to attack, because it's too clear of a chance. And if you trigger a couple of runs, it's a 4v2 situation. Could be a missed opportunity. We're back underway, let's get into it. Second half between Manchester United and Liverpool. I'm joined by myself, Richard Buckley and Graveson to break down everything that is happening. Liverpool just offside. David Moore is still in this game whenever it's only a two-goal swing. Wins the header, Son, space to go into, Hullitz. Good pressure from Virgil van Dijk. Yeah, maybe the pass wasn't necessary to the striker because, I mean, team of the year, van Dijk, on those 1v1 situations, he's going to win them all. He's too strong, he's too... He's dominant. Yeah, too good, I was going to say, but yeah. <laughs> Dominant, definitely. 
Just opening up the pitch yet again, Rodri now. Fernandez dinked into the air, Son Howland's on this time! But Van der Sar was very, very quick off his line, a combination of goalkeeper and defender keep Liverpool two up. Nice press, he was aggressive. Ah, He has to be aggressive, but he has to be patient as well, because he has a lot of time, so still. 30 feet, 35 minutes to be played. He can get loads of attack. Loads of space. And time for Ogbené. Declan Rice, Rude Hulley, Haaland, this could be the dagger. Dario playing a little bit slower, not going forward, not needing that goal. But I'm sure he'll want it. I'm sure Stingray does as well. Haaland up, well, just offside, the referee will play on. It's getting all a little bit frantic at the moment, with 30 minutes left to play. Look, this is a mistake, Haaland. Pace, power, is the precision there? No. It's missing something from, from David, something is missing. Because I think he's finding the last third, but then he's, he's good space. rushing a little bit. I do think sometimes, Tom mentioned it a couple of minutes ago, a brilliant insight. Texas is always waiting for you to do something when you're defending. So if you if Texas is attacking, he's waiting for you to overcommit in a way. And if you overcommit, then he attacks. That's patient, and that's what's missing from David Murray at the moment. Lovely pass given straight on to Havertz. Howard, this could be the chance! Come it's on, green! Go for, and it's on, good man. for Manchester United. 25 minutes left to play. They are right back in this game. I know it's a topic over the the whole weekend, but again, the whip crops. Place that Havertz just stuck it right on him. Perfectly. I mean, it was a perfect cross by Havertz with the whip cross. And then you got to time it green. He did it. It was a time green. It was a beautiful finish by Haaland. And now it's a tough position for Darius. So far, when you look at what we've seen today, group winners, City, tick, Luton, tick, Brighton, tick. Will Liverpool be joining those three who did it in January, who were top of the pile and finalising the top four? A pause is queued and a lot of words coming in here from both coach, Diogo and Stingray on the other side of it, David yeah, Murray is locked in and he's ready to go. He knows he the, when when he the mission objective in front of him. Press, get a chance. Send us to extra time or maybe even go and win the game in the regulation 90. When you're playing these matches, it's important to have people around you that support you and give you the right words at the right time. And I do think having Diogo and Stingray behind you and besides you, it's really... It's a good soundboard. Definitely. They also know exactly what you're going through. I mean, they've been competing at the highest level for, what, now? Five years? Six? Just run out of play there by Darioche. Haaland again will always win the header. And it's up in the air, no one is better. Son, Havertz again, is there a whip cross in the offing? Not on this occasion. Still 20 minutes to be played. I do think, as I said before, David has to be patient. Like, the defence was out of position. He kind of passed it without thinking or looking. I think he has to be a little bit more patient to, cons to score another goal. Big chance for Liverpool. Declan Rice into Kevin De Bruyne. Rio Ferdinand stepping out the back, winning the ball. And space for Son. Look at the bullet. Is he going to get the better of Chilwell? He is. Rude Hulley in the box. Reverse elastico oh. against Chilwell. Maybe a speed boost instead of a reverse elastico. I mean, the second man press was right from Darius. 15 minutes left to play. 4 3 on aggregate. The winner plays Brighton in the semi-finals with a crack at Liverpool, with a crack at City or Luton in the final. But will it be Liverpool? The constant press comes in. 
Here they are, Henri, big chance! Two goal advantage, reinstated for Liverpool Football Club. And it was patient from Dariosh. That's a brilliant goal. I do think that's the reaction we're looking for as well. That's not the reaction David Murrow was looking for. But then again, I think the constant press came at the right time because, I mean, 10 minutes left, you gotta press. And if your opponent is just dribbling, you gotta go for the constant press. But maybe the second man press was not necessary as well in this situation. But again, I don't think it was a David Murray's mistake. I do just think it was good from Darius. It was good from Darius, yeah. Still, the game isn't over because we have 10 minutes left and anything can happen in an FC game. But David Murray has to score in the next five or six minutes to be alive in the game. <coughs> that could have been the decisive moment for Liverpool. Only six minutes left to play. Seven or eight with a little bit of injury time. Oh. Just didn't get what he wanted out of the uh, animation there. That's a poor pass. Couple of step overs from Henri. He will take the pace down the byline. Cuts it back to Hull. It's finesse. It's in. Three and a half minutes to go. Man United. One goal needed. That's approximately five in-game minutes left. As we can see, Man United is pressing. They're right. throwing everybody at it. And he does win the ball back, David Murray. He's going to have one more crack at this. To break Liverpool hearts and senders for the first time this weekend to extra time. He's alive. Henri... Not quite, Liverpool will hang on. With seconds remaining, and book their place into the semi-finals. It was by no means a walk in the park for Liverpool. But they will join Brighton, Manchester City, and Luton Town as your top four. Gravison, what a game. We sadly have to say goodbye to Man United, a team we've seen throughout the whole tournament. Playing in an unorthodox way, but playing in a really good way. We do appreciate the way Dragon and David Murray has been playing throughout pretty much this whole weekend again. But Stingray and Darius managed to, to get the job done. And I do think they are one of the favourites in this lower bracket of the knockouts. Yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, not only to seeing what they're going to do in the semi-finals, but to hearing from them as well. And that's what we can do right now with Leah Ravel. Thank you so much, Richard. I am here with now the now semi-finalists, Liverpool with Stingray and Darioche. Darioche finishing that one off after the first leg that Stingray had a really, really good start for him to go into. Darioche, tell me about any pressure you felt, how you felt after that first match. Um, I just started second-guessing myself a little bit, trying to play too defensive. I feel like when I went forward, it was um, a lot easier. I had a lot more space, but that's why I've got to try and stick to my game plan. And I've been Stingray and Diogo next to me. That helped a lot because they just kept my head in check. Amazing. Well, Sting, you started the game off well. Tell me how it felt not having played since January and going into Sunday, kind of raw, perhaps? So, obviously, we haven't played since group stage ended. And, you know, it's a bit nervous because they've had their practice. They've got a bit of a takeover on them, but Nah, thankfully I've come here, like, I know what I need to do, I know what I do, I know what I do best, and I put, I've just put it all to work. That's right, so now you guys have Brighton in the semi-final match, one more win, and you got you both get E-Champions League spots, and then two more, you guys are champions. How do you feel going into the semi-final against Brighton? I feel like I've learned a lot from that, um, that last game, just to play my football, um, and I think Brighton are tough opponents, but I think we could, we could get them. Amazing, too. I mean, obviously one game at a time, right? So we're focusing on this next game, 
playing against two really good friends of mine, Jaden and Mark. It's going to be a fun game, but I know what's going to happen. Here. There you go. The confidence in both of those teammates. We have lots to play for in the semi-final between Liverpool and Brighton. But first, we're going to hear from Frankie. Thank you very much, guys. We have witnessed four brilliant quarterfinals, but there's plenty more action to come. So make sure you join us in just a couple of minutes when we will be counting down to both epic semi-finals. Welcome back to the show where we are just minutes away from the first of our two blockbusting semi-finals. But before the break, the passion was there on both sides for Manchester United and Liverpool. In the end, a 5-4 victory on aggregate to Stingray and Darius, who we'll see facing off against Brighton in the second of our semi-finals. But before then, it's going to be incredibly interesting because we're going to get to see Manchester City play again. They're the favourites and they're up against the new kids on the block, Luton Town. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful match because we see the favourites, Manchester City, Tex and Matias Bonanno. I mean, two amazing and experienced players who have been competing for four or five years now. And then we have Luton Town with Luke and Harvey, who are playing really good. And they're really young, but they don't really feel the pressure. And I don't think they should feel the pressure in this semi-final against City because, I mean, they have nothing to lose, really. I mean, they are young, they are still have like a career in front of them. So in my opinion, there shouldn't be any pressure on their shoulders. And I think that's how they have to play this game. And we are going to talk about that one in a moment, but you did just commentate over that Liverpool-Manchester United game. Brilliant to see David Murray taking the game of Darius, even if it wasn't enough to take them through to that second semi-final. But what did you think of Liverpool's performance? Do you think it's enough to take them to the finals? I do think Stinger played really good. He wasn't happy with his performance, but he played really good. And Darius was a bit afraid. And I don't think you need to, if you are afraid, you're not really going to get to the final. So you have to go for it. I don't think he he's, he can afford to play another match like he did. He needs to just put the fear away and go for it. Well, we know that Brighton are going to take on Liverpool in that aforementioned semi-final. And one of their players, Jaden, is with Kyle and Brian at the analysis board. Thank you, Frankie. He is indeed. Uh, Jaden, congratulations, first of all. You've made your way through to the semi final. You now know who your opponents are. Coming up against Liverpool, first thoughts and feelings about that? Yeah, it's going to be a really tough game. Uh, Liverpool have re really two good players. 
but I think if we play our game, we can definitely go on and get to the final. Right, and let's have a look at some of Jaden's goals from a previous game just here. What do you like about his, uh, his gameplay so far? Yeah, I think the fundamentals are always going to be there. This came from a cross with Erling Haaland, Jaden. Speak to us about the importance of having that aerial dominance in the box. Uh, currently, the meta for this game is that as soon as you cross it, Haaland with that aerial plus, you'll win the ball every time. So you'll see most players doing it. And if the keeper doesn't come out, it's just a simple header down and a goal. When you look at goals like that, that second one, how important is it when you're coming up against such a strong opposition, let's say? Uh, I mean, every player here at the E Premier League is massive, they're great, but when you get that advantage, how important is that? Yeah, I think it's definitely something good to have as there's so many different ways to score, but it's probably the best one at the minute. And if you keep on doing it over and over again, then you'll probably win the most matches. Yeah, well, we're looking at it here again, aren't we, Ryan? Yeah, it's not just about the, the knockdowns. Speak to us about player locks as well in the air, because that's another way just to generate space for the attackers to get the cross into them. Yeah, so player locks are something that I've been practicing personally a lot. As in, what you can do is you can move the player about. So it's really, really good because usually your player will just manual, AI will move it, but you can do it all by yourself. So then by doing a player lock, that means that you can create your own space. Well, Jaden, we know you've got plenty to prepare for just now before that huge semi-final against Liverpool. Good luck for that one. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, are you going to give a prediction now he's here or are you not going to...? No predictions. No predictions. No, predi no predictions <laughs> just oh, now. I nearly got it out of him, Frankie, didn't I? You really did, Kyle, to be honest. You're the predictions guy from now on um, because otherwise it's going to get violent between me and Ryan. Whoever wins the second semi-final will take on either Manchester City or Luton Town in the final. And Leah caught up with the guys from Luton earlier. Hello, guys. We are backstage with the now semi-finalists, Harvey Waters and Luke Downing. A dominant performance. I'll come to you first, Harvey. We spoke a little bit before the match. You said you were confident, but you guys haven't played since January. How do you feel after your dominant performance? A little bit shaky first 20 minutes, a bit nervous, I think, but I grew into my own when it has the game went on. Yeah, definitely you did, and you set up the second leg well for Luke Downing as well. Luke, I'll come to you first. Tell me about your performance. Tell me how you felt after Harvey's good performance in the first leg. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, Harvey pretty much did it for me. Three goal leads going into the second leg. I wasn't too happy with the way I played. I thought going forward I was good, but just defensively it needs to be improved for the semi-finals for sure. There you go. Well, you do have some time to train before the semi-finals or to corroborate um, and get things together. Luke, I have a question. I noticed in the first 30 minutes or so, you're actually playing on overload. When did you notice that you had done that? Um, I think my coach told me. There was an early pause, I think, from GRK. And my coach, like, got overload ball side on, and I'm like, I've made this mistake a lot in practice and I didn't think I'd do it in the real thing. And then <laughs> some of my players' stamina is down and it's a bit shaky, but yeah, it might do work. Well, listen, it doesn't matter at all because you guys are through to the semi-final playing another juggernaut in Manchester City. How do you feel, Harvey, about that big matchup? It'd be a tough game, but anything can happen if it's our day. But it's going to have to be probably a bit of luck go our way. Listen, Harvey has been undefeated since January since the group stages, so maybe he's looking to keep that going. Luke, tell me about your matchup with Manchester City and how you feel about that one. Um, I feel confident. I mean, they're the favourites. They've got it all to do. The pressure's on them, so I think it's sort of a free hit. Obviously, we still want to win and get to the final, but the pressure's not on us, really. Well, what a upset that would be. The underdogs in Luton Town looking to take on the juggernaut, the big Manchester City in the semi-final. I'll let them go get prepared for that one, and we will see how that goes next. We will, because Luton Town is about to arrive on stage. They'll be facing off against Manchester City. And it's interesting because when you think of Tex from Manchester City, you can sometimes think he has slow starts. And actually, the first 20 minutes of his game earlier on against Tottenham Hotspur's lyrics was a little bit nervous at points, I have to say, Gravison. But after the pause, he was back on form. Yeah, Tom was just telling us in the commentary how Tex is really... We don't think about it that much because for some of us, it's still that kid that dominated when he was 16, 17, but he's an experienced player now. And he knows when you're playing first 20 minutes, you're not comfortable, maybe with the settings or whatever, you gotta pause it. Because sometimes it's just as important that those tactical pauses as the things you do in game with the skilling, attacking and everything. It's really interesting watching the way that Tex performs as well, because sometimes when I'm seeing some of the players this weekend moving the ball around the box, they just miss the opportunity. They leave it too late to score. But with Tex, if he's cycling that ball around, you've got to be really worried if you're his opponent. Yeah, especially because he's patient. I mean, two of his goals, 
against Lyrics. It was just him doing nothing. And I'm telling you, do nothing inside, to do nothing inside the box sometimes is the hardest thing of all. So, I mean, for Harvey now, he has to be patient inside the box, which is hard because sometimes you just want to take the ball and tackle. But sometimes, especially against Dex, you got to be patient. Well, hopefully Manchester City are not going to be underestimating their opponents, Luton Town. And Ryan Pessoa and Carl Walker are about to tell you why. Thank you, Frankie. We are indeed. Let's break down some of the gameplay from Luton. I mean, what a performance so far. What a semi-final we've got. Man City, Luton. Let's talk, though, about Harvey, some of his play today. Yeah, Harvey's been incredible. Just the, the progress to even get to this stage is an accomplishment in itself. But to do it on the main stage at one of his first major tournaments is commendable. And of course, Luke Downing, his teammate as well, they're quietly confident. And I think they have every right to be we can be here to take a look through some of their goals that came in the previous round against West Ham. It all stems from switching the play. You'll notice it's been a common theme amongst the build-up play from both of the Luton players, particularly Harvey. And it comes from just opening up, opening up spaces on the pitch, utilising the areas like this here, this ball played over the top here. And it's very efficient, Kyle, at just starting attacks from defence. And it's all good being able to do this, of course, but being able to do this against Tex, that's going to be a little bit different, isn't it, right? Yeah, it's going to be very different. And this was the one that led to the goal there. So it's just genuinely, if you look at it, it's just, it looks very simple. It's three lofted passes over the top that led to a shot at goal. You can take a look at their stats as well. Four wins for Harvey, three for Luke. No draws for Luke though, but a draw for Harvey, who's yet to lose a game. When you look at Luke's stats just here, it doesn't matter. He's got through. They're a team. That's what this is all about. They're working together. They're getting the wins as well. Both of them, very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And for Luke, he's going to hope that he can start off as he means to go in because it's going to be a huge game against Matias Bernardo, who maybe he could technically catch off guard because he's approaching this game first now. It's a, it's a different element than playing second. Right. Prediction, Ryan? Oh, uh, you've had 30 none. seconds to think about it? None. No prediction. Oh, Frankie, I'm trying. I'm really trying here. I'll predict the final. I know you will, but try harder. <laughs> Both semi-finals are coming up right after this break, so we'll see you guys at home in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back, it's semi-finals time. We're all excited in here, so I think it's time we get our players out onto the stage. But Manchester City, it's 
Tex and Matthias Bonanno. And for Luton, welcome to the stage, Harvey Waters and Luke Downing. Well, here we are, our first semi-final, and what a match we have in store for you. Tex, Matthias Bernardo representing Manchester City, and Harvey Waters, Luke Downing representing Luton. A place in the final is at stake. So let's throw it straight across to Ryan Pessoa, but first, Brandon Smith. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, yeah, semi-final time is in front of us. So I was worried we had a bit of a kick clash there. Yeah. I mean, I hope it doesn't go into the, uh, into the game there. Semi-final time here. Why this game means so much is, one, because we're so close to a grand final. But what that grand final means, of course, is that you will guarantee yourself E-Champions League final match-up tickets, which, again, is one of the biggest tournaments in the calendar. And more importantly, a chance to lift that trophy not that far away from us, Ryan. And, uh, of course, qualify yourself for the FC Pro World Championships. Yeah, the players will be raring to go. We'll take a look at them preparing. It's going to be Matthias to start off against Luke Downing, it's a massive game. I think that really favours Man City. I think the opposite. I genuinely no, I do. Think the other, I, just because I'm coming into this and I'm thinking, I know it's Tex, and I know he's been in every single E Premier League, but Harvey Waters is also unbeaten. Harvey Waters is also creating 10 plus chances a game. Yeah. Harvey Waters is going to be giving Tex a really tough game. Head to head here, Luke Downing didn't have a great group stage. He of did course, win two yeah. games. Yes, he lost two games. It was a bit mixed matchy, but then he shows a fantastic performance in the quarterfinals. I think if Matias Panano can go and get two or three goals here, I mean, it puts Luton into a really difficult position. So, answer back to me. Yeah. Uh, your point in this scenario. Of course, I, I echo everything you stated there. However, I just feel as if just the way they play the game, I think Matias is is naturally a more defensive player than Tex. I think Tex is somebody that can put you in an advantageous position. We saw that against Spurs, 5-0 up, and Matias was assured, was confident enough to manage that game throughout and didn't look shaky whatsoever. I think starting the game now, you have to think, for me, this is technically his first game of the game of the day. I know, we, yes, of course, he played against Tom in the previous game, but that was almost a foregone conclusion before kickoff. This is the game now, he has to start, he has to make sure he's prepared for it against Luke Downing as they're getting underway, Brandon. Well, let's jump into it right now. Semi-final time here in the E-Premier League. It is Manchester City against Luton Town. And we're kicking off on the PlayStation first and foremost. We've swapped the console order again as we've progressed through to another round of the competition. And it's Matthias Bernardo in the hot seat against Luke Downing. Both players playing in their first ever E-Premier League. Matthias Bernardo has got Quite the list of wins. He won a domestic switch. league out in Spain and oh my goodness, he's on. Oh, he's just off. Before then, setting his eyes on the prize of a huge move over to Manchester City, who put pen to paper with him in the summer of last year. This is the number one trophy on that list. As Matias Bernardo looks to have his oh, first attack in the game. Oh, oh, oh. Six minutes in, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, Matias Bernardo moving. It's a great start. Just a twisting and turning to bait a potential pass across goal to Harlan. Step over into space. Green timed as well. And it's a great start for Man City. But back to my point, you, you put to, you know, pen to paper Manchester City, you've been there, you've played for this club for a handful of years. That E Premier League's top of the list. Absolutely. It's, it, it sort of puts... They don't put pressure on you, but yourself. You, you're thinking you're associated with one of the biggest clubs, not just in the world, but in the Premier League as well. So you want to make sure you do them proud. And Matias and Tex are definitely, for me, favourites to not just win this game, but to, to get their hands on the trophy. Uh, and how does that pressure feel? It's difficult because obviously Tex and Matias are both used to that. They've won countless competitions over the years. They've performed at the highest level. The Premier League is just another one of those things for them. And as we we're saying by the build-up, Tex has not missed the E-Premier League final. He has played in this competition ever since it started back in 2019, which he did win back in 2019. Since then, he's had a full mix bag of results. The one thing you can guarantee from him, he's always made the latter stages of the tournament. Across those five previous years, two quarterfinals, a semi-final, a championship win, and a top 16. He is one of the most consistent players, alongside Mark Marley, in fact, as well. He does play for Brian of Albion. He's also featured in every single E Premier League final. Is Man City looking for a second early door? 60 minutes in. 
It's a terrible touch from Haaland, and Matthias Benayer is going to make him pay for it. Player locks the pressing as well. He's back in four. It's a tap in for Haaland. And Matthias Benayer was quickest to react. And just like that, it's harsh, some will say, but Man City are complaining. The ball was just bouncing around the box. Hully did enough, and the side did it. And Haaland will not see an easier goal in the Premier League. It's a huge mistake there. He actually wins the ball back, fortunately, in the box. It didn't find the desired target. Bounced back, he had possession, but he was squeezed in from the intense pressure from Matthias. He manages to, to clutch onto it and pass into an, an open player just in front of the goal. This is the start that did elude could happen. Manchester City on an onslaught looking for a third hullet. It's a big tackle from Varane. And one thing we've learned from this format, Ryan, is you can't afford to give your teammate a two or three or a four goal swing. Especially against somebody like Tetsubi raring to go. Luke Downing on the attack. Just about keeps it in and Matisse Bernardo does enough. He's one of the few players, Ryan, to actually start Marcus Rashford, though. Here's Matisse Bernardo. He's a big fan of his in-game item, deems him good enough. Which I believe, I guess, takes the role of John Minson. I think he obviously offers more pace, this same skill moves, but just that weak foot, I think, for Son, a lot of people tend to, to go towards. Haaland in the air for three, good save. Matthias is looking frightening going forward. Every time he gets into the final third, it looks as if he's going to score. And Luke and Luton need to... So up the tempo, up their levels going forward because it's been one way for, for Man City. Matias Panano as well, Ryan, does not concede goals. He's only conceded five goals in this whole competition. That dates back since January. He didn't concede a single goal between them in their quarter-final match. But a 7-0 win it was. And a really, really impressive result against Tottenham Hotspur earlier today. Coach said he will be over the moon with the start of the heat. They're very good at corners. There's the corner. He often takes them very quick to the near pole. Doesn't give you a lot of time to, to Holland think. Holland again, it's three for City! <laughs> they are cruising. It's ruthless, 30 minutes in, three goals from Matthias. 7-0 in the quarterfinals. He didn't concede a single goal. Luton Town need something. They need to pull something out of the hat. As the longer this goes on, the more comfortable Matias Pinano is going to feel. That's a pretty incredible story, Matias Pinano. Started originally playing this game out in Argentina and was able to travel all around the world with it. A runner up in an E Champions League, which he will qualify for. If Man City do win this, they'll be in the grand final. That opens up a guaranteed spot in this year's European. Competition. Thierry Henry, keep an eye on that run from Haaland and the bottom half of your screen. Huge switch of play who can give Ogbené all the space in the world. Nice again. Rashford into Hullet, is it for four? Ooh. Step overs were nice, but Rafael Varane just did enough. It just shows Matthias is just a class above, to be honest. You can just tell from just the way he's building up, he's keeping possession. He's making sure he's making the right passes at the right moment, skill moves as well. And Luke Downing just hasn't had anything to, to counter that. He's put him into some really uncomfortable positions here, isn't he? It's just a high press as well. You'd think maybe with three goals, he'll sort of sit on his, or rest on his laurels, sit back a little bit and wait for Luke to make mistakes. But there is no avenue to go forward. Again, look, just the lanes getting cut there. It's, it's very difficult and he could be in again. Is this goal number four for City? They might punish you here. Back to Ireland for four! <laughs> and it's not even half time! Oof. It's just the pass here from De Bruyne, just driven past in the, 
it's perfect. Green timed as well, across the face of goal. To me, I'll be honest, I don't see it. This 4-0 is done. I think it's done. I'm saying it already, I'll be honest. Blistery. Well, if there was a game plan to follow, Ryan, unfortunately, it's been, oh, it's been, it's been thrown out the window. 4-0, Manchester City lead. Matias Bonanno is on a different planet as it currently stands. Remember, if they win this game, they will be in this year's grand final for an East Premier League, a place where Man City haven't been since 2021, where Shells, obviously your teammate at the time, did enough to lift that trophy in a penalty shootout against Leeds United. I mean, I hate to say it, Ryan, but I thought this was the game that Fluton might have been for, for allowed to do something. It's a tough one. And of course, Harvey will be waiting, watching, hoping Luke can somehow try and get a foothold in this game to even just try to claw back the game. But 4-0, and it, you're making mistakes like that, it's tough. It is. Because Matias isn't going to sit back, he's going to keep on going. He's going to pick you apart slowly but surely. And here he is again, last ditch tackle there from Luke Downing to prevent another goal. Town yet to really register a proper first chance. In a goal in this game. I simply haven't been given an opportunity. It's rash. Pull the player out. City looks to break again. Matias Panano pulling out all the skill moves now. He is loving his Look time Arlen. on the big stage. Arlen for five. One more pass. Do he need it? He's going to be able to tap in still. Yeah, that just sums up everything. Wow. And it's heartbreak for Luton Town because it really is an unfortunate way to go 5-0 down, but you have to applaud the build-up here. You expected the shot to come in from Ireland. Yeah, Matias is being cheeky there, but <laughs> the keeper doesn't do enough. And it's 5-0, and that stemmed from just a rash step out there from Luke. The fact, he's on the attack again, hold on a minute. Wait, is this a... It, no hold way. Hold on a minute, I'm thinking if I'm seeing a replay, this is another attack from Man City, 54 minutes in. This... <laughs> This could get unsafe. You know, this sounds terrible, but there's a world right now where the control doesn't even need to be picked up in the second game. This is... Because the, the, oh, the deficit wow. is just... It's unimaginable. And it's so difficult to be in this scenario. So difficult for Luton Town to start thinking about a comeback and... Especially for Harvey when you're sitting across from Tex and you're thinking, I've got to... I've got to get past Tex, and I've got to score five goals, yep. and I've got to play. The run over the top of, as well, in behind this game of FC24. Well, Beno, Matias Panano has got unfinished business still in this game. He wants six, he wants seven. It's just a catalogue of errors defensively from Luke. Unfortunately, just could argue maybe the occasion could have got the best of him. It's his first time at this sort of level of competition in person, a semi final in the E Premier League. Harland into Thierry Henry, it's off the woodwork, and when that's not hitting, you know, maybe it's not your day. And there's Liverpool watch on. Waiting to find out who maybe they could be playing in the round final. Just a goal or two for Luton. Just something, we've got to leave. Give Harvey Waters a, a glimmer of hope. Broder Schweinsteiger. All building up, waiting for that perfect pass into someone in the box that's queuing up for it. It's so compact from Matias defensively. Genuinely, all of his, atta his attackers are coming back to support. Cutting the lanes, not just from the AI, but manually. The second man press is perfect. As a player in this situation, when you're 5 down, surely mentally thinking, you just, you're just unhinged, aren't you, in terms of... You Game plan's out the window. Your game plan's out the window, but your confidence is low. Yeah, your confidence, it's not even just for yourself, but your teammate, you just don't want to let them down. And Harvey sat behind him thinking, <laughs> it's over. Surely not six from City. Yudogi finds Harlan, step over exit, Matisse Bonanno is on a rampage. Oh, and City! He's oh, he's oh. inside. So that would have been. Potentially goal of the knockout stages. It's just offside, though. Look at the intricacies here. The, oh, the cancel into the pass, the extra pass. Oh. That was Miller. It is offside there for Man City.
And very nearly could have been six. Neil, that's the backstage in the players' area right now. We just saw Dario Stingray waiting patiently. They'll be taking on Brian of Albion in the next semi-final. Oh, they're next to each other, the mates. Yeah, they play a lot against each other in, in practice. It'll be interesting to see how that game pans out to see the other players representing other clubs in the Premier League this year and, of course, in previous years as well. Waiting to get going as we are in a pause menu. 5-0, Man City leads. Pause. Last chance just to throw something at it for Luton. Timo Werner, I think, has come onto the pitch. This has been resolute from Matias. They could have triggered run as well in the right back position. It's going to be played over the top to him. And this is just how he starts his attacks a lot of the time here. Space opening up. Look at the numbers. Look at the triggered runs you've teased. Player locks everywhere for Bernardo. Haaland back to Haaland. 6 0. Oh. Oh. oh my goodness. Mm -mm. This is a cool. This is a semi final. They won 7 0 in a quarter final. And in the first matchup, it's 6 0 Man City lead. And that's without Tex even picking up the controller. This is ruthless. It's a statement to, to not just to Luton, but to everyone else in the competition, thinking if you even progress in your next round, this is who you have to overcome. Luke Downing trying to find space in the box. Henri, can he get a consolation goal? He's passing it, trying to find space. It's fallen to him, luckily. He just can't it's get anything. Guessing everywhere, Matias Bernardo, the player switching, relentless. Second man press. Guessing and reading every pass that comes his way. You see Harvey there just on watching this domination against his teammate in Luke Downing. He's, he's suffering 6 0 in this game. And honestly, I don't know what is going on in his mind. Of course, you attack the second leg, you still have to go out there and, and play your game. But this could be seven. Hold on a second. It might be seven. Harland can twist, he can turn, he tries to turn on Bennett there on a sixpence. It just goes to show the work as well that Matisse Fernandez has been putting in after a really disappointing FC Pro Open by his own standards. Mumps on from that. Look at the performance he's putting up in a semi-final. And in time of one minute, Man City won seven. And they might just be on the way to go and get seven. Or not. Schweinsteiger, that will do us four. Half-time in between the two games, but the PlayStation match is concluded. And Man City have a 7 0 lead against Luton Town. We do jump over to the Xbox in a second. 6 0, I should say. I'm getting confused with the quarterfinals. 6 0 as we jump over to the Xbox. Tex will have to take on Harvey Waters now. This is for Harvey. I mean, as, as the player in this scenario, Ryan, what you what are you thinking? The, I'll be honest, there isn't much to think. This is a, a mountain to climb for. You just have to go in and do what you can. Yeah, but. <laughs> Come on. No, I mean, what <laughs> yeah, can you do? You can't. You just have to just play, play it as an individual game. Just try your best to, to bring some sort of respect back as we're joined by Leo Ravel on the desk. What did you make of that performance from Matthias? <laughs> Six nothing. What can you say? You know what I mean? Dominant. Dominant. And just text. goes to show how, how much preparation Man City have been have been putting up. You've had a great chance here to catch up with some of the players, including Manchester City. They just seem so composed, don't they? You wouldn't think that this is a semi-final. Well, that's the thing. I think the experience here goes a really long way, and perhaps an inexperience of Luton, but, I mean, Tex and Bonanno both are international competitors, international champions. So, for them, knowing how they play together, the practice, the time that they've had to, to train, I think going into this, they're very confident, and then 7-0 <laughs> in the quarterfinals, 6-0 in the first leg from Matias Bonanno, I think. It just goes to show how confident and how skilled they actually are. 54 goals they have scored in this E Premier League so far. They're one of the only teams that has gone unbeaten throughout this whole journey as well. For Lou Downing, such a hard one to take, Ryan. Yeah, you can see how devastated he is from 
the reactions on camera there. He's, he's left his teammate with a mission to that, try and overcome. That, a mission impossible. That fifth goal wasn't too nice either, was it? Is that the one where you played it backwards and then it's it trickled fun? in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the looting play, cool. but he put it into the goal, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Listen, Harvey Waters has been undefeated, so. He has. <laughs> Six goals, you never know. <laughs> the story I was trying to paint, Ryan, was that, you know, Harvey's going to create chances, Tex is going to score goals, and, you know, maybe a two goal gap or something like that. I could have been like, okay, maybe we could see somebody a bit 6 0. As we said, it's just, uh, it's just mission impossible. It, it really is. We are jumping into our Xbox game very soon while we can. I mean, on the other side of things, I don't think we're going to see quite the swing between Brighton and Manchester United, you'd like to say. Yeah, I think Brighton against Liverpool, of course, Jaden and Stingray playing each other a lot of times. They mentioned in practice games as well. So they have familiarity with each other's play styles. So I think that'll be a lot closer than, than this game for sure. Yeah, of course, on that one as well. We will be kicking off on the PlayStation uh, first and foremost as well. So Stingray will be in action in that game, first and foremost against Mark Marley, one of the most capped players in the C e Premier League alongside Tex. I mean, there is a world where we could have a, a real big football match up there between Man City and Liverpool in a grand final. Back to this one now. We're on the Xbox. 6-0 Man City lead. I mean, look. Show me the best game of FC24 I've ever seen in my life if you want to show me a comeback. <laughs> but I've got... No doubt, unfortunately, for Luton fans that it's going to happen. Tex is in the hot seat. Someone who's won this tournament before back in 2019. He's played in every single E Premier League final there is. Tex. Minutes into the game already. Sniffing around for the seventh goal. Possession given back. A chance to build for Harvey. Harvey manages to come back from six goals. That would be in the history books. In a semi final at East Premier League. <laughs> yeah. I'm the optimist here. It'd be remarkable. Unfortunately, that touch sums up which way this game's going to go. Yeah. Luke didn't have too many chances. He had that one, I believe, it hit off the post later on in the second half. But for Harvey. Again, I'll be honest, I think you just take this game as a just as a separate one. Because recovering six goals against anyone is a tough ask, let alone against Tech. So yeah, for me, you can be optimistic as much as you want. It's gonna be <laughs> I think it's, it's the not situation not we've got here, right? You're the realist. Not, Some, yeah. Someone's got to be optimistic in this commentary booth. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being honest. I just I'm so sorry. I just That's can't. Ryan to a T. Yeah, I'm just not <laughs> I'm not buying into it. <laughs> if he proves me wrong, fair play. But I just yeah, come on. Tex can just keep the ball all he wants. Conceded a couple, we'll still be going through. Man City have not conceded a single goal in knockout play. They've also scored a healthy 13 goals on the build up, too. Thierry on reads a breakaway. This is where Cole Palmer and Harlan can try and find a one more pass. Let's hey. go out for a corner. There was fingertips on that from Allison. Let's see if we can see a front post flick on. No, we can't. Time is just trickling away. Just on the same note, though, Ryan, I mean, look, it's a great example of this E Premier League format. Two players that have never played at a land of this size before. Their first time in an E Premier League, and look how far they've gone. Yeah, they've done incredible to get to this stage of the competition. Of course, in touching distance, it feels like it's so close, yet so far. And of course, they just came up against a team that's just better. To be honest, you're just playing a team that are in incredible form. Two players in Tex and Matias at the top of their game, and they're showing it. It's a tough one, isn't it, for Luton? It is, especially, like you mentioned, in the semi-final, in a semi-final where there's as much on the line. You know, a prize pool is enough to add stress to a semi-final, but then you have the E Champions League spots, you have the FC World Champions Championship spots. They just add additional pressure, and... Chris Harvey Waters again leading from that. Harlands! Oh, what a great save. Carried away, and it's a couple of chances now that Harvey Waters has been able to create for Luton. There's been Allison on two occasions that has stopped him in his tracks.
Texas mindset in this too must be just nonchalant. I think what's more impressive as well is that the pressure that they'd be under these players, Ryan, you know better than most for Man City, and they haven't they haven't crumbled not at all. It's not gonna be half his day <laughs> to be honest. Could have had two, could have potentially had three there just on the edge. Oh, so just on the outside of the post from the corner. Out of all the teams that are here, they have the most pressure on the Man City. With the long term agreements and investment they've made into this space, into this eSport. They went out in the summer and picked up two powerhouses oh. in Matias Bernardo and Tex. Man City. On for a seven, potentially. Schweinsteiger back to Haaland. Just about snatches it off the toes of Thierry Henry. Wow, that was slightly risky there. Flick on into Haaland, who's got the legs around Virgil van Dijk. Thierry Henry waiting for a chance for Luton. He goes on his own. Was that the right decision? I think it was difficult, unless he played a lot there to Henry, but the angle starts to close down because the keeper comes out. But that's a, a common theme. He's created, what, three or four attacks from ball straight over the top to that left-hand side of the pitch. You mentioned pressure, Brendan, about the investment into the eSports program at Manchester City and the two players that they picked up in the summer, but we can also talk about the pressure of literally every single person watching yeah. or competing, expecting Manchester City to go all the way. Absolutely. Corner played short, edge of the box. Could be prime time for Kevin De Bruyne, but it's Schweinsteiger over it. You have just tuned in. This is the Premier League Files, the £100,000 FC24 tournament involving all 20 Premier League clubs. Each club does have an Xbox and a PlayStation representative. And they have played over January in a group stage in the last two days here in March. In a knockout bracket, we are down to our semi-finals, and this is semi-final number one. The Manchester City are just over 45 minutes away from booking a spot in this year's grand final and the other semi-final. Liverpool will be taking on Brighton over Albion. Following this one. Interesting corner from Tex. He's gone all the way back. Dispossessed in the end. Who do you reckon Tex is playing at, what, 40%? 60 maybe? I just think it's a... He's just been given a really... I guess, unlikely situation, Ryan, that he's got, he's got a 6-0 lead that yep. his main priority is just, let's just get minutes on the clock, let's just take more minutes from the game. I don't need to score. For Harvey, I mean, the biggest takeaway he can take here is, look, I've got an individual matchup against Tex here. Forget the scoreline. There's some, some pride to play for there for Luton Town. Half-time, nil-nil in the game. But unfortunately, that hasn't changed the, uh, the scoreline at all. Yeah, there's not too much that Harvey can really do. I don't think there's any need to go constant press. I think you just sort of play out the game and see if maybe something could have happened in that half. If, if things went another way, he could have potentially had even two or three goals from the chances he had. But of course, that's just based on the way the game's gone from the first leg. Would he have had no chances if, if it wasn't a 6-0 in the first leg? I think the crazy thing is that we can all agree. For the knockout bracket run the Man City have had, it could have been like so much worse. Yep. Mm. With score lines and stuff. It, in, and the opponents have had, have had to play against really top, top level players but they've just been on it all over the pitch. Still haven't conceded a goal in the knockouts since they've been back. I'm going to be the optimist again and say Harvey Waters could be proud that he's not conceded a goal against Tex. Well, I mean, at this point, that's what you, you've got to look at. This is an individual game for him. It's just him against Tex. Yeah. Tex just, just keeping possession, sort of just going through the motions of of just being professional, trying to find ways to just frustrate Harvey Waters and Luton. See, so just building up their cancellations with skill moves, finding his way into the box. Just couldn't get past the last defender. Chance to break for Harlem. Nowhere around the corner for him. I think one thing that's interesting there as well, Richard teased, Richard teased it, is that the, the four teams that top the groups Four teams left in the competition. Oh, yeah, that is right. 
They do happen to be the four exactly. strongest teams, I would say, so it makes sense. And it shows whatever they did in January, they've been able to build on it. We mentioned yesterday as well, well how... Behind. We mentioned yesterday as well how perhaps not playing since January and not being warm from yesterday could affect their gameplay today, but I mean... Yeah. I think you can throw any of those, any of my rumours from that in the bin. Yeah. Been, uh... <laughs> yeah. That ball in behind there from Harvey just worked so many times. Plays the corner short, straight away, trying to find Cole Palmer on the edge of the box. A shot across goal, Allison saves, and it's going to be another corner for Harvey again. Harland for Luton, Allison's oh. just doing everything right. They just can't score, can they? <laughs> you just have to laugh. That is. <laughs> That's what, five? He's had, a lot. He's had a few chances, in fairness. He's had a few. Two or three posts, at least. Team of the Allison's just said no. No one scoring. <laughs> and as time trickles down. Manchester City are back on their way to a grand final, as we said, since 2021. And this is no, no personal dig at you, Ryan, sir, but grouped in the last couple of years. Yeah. For Man City standards, this is where they need to be again. No, absolutely. Two of the best players, not just in the E Premier League, but in Europe. And they're showing it, they're dominant, absolutely dominant. Luton Town, first time in the Premier League. They should be so proud of their efforts. Top four, two new players from the UK. And they've just put on a great performance across the group stages in the knockouts. And they have met their match in Manchester City. De Bruyne might go from distance, takes a block, a block from Blanc. You have to rate the mindset from Harvey Steele just to keep on pushing. Question for you both. If you think the bracket was the other way around and Luton was up against Liverpool or Brighton in a semi-final, do you think we'd see them in a grand final or no? It's hard to say, honestly. It's so difficult to say. Obviously, the, all the teams involved that are left are, are top, top level players. Hilmin Son, is it Haaland for seven? It's another great block. It's hard to say, I mean, look, that, that Manchester United game, as we teased it, lived up to all the drama, didn't it, between Manchester United and Liverpool. End to end between the two players, but we just saw the class come out from Stingray and Darosh. And they'll be in action against Brighton of Albion in this next semi-final, which follows this one. Man City. The Champions League spots confirmed again. I mean, they did it in the real world. And they're doing it oh, on point. the virtual pitch as well in the Premier League. Which will be a massive weight off those players' shoulders. A tournament that these two know so well, the Champions League. They both had great performances in it. Matias Benano was a runner-up in the tournament a couple of years ago. You mentioned before, Ryan, uh, Brandon, as well. Diaz Bonanno conquered Argentina, conquered South America, conquered Spain last year, and now looking to conquer England as well. It's in touch and distance as well, Ryan. Very close. As I said, it's one game now from getting their hands on the trophy, playing against Brighton or Liverpool, two top players as well, or top teams of top players, I should say. It's the furthest that Brighton of Albion have found themselves for quite some time in the Premier League as well. Sounds more crazy to me as a Brighton fan. Brighton of Albion in the Champions League. <laughs> Wishful thinking, huh? <laughs> Here's Harlem. Well, looks as if we're edging our way to a nil-nil. In this second leg, Tex. And given a very comfortable 6-0 scoreline. Is there a way for Luton to get one? Allison still the star of the show. There's the flick on. Still no way through. I feel for Harvey just because it's a, it's a difficult way to approach a game knowing there's nothing you can really do to come back into it. Like Obviously, you never know, but I just think... You never know, Ryan. Yeah, it's just <laughs> too much. There's way too much to overcome. A six-goal deficit is just, at this level, against a player like Texas, Mission Impossible. 
if you went into a game in the second leg, 6-0 down, are you already defeated? Like, already deflated, deflated going yeah, there? Yeah, of course, because obviously it's, it's tough for Luke because he's playing somebody who's at the top of their level as well. And once you, you start the game as slow as he did, there's text trying to find a, a winner in this individual leg. It keeps possession, but you, of course, will be demotivated. You'll feel for your, your teammate, but it's just they put you in a, in a tough position. Is there any part of you that thinks, I can do it, maybe? What, to come back? Yeah. You can never write it off, but yeah, this was too much for, for Luton to overcome. Well, full-time result, Manchester City, 6-0 winners across the two legs. They go through to this year's E Premier League Grand Final. And it's heartbreak. And unfortunately, the end of the fairy tale story for the Hatters, Luton Town. They do fall out the tournament in a top four still. Two debutants in the e Premier League, Harvey Waters and Luke Downing, should be so proud of their achievements in this tournament. A top four in your first ever e Premier League. It's not bad going, is it? Not at all. And I think, obviously, that's another game where it, the first leg sort of told the story. It sort of summed up the game already, and it gave the, the teammate a massive mountain to climb, which Harvey wasn't able to do. And for Man City, Leo, touching distance now from an FC Pro World Championship mm -hmm. ticket. It's yeah. the biggest ticket in the calendar. Each Champions League done, they could be so close to picking up that trophy and also getting all the extra bits that come with it. Yeah, absolutely, especially with how difficult it is to get that ticket this year. They're so close. They must be so confident, undefeated the entire tournament. And there's one more step. There is. The question is, who's joining them? Yep, haven't conceded as well in the knockouts, which is unbelievable. 7-0, 6-0. The goal difference is Incredible, crazy. incredible yeah. for Manchester City. They are through to this year's E-Premier League Grand Final. And they're also off to an E-Champions League. They're with Frankie now. Thank you very much, guys. And we often talk about the fact that Tex won the very first E-Premier League back in 2019. But the man to my right, Matias Bernardo, has won not just in South America, but also Spain. Bernardo, how does the UK E-Premier League competition compare to those regions? I think in South America, for example, it's different uh, for the possession. Uh, right now in the Premier League, the, the players uh, play more fast, you know, and it's different. Uh, the, the matches are more uh, offensive, um, in, maybe in South America, more close. In the UK, do the players want to play more like you, do you think? No, I, I, I think uh, I am more possession, so more uh, similar than South America. You're also scoring an intense number of goals, also like South America. Congratulations. Thank you, Matias. Tex, for you, what was harder about that game? Not scoring or not conceding? It's hard to play after your teammates just won 6 No, I didn't like it. It was horrible. Don't win 6 no again, but, <laughs> but now, nah, um, I don't know, it was, it was just weird. Like, I've never played a game six and up before, so I, I was caught in between two minds. Do I attack, do I defend? And I went for the defending option, so yeah. What do you think we're going to see in the finals? Your opponent's Liverpool, that could be incredibly aggressive, but if you play Brighton, it could be passive. What do you want to experience? Um, us to win, that's what I want to experience. Whether it's City, no, not City, whether it's uh, Liverpool, all bright and I, I don't care. I just want to win the trophy and get Matty and me our World Cup spots. Oh, it's fantastic to see you break that quarterfinal curse of the last two years. We'll be seeing you both in the final next. Thank you very much. Congratulations, boys. Let's head over to Richard Buckley and Kyle over at the analysis screen. Oh, what a performance it was. Let's take a look back at some of those uh, key moments from that semi-final just there. Manchester City running absolute riot with a 6-0 win heading across to that final. We can look at our bracket there as well. Manchester City unbeaten today. They are the first team confirmed in our final. And next up, well, Brighton against Liverpool. The winner will be moving through, facing Manchester City in that final. Richard Buckley, what a performance, first of all. Tex, Matty, the duo of dreams. There's just levels. Unfortunately, um, and I think the rest of the UK is finding that out. There's just levels to the game. And I think for Matty, for Tex, there's there's very few players who can compete with them at that level that's left in the tournament. I think one of them we're about to see in Stingray. But I think for Bonanno, he's at world level, Tex is at world level. Luton have been great throughout this tournament, but it was just one step too far. Well, Brighton taking on Liverpool for the chance to take on Manchester City in the final. We heard from Jaden representing Brighton before. So let's look at their opponents, Liverpool. Got some of Stingray's highlights. Yeah, we certainly have. And I think for Stingray, he 
was so creative in this game. I've picked out a couple of goals that I really, really liked. We'll just roll this one on because this was his first goal after going 1-0 down against Manchester United. And we still see the ball just get fired into Henri in this position here. And you look at this space, you think, well, he's got the defender there. Am I going to go maybe extra pass up to the top of the pitch? Is it going to be a little pass into Haaland? It's not. Just watch this right here. We had to watch it three or four times. The Hocus Pocus comes out, a skill move that you very rarely see. He twists Dragon inside and out, and then a lovely finish into the bottom left corner. He tried it once already in the game. Second time of asking, it was a perfect success for him. And I think the thing for Stingray, when he is in these positions in around the box, it's just the creativity. On this occasion, maybe Dragon's thinking he might do a different skill move. He might look for something else. It's pretty simple what he does. It's just a step over boost into the space. And then you see the finish from Son and Stingray. 2-2 in the game. He goes through and wins 4-2 in the end. And it was only a one goal swing in the end, which sent Liverpool through. He can score different goals, extra passes, crosses into the box. And the skill moves, he might be the best player here when it comes to that right stick. It's certainly setting up a very exciting semi-final number two. Liverpool against Brighton. Both of these teams will be hoping to get to that final. Richard, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Right, congratulations to Manchester City. They are the first team through to the grand final. Will it? But will it be Brighton or Liverpool who join them? Make sure you stay where you are because we'll be finding out after the break. Just two more games remain until we crown our EPL champions 2024. And who will be joining Manchester City in the finals? Let's find out. From Brighton, it's Jaden Grodin and Marley. And introducing Liverpool's representative, Stingray and Darius. This, this is going to be an extremely interesting semi-final. We know that Stingray likes to attack, attack, attack. Whereas the Brighton boys like to exercise just a little bit more caution. Marley has been to an E-Premier League final before, 
but this time he wants to go one further, but Liverpool are standing in his way. We're going to head over to Richard Buckley and Gravison to get this second semi-final underway. We certainly are, Frankie, and I cannot wait to get Stingray, Dariosh, Jaden and Marley back on the stage. They gave us some of the best moments from earlier on today did Liverpool when we were in this exact position watching them take on Manchester United. Now it's the Brighton boys making all the noise, stepping into the booth. Who gets the right to play Manchester City in the grand final? We're about to find out. Graveson, what you made of today? Has it gone the way that you expected? I mean, with those introductions, yeah, come on. Congrats to you, Richard, because you're performing as well as those players. Because, I mean, Jaden, Marley, Stingray, Darius. I do think Jaden and Stingray are performing really good, especially today. I mean, they won both of matches by a two-goal lead. And I think I, I appreciate the way Marley played, keeping yep. possession. I do think Darius was a bit afraid at moments. Well, he even said that, didn't he, in the interview? Yeah, he said yeah. He, he wasn't going that well going ahead. <laughs> what? The crops are in, <laughs> they're in sport mode. <laughs> For Stingray. Oh. Lightning McQueen. Is that... it going to be a lightning fast finish? Oh, come on, I love you, Richard. Fasting right. We have too much fun, don't we? We do. We, we do. Fist bumps all around. I think we're about ready to get underway. Semi final number two. There is two matches remaining here at your E Premier League 2023 finals, and we're about to find out which way it's going to go. 23 24, I should say. I do think it's a great chance for them, for both. Marley and Darius to put their performance behind in a way because I don't think they played at their best because they were leading their matches with a two goal lead. So it's a great chance for them to now pass a good result, to turn it around, pass a good result to their. And teammates. they get to start. They yep. get to start the game as well. As That's always. the thing. That's the thing. You flip each match up with the console that will be starting per round. Um, we started on the Xbox in the quarterfinals, now we're starting on the PlayStation. I really and we saw the PlayStation dominance yep. from Matthias Bonanno yep. for Manchester City versus Luke Downing. The tie was over, nothing happened in the second leg. It was 6-0 in the first, and it went all the way Offside. to the final moments where it was 0-0, to be honest, between Harvey Waters and Tex. i got to tell you, you were spot on. I remember this phrase. There are levels to this game, and I do think... At the moment, Matthias Bonanno and Tex seem to be just a level above everyone else, but still, they haven't won anything yet. They've not. They've got E-Champions League tickets. Yeah, which is good. But everyone wants the E-Premier League trophy. £30,000 and the money can't buy golden ticket to the FC Pro World Championship made up of the best players from the world of FC. From domestic leagues to the FC Pro Open. You've got to be a winner to be in there. Who's it going to be representing England? We're going to find out in a couple of hours' time. Man City are waiting in the wings. This is a good chance. They'll just keep running. Ginola out wide, all the way to the byline. Play a lot, cut back into Henri. He fakes to go one way, goes down the byline, but Dariosh defends well. That was a good player switch into Van Dijk because if he hadn't defended the step over, I think it was... The space was there. Yeah, 1-0. Ogbené up the other end for Liverpool. Floating into the box for Henri, for Haaland, should I say. Henri was there as well, but on this occasion... The player lock defensively. Yeah. I mean, Talk to me about the player lock defensively. Why would you want to do that instead of just trying to manually head the ball away? Because it's pretty... Well, I can explain to you in just a second. Because Haaland's coming forward for Darius and Liverpool. De Bruyne, Haaland! Hullet won't get there and it bounce out for a corner. It's simply just your biggest chance of winning a header against an area plus player like Haaland. So if you play your lucky, it's just simply the biggest chance of you to win the header. I wanted to go short on that occasion, not looking for those aerial plus presence in the box. And Liverpool come out the other side of the pitch where the original corner was taken. And elect to go forward with Henri, red time, and it's flashed past the post. Yeah, I think it was yellow time, but still, I appreciate the way Darius is playing at the moment. Yeah, colours aren't my forte. <laughs> no, it's fine. You know, we mentioned how, he mentioned as well in the interview, how he wasn't feeling as confident in the quarterfinals. He wasn't playing as confident as you should play in this Championship Sunday. 
now he's going forward. Now he's playing with no he's fear. He's attacking. And that's because he's playing first. Yeah. Because you just play your game. We're speaking in red lock here, me and earlier. Uh, me and Brandon earlier, should I say. And what? He said he much preferred playing first. Because you just play your own game. That's exactly what mm. Mark Marley and Dariush are doing. If you did forget, Mark Marley, a previous E Premier League grand finalist runner up. Yeah, against Tom, who was yep. just explaining to us how hard it was for him to beat Marley in the final because of possession, because of the press, because of everything, really. But if we kind of take a few minutes back, we can remember how Marley tried to step over and speed boost a couple of times with Haaland. So in maybe his third chance, he'll pass it to the strikers, he'll try something else, because the step over is not... What a pass, Haaland in on goal! No step over needed that time, Gravison. Darius and Liverpool go 1-0 up. And sometimes you defend the way you attack, so he expected the step over to come in, but... It's pretty was, simple, dinked it straight over the top. It wasn't necessary, it was a really good pass, really brilliant finish by Haaland, and Liverpool are up 1-0. It's interesting the way, like, if you attack in a certain way, you defend the same thing, because in those just snappy seconds... You don't have time to process what your opponent's doing, no. so it's instinctive, what do you instinctively go to? And a lot of time, that is the meta, that is what works. However, when you start to bring in those slight unpredictabilities and those different variables, that is where the best players do flourish. Ginola hustling around the box, winning the ball back for Brighton. Henri takes over, a couple of step-overs, but straight into Virgil van Dijk yet again. He's not quite been able to execute those step-overs the way that he wants to. I don't think they are needed, really. I mean, they are needed when you have to bring up something else, but when someone is defending you in the 1v1 situation, you can just do what takes us, which is just try to stop, try to look for a pass, try to look for a speed boost. Could be a chance. It's a high header into the box, but company does well on that particular. Nice player, Lock. Yeah, just opening up the space down the line with the player. Lock, it's pulled Van Dijk into an area, doesn't want to really be in as well, out of the central of the pitch. Is it going to go all the way across? Player locked into Haaland. What a ball that is! You talk about the player lock, we analyse the player locks, and it's the player locks that make the difference. And this is the Brighton special. They are the only team who specifically do this player lock. He loved Haaland, and it's the long over the top through ball to Haaland. And I mean, it's extremely hard to do this, I'm telling you. And that's why you can see only Brighton doing this, because it's extremely hard. You have to be extremely fast and the power one has to be the exact well, you've got power. Things. You've got Bruno Fernandes, I'll tell you about it in a second, because Rodri's done very, very well at the back post to get underneath Haaland. It's the long ball pass plus from Bruno Fernandes, he's the player who can put it on Haaland's exact movement, and then the only player who's scoring that is Erling Haaland. So yeah. you have to have the, the skill of the player lock and the variables with player. That will do us for the first half, it's gone by in a flash, Liverpool went 1 0 up after 30 minutes, but Brighton are right back in the game. As you can see, instructions coming on there from both coaches, including former E Premier League finalist Adam Ryan. He's by Mark Marley as well. I chatted with Adam Ryan for a bit after the group stage was done, and he told me how they were training a few things differently rather than other teams. There were, obviously. Not this <laughs> exact defense because it was a really good goal by Liverpool. But then again, player lock, the playstyle plus from Bruno Fernandes, long ball, and then he has this silver playstyle, Haaland, which is acrobatic as yep. well. So it's just a matter of, as you said before, <laughs> it's a matter as you said before. You have to train it, but then of course you gotta trust the playstyles as well. The, get, the play style impacts the gameplay, the gameplay impacts the play style, yeah, let's see. You're doing well. Ooh, yeah. It goes both ways, really. Yeah. But oh, there's, a, there's a symmetry to it. Yeah. But yeah, as, as, as I was talking about before, Adam Ryan mentioned to me how they were kind of training this step over body feints, step over cancel. You know the way Nick Snap did it, the yes. Crystal Palace play? And also the player locks, which is a house special. Well, we're back underway for the second half. It's only the first game. Look at the right back. Oof. 
that pass was nearly completed. Which of these two players, Darius or Mark Marley, will give their club an advantage going into the second game? It's where Jaden and Stingray will take over and try and guide Brighton and yeah. Liverpool respectively to success and to an EPL Grand Final. Brilliant run. Finesse, maybe? Mark waiting for the space. Is it going to open up, going backwards? That's not the, the worst idea. Electing to keep possession and come over to the left-hand side. Possible cross. Cole Palmer waiting for support. It comes in the shape of De Bruyne. What a pass that is! He deserves a goal. You see head in hands from Jaden behind him. He thought Mark had just gone 2 1 up. The corner to come in. Harlan selected. Whipped into the near post. He's green timed it. Acrobatic effort, but it goes out for a goal kick. Big chance squandered. It was enough. Uh, maybe he can also attack the area with the finesse shot. At least, you know, working the angle. You, you don't have to perform it, the finesse shot, but at least I think you've got to work the angle and the space so the threat is coming in a way, if that makes sense. Supply another seed of doubt in your opponent's mind of well, that's something else he could potentially stall with. Ogbeneg down the byline. Howard nearly managed to <laughs> yeah, that was get close. his body on the ball. That was close. Oh. It's a play a lot gone wrong. Hullet v Hullet. What an item, this Hullet. I mean, finesse shot. Yeah, the plus. birthday Hullet is, is a game-changer. It really is. It changed the whole meta in the Premier League Finals. It did. Some people playing him centre-mid, some people playing striker. Others playing him out wide as well for the, for the back post. It, it really is a complete... Nice defence by Rafa Varane. Meta change, and it's a, a different item to add in. That oh, mistake! A bad loss of the possession at the back for Darius. Bruno Fernandes waiting for runners. Kevin De Bruyne on the finish! Hello! KDB, you asked for the finesse. I don't know if he's listening, but he responded. He definitely responded. I mean, the threat is coming. The threat is coming, Ooh. even though you might not perform it because he was suspecting maybe the player luck, so he moved the keeper a little bit in the other direction. But again, it's 30 yards out, at least. Green timed, weak foot, but it's a five star. And it's flown into the back of the net. To give Brighton a 2 1 advantage here in your first game. We asked for it, and it happened. Does Mark smell blood in the water? That is the question. Does Martley feel as though there's more out of this game? There's more to extract. Nice player, Lock. Allen's in. He's just trying to bring it down. He's going to get the better of it. It's a simple pass across the box. It's messy, but it doesn't matter for Brighton and Hove Albion. They're 3 1 up. As we can see again, the play styles, ah, I don't think the pass should have gone that way. I mean, when you have Haaland that close, maybe you should just turn and go the other way around because he tried to pass it to the keeper, but there were just many players inside the box. And it's too I, risky. It's too risky. So as a right back, I think if you manage to recover the ball, you have to turn in the other direction because if not, this is what can happen. Unfortunate goal, nevertheless. Manual switch apply there. Look for Cole Palmer at the bottom of the pitch. There he is, opening up. And looking to, with the play lock again, come forward. Cole Palmer, Bruno Fernandes, Hullet, Henri, Mark Marley. He's feeling himself right now on the main stage. And Darius isn't comfortable at all, especially with the press. And a 4-1 goal. It's too Lee much. going into the second leg it's is too much. a mountain to climb for Stingray. It is too much. Cole Palmer, pull it. What does Mark have? Is there another bit of magic? He faked the finesse shot. He's oh. dancing around the box. We, He's in flow state right now. We talked about working the angles. He worked the angle for the finesse, but then drew him passing to Haaland. And he's planted that seed of doubt because he's already scored from a finesse. Darius just bit ever so slightly. It was a minute detail. And as soon as he did, Mark Marley fired the ball into Erling Haaland. 
This second half has been one-way traffic. Yeah, really. It has been. Seagulls are flying high right now. And again, another Ooh. mistake. <laughs> feeling confident. Feeling. Feeling it. He's feeling it at the moment. He's just flowing. Yep. But look at the press. I mean, he's winning 3-1, and he's still pressing. Still stepped on. Yeah. Now he has to be patient, Darius. Because... Darius, in this position, given how the second half has gone, do you say, I've not played very well, 3-1, two-goal swing, thing right? That's what I'm going to give you. I think if I were playing in his position, I would be thinking, well... I think this is it. Like, I would just keep possession and try to have like, the last attack of the game. Yeah, and try and get one more. Because if you can see the goal, 4 1, that's, oh, that's too much in the semi final. It's a killer blow. It is. E Champions League qualification for the winner of this matchup. You're booking your place and continuing your season. And fighting for a chance at the FC Pro World Championship qualification as well. This is dangerous. Last chance of the game will fall to Brighton. Harland taking the space. A little player lock cancelling there. It was very quick. Just waiting for the opportunity to open up. Bruno Fernandes, Rude Hullet. Stubbovers. Dancing! 4 1. And is that a killer blow? We mentioned two things. We mentioned the player locks, we mentioned the body feints with the stepovers. Come on, this is a brilliant goal. The defending could have been a little bit better, but again, the stepover body feint is just too strong. What a performance. You've been waiting for that performance from Mark Marley all day long. Been waiting for that. And he has fired Brighton Hove Albion into the ultimate driving seat. A three-goal advantage. Stingray with everything to do. Let's have a look at the second half where this game swung. Look at this. Well finesse. and truly in Brighton's favour. Mamma mia. What a finesse by De Bruyne. You have to time it right. Yeah. The power bar has to be exactly right as well. The player lock now, which it was a little bit scrappy, but it was the other way. It was the other way. The pass wasn't necessary. I know it's easy to say in this position, but the pass wasn't necessary. And again, this the again. Blow. I mean, step over body feint. Oh, and then green timed again. You know, look at Adam, Adam Ryan. Ryan. Come on, he's feeling it. He definitely is feeling it. But yeah, I always like to say this. I don't believe in luck because for me, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. They prepare for this. Yeah. They prepare with the player locks, with the stepper body feints, and they are leading the semi-final 4-1. What a brilliant match by Marley. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. It was really good. He's been a player for a, for a very long time in Europe that has been on the cusp. Uh, EPL Grand Finals. Um, I know when we were playing sort of in the region locked countries as well and, and continents he was always in the qualifiers he was going like in qualifiers as well a two-time e premier league grand finalist e champions league guaranteed as well it's starting to build a very nice resume however if there's one person in this tournament it would be stingray so, no. so what we've got right now who's playing with both, the <laughs> both players want to play in red um the mental games Refs? I, I wouldn't like to be a ref in that position. <laughs> All I'm saying is, we'll be here since 11 a.m. this morning. Pick a kit and play the game. <laughs> okay, Rich, you said it. Yeah, we're you underway. Fi you fix it. <laughs> we're underway. 4 1 Brighton lead. We have to remind people at home this isn't over. Not at all. When a Stingray is at the mix, Anything's possible. Anything's possible. It's not over. So for the people at home, enjoy, because we have 15 minutes of beautiful FC coming up. Well, here we are. We're underway. And for those kits, you're looking at Stingray left to right in the white and green. And in the orange from right to left will be 
Jaden. An early start for Stingray is what's needed, and he's testing Allison in the opening two minutes. Corner coming in, played short to Son. Saka on the edge of the box. Bruno Fernandes, Henri. Reverse Elastico, he just about wins the ball, does Vincent Company, but you're seeing already in the opening five minutes that Stingray is coming to do one thing and one thing only, attack. And again, I, it's not going to be like... We are not going to see possession, calmness, we're going to see goals. And this is not like a really a hard prediction to do at all because they like to attack both of them. Nice pass. Ah, oh, that was unlucky. Goalkeeper were very aggressive. Yeah, that should have been a goal, in my opinion. It wasn't locked. But again, the press. The press is there. <laughs> unlucky again, but yeah. Stingray is playing good at the moment. He's pressing. Long clearance up the pitch, couple of step overs waiting. Stingray just about defends well. Player lock cancel. A step over cancel, a step over cancel again. Come on. Oh! Oh! Kai Havertz fighting for the match. Because if not, that would have been 1 0 for Liverpool in this second leg. Nice player lock. Look towards the edge of the box potentially. Rude Hullet's got a lot of space. Nah. But it's the defensive Hullet that wins the ball back. Yeah, he meant it for Rude Hullet, not Bruno Fernandes. But still, let me tell you something, we're not going to catch a breath. An end to end opening 14 minutes here. Pick for Stingray, if you just get one in the first sort of 30, 35 minutes. You cannot concede. Puts you in a really good position. Really, and you cannot concede. Whoa, what a lock. Howland brings it down, looking to bring more players into play. Maybe a power shot? I guess we'll see next time. Let's look at the top of the pitch, Saka could be in. He's got Ogbené coming back. Power shot pulls for Saka, but just tries getting through the space. Also has Tiki Taka Plus as one of his play styles. I guess we won't be seeing Tiki Taka Plus as much as we'll see power shot, probably. <laughs> nice press. Ah, oh, a bit unlucky. But he's playing right at the moment, pressing, going forward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brighton will come forward, looking for a fifth goal here. Heel to heel out there. Cancel. Keepers on the floor. Van der Sar gets up. What is happening? Rebounds it in. 5 1. Brighton and Ove Albion. Yeah. It was scrappy, but he doesn't care. Cole Palmer fighting for the batch as well. I mean, the way he slided, we can see what it means, not only for Jaden, for, for Marley as well, for Adam Ryan, for the whole Brighton team. This is an important goal. I mean, four goal difference. Might be too much. Bruno Fernandes looking for a player to pass to, not only for all those people that you mentioned, but for Scotland as well. Yeah. Very proud Scottish team. Fernandez dinked over the top. Van Dyke just gives him a nudge off the ball, disrupts his motion. Yeah, Stinger is not comfortable the way those 50 50 situations are playing out. He's just turning around, I guess, talking to Diogo. And it's not an easy thing to do, but for Diogo, for a coach, you have to keep your. Locked in. Locked in. He has to be locked in. Look, I know those 50 50 situations could have went for you, but it doesn't matter now. You have to be locked in. Alan's always going to win it. You know the story. Wrong animation. Stingray to bring numbers forward. The white and green shirts in support. Nice press. Mistake. Another one. It's just breaking down a little bit in the middle of the pitch at the moment. Yeah. Needs a little bit of composure on the wall. That could come through Son. Pull it. Left footed strike. Oh. It's hit Haaland on the way through. Unlucky. Unlucky because the flare nutmeg was right. I think the finesse was right as well, even though he moved the keeper in the right direction. But again, Haaland wasn't in the right position. Coverts trying to create a sixth. Not on this occasion. 
really, really open this game. Oh, nice defense. No. <laughs> yes. It just seems like Jaden is doing the right thing and then the wrong thing at the same time. It's just he has to be patient. Nice attack. Brilliant defense. He's, he's defending very well. I was just about to say that. And there could be a counter on here. Bodies are forward for Liverpool. Floated into the back post, Haaland nods it down. Henri brought into action. Cole Palmer, already the goal scorer in this game. What a pass that is! What a goal! Can we, can we name that the Brighton Special? Don't know if that's the name for something else, but we can trademark it. Oh, that's a nice and brilliant oh. goal, we can see. You're just not defending that. <laughs> look, look at Adam Ryan, man. He's feeling it, because... They're in again. Another one. Seven for Brighton. Seven heaven. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're going to stop. Stingray seems to be out of it. Yeah, he's checked. He's checked out. Seven one. Brighton are leading. They are on their way to a grand final. They will be taking on Manchester City. And what a performance. We talked about, I did a piece of analysis just before we, get, we played this game, me and Kyle. Neither player is getting carried. They're both pulling their weight equally. 4-1 win, and now his teammates 3-0 up. They're both doing everything necessary for Brighton and Hove Albion to be going all the way to the very top. Take me through the three goals you've seen. Yeah, this was a bit lucky, especially with this rebound in here because I think company should have just cleared it in a way. But again, he didn't. I mean, this 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 is the Brighton special. The player lock with the long ball playstyle plus, and then the acrobatic playstyle as well from Haaland, and then the patient in there. He was just patient. We can see, I mean, look at Adam Ryan. <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> He's feeling it. We're back on the way for the second half. 7-1. This has been a really, really strange E Premier League Grand Finals because some of the results that have been coming in are so one-sided. Yeah. And I, I've been thinking about an answer to that player luck because it's hard. The thing is, if you try to cover the long top of the through ball, it could be a driven pass. Yeah. And then it's... As soon as you drop off as well, okay. play everyone on side. So the main thing is, you got to press. Yep. Bruno Fernandes. You Off have to try. Risky. But it could work. Yep. But it's risky. That one's over the top for Henri to chase. He's going to get no change out of the attack. Will Stingray. I mean, you talk about some of those results. 6-0 Man City beat Luton in the semi-final. Nice talk one. about confidence going into the final. 7-1 up at the moment. Ah, oh, Brighton. The other results we've seen. They only just squeaked past Wolves earlier Wolves, today. Wolves, yeah. And for me to win a competition... Was that the big game? Probably. For me to win a competition, you obviously are going to crush your opponents in some matches, but you're going to suffer as well. And they for me, suffered. And they suffered. Game. And they, they won. Yeah. Is it Brighton's day? We'll have to find out, because we've got a grand final right around the corner. The formalities of this game. 30 minutes left to play. Stingray and Darius for Liverpool have had a great tournament so far, but it's just one step too far. That is a green time finish, 7-2. Five goals needed in 30 minutes. It would be something truly miraculous. I mean, anything can happen in the E-Premier League, but it doesn't if seem like... If there's one team that you associate with miracles, it probably is Liverpool. Yeah. However... Yeah. This might be a bit too much. Five goals needed, at least. Really, really big. I do like, anyways, like if I were in Jaden's position, there's something about the way Man City played their semi-finals. Like, I don't want to just win. I want to demonstrate the people. <laughs> you can't let us up easily. Don't You're... think that we're just coming to these finals to get beat. No. Five or six. No. I won't stop. And if you switch off for a second, I'll score. Once, twice. That's a direct message to your opponent. Over yet, this attack coming in. Allison with a huge save. If that goes in, four goals needed in 
just under 30 minutes. It will. Oh, it's not gone in, Alison. Two massive saves. Now Jaden has to <laughs> calm down. Stingray is laughing because of that brilliant save from Alison. I wouldn't say he's the best keeper in FC24, but he's fast. He really is fast. Corner taken short, nicked into the box, Haaland's up. We talk about Alisson. He's just going to slow everything down ever so sort of slightly now. A chance for you to just breathe and try to look for Haaland. There he is. Surely not, right? No, I don't think so. Sets us up beautifully for our grand final, you've got to say. Mm. It really does. Nice pass. Offside trap. Yep. Good offside trap. It's... Uh, you called it. Thank you. You said it before, and it's one of the answers to player luck. It can be risky. But it can be effective as well. Sliding ha Kai Havertz into play. Looking for a little bit of space inside the box. Couple of step overs. 7 3. 18 minutes left to play. We would need a goal before 76. A goal before 80. 84 and then 90. It could happen. But if you're Jaden, I mean. Just, you just, just break the game down. You just get gotta, to the 80th minute at 7 3. You gotta dribble for a bit. You can pass it back and forth a bit, and then the game is over. Or just score more. So, for example, this is necessary, really. Like, if you just go to a corner and try to keep possession for a bit, that is it. The press is there. He falls backwards and then out wide. This is it. Just holding on to the ball, keeping it ticking over. Bruno Fernandes into Rude Hullet. 12 minutes left to play, and there's 12 minutes remaining in Liverpool's E Premier League journey. Nice press. For 2023-24 season. The semi-final for the Reds but it will just be that, a top four finish. Nothing more. Haaland into Son, the defending. Yeah, he went for a flare now, make. Worked once, but not the second time. Nice build-up. How impressed were you when we look, just look back on what we've seen over the last two legs, Grav? That Mike Marley performance. 4-1 versus Darius. What I really, really appreciate is how you suffer for your life in the quarterfinals. You lose the game, your game, 1-0. Your opponent has a few chances, and then you come back to play the semi-finals, and you perform like that. Real top performance from Mark Marley, and that will give him so much confidence going into his grand final. His individual matchup, his individual battle versus Matthias Bernano, who has looked <laughs> flawless during this tournament. Something's got to give between Brighton and City, and we're going to break all that down very shortly indeed, because this game has concluded. Brighton 7 3 victory, knocking Liverpool out of the EPL. For the 23-24 season, Stingray and Darius's journey comes to an end. And the Brighton boys march into a grand final, Graveson. Brilliant performance by Brighton, really, especially in that first leg. But again, in the first half of the second leg as well, I mean, Jaden, three goals in 45 minutes. It was just a brilliant match. Flawless performance, and I do think they deserve to be in the final. Yeah, what a performance. I mean, Jaden... It was more professional, his performance. He, he, he dealt with the 
onslaught in the opening 15, 20 minutes from Stingray. Got a couple of goals and the tie was pretty much sealed off uh, before half time. You gotta be honest. You look back at Liverpool's EPL, were they proud of their achievements, a top four, or is it for Stingray number one? That's all that matters. I think you you are fighting for the final because of the Champions League. Because the, the repercussions, yeah. Because of the FC Pro World Championship of Sports and because you want to play for the title, especially Stingray after winning the French title. When you come back home, you, you want to win it. So I don't think Stingray should be too hard on himself, but he's definitely not happy. Well, we're in the winner's circle right now. Leah Ravel joined by the Brighton boys. Thanks, Richard. I am here with the Brighton boys, the grand finalists. First of all, congratulations for making it through to the grand final and also securing your spots in the E Champions League. Marley, I'll come to you first. You had an interesting final back in 2020 against Tom Lees. How does it feel to be in another final? Yeah, fantastic. You know, we come back every year and the lame is to go all the way. It's the only thing I've not done, so we're one game away now. There you go. And Jaden, a dominant performance for you as well. Um, grand final, Manchester City. How are you feeling about your performance? And more importantly, how are you feeling about the game against Manchester City? Yeah, I just need to build on the performance I've just had. It's probably one of the best games of FIFA I've played in a long, long time. And hopefully I can take it into the next game. Amazing. Marley, how are you feeling going up against Manchester City, rather? A big game, a final as well, an FC World Championship spot. Does that any, add any pressure? I'm sure it does, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> but how are you preparing for that? Are you motivated? Are, do you have any pressure? What's that like? Oh, absolutely, you just want to you know, get the game on. Um, got to look forward to it, be confident. You know, we're in the final now, we know what we're up against. We've played against them a lot in practice, so let's just go and uh, try and win the final. Amazing. Well, congratulations again. Best of luck in the grand final against Manchester City. And we will see what they're up against in the grand final after this. Thank you very much, guys. Brighton confirmed kings of Scotland, but will they be kings of the E Premier League? That final against Manchester City coming up shortly. And what a performance from both Marley and Jaden Graveson. That Marley game in that second half, he just reached another level. He obviously knows every skill in the EAFC 24 playbook, but we've got to look at that second goal. That was the catalyst for him running away with the game. I mean, he was trying the step overs. He was trying to look for those we want one-by-one -one situations, but sometimes it's just, you gotta try the finesse as well, because I mean, <laughs> that finesse from the brain, it was just something else you can see reactions from the whole team but again Especially the coach adam <laughs> yeah adam brian was feeling it definitely but what i really liked about his performance is you're trying things and they don't work really if you have worked well enough and your preparation is right you have to pull some tricks under the sleeve he did that with the finesse they're through to the final i cannot wait to see what happens in that final against manchester city because if there's still another player who knows tricks it's tex i mean tex and mati Matty's defense has been perfect up to this point, but the thing is, Manchester City, knockouts. 13 goals scored, zero goals conceded. What's going to happen in this final? Oh, I don't know, and I can't wait to find out. However, we do need to let our players have a little bit of an R&R &R and to actually get ready. So we are going to send in Leah Ravel. In fact, she caught up with Matthias Bonanno earlier. So let's see what he had to say. Hello, you guys. We are backstage with Matias Bonanno from Manchester City and now grand finalist. Matthew, you're no stranger to a grand final. How are you feeling after A, your performance undefeated in the whole tournament and B, an E Champions League spot? Oh, I'm good. I feel really good. Uh, I'm confident. Uh, but right now, the, the shop not finished. So I need to win. We need to win. Listen, if you start your next match with six goals, I think you'll be no stranger to a champion spot as well and a spot in the FC World Championship. How are you and Tex preparing for this match? Oh, in practice, the Luton Town player was incredible and I don't know, I think it's the experience uh, in this stage maybe and I, I don't know, it's like normal, like uh, any match, uh, so I don't know, I play uh, really well. Game by game, really well played indeed. Listen, you have conquered Argentina, you've conquered South America, you've conquered Spain, and now you're looking to conquer England. Is there anyone between Brighton or Liverpool who you'd prefer? 
No, it's the same for me. Any opponent is the same. We need to win uh, any, any, any team. You just want to win? Yeah. Exactly. Well, good luck in the grand final. I'll let you go and get prepared, and we will see who takes the crown after this grand final. Matias Bernardo, a.k.a. the most relaxed man in the world coming into a grand final. Ryan Pessoa, let's talk about some of his gameplay so far. What a man, what a talent, and here he is looking to conquer the E-Premier League. He's been ruthless in front of goal, unbelievable, and also defensively. But we're going to take a look at some of the goals he did score. This one in particular is the goal to break the deadlock against Luton. You can see him building up on the right-hand side. It's a ball played inside just to recycle the play. He plays it to De Bruyne, right here will stop it. There's not a lot of space for him to, to turn in to the defenders right up against him. He's got options to go back. If he wanted to, he could play it back where it came from, from the right-hand side, or he could try to turn upwards. But what he does, as you see this clip play on, is just the twisting and turning in possession. And that's something that you associate with him, making the right choices in the right moments. And as this clip will play on here, De Bruyne turns back, turns back again, a step over into the space there, and a green time shot across goal. It's frightening what Matias can do when you think about what his partner in crime, Tex, can do. Yep. So dominant, but Tex just has to sit back sometimes and say, do you know what, you do that, give me a 6-0 lead, all gravy. Yep, exactly, and in that position, he sort of repaid the faith, or the the favour, sorry, I should say, that Tex gave him in the first game. Because Tex did win that first leg, I think it was 5-0 against Spurs in the first knockout round of the day. And Matias done <laughs> even better than that, 6-0 against Luton Town. So if that's anything to go by, Brighton will have a tough, tough game. Is that is that a prediction from, from you, Ryan? I'll actually give a prediction, why not? You, you will? I will, for the final, yeah. What? I think, I think City are, are too good. I think they're unbelievable, Tex and Matias. I think Jaden and, and Mark are incredible as well, but I think it's just too big of a mountain. Well, we'll see if that one happens just there. There you have it. Manchester City will play Brighton and Hove Albion in the grand final of the E Premier League 2024. We'll have all the build-up and the big match itself when we return. Welcome to the grand final of the E Premier League 2024. I'm Frankie Ward, this is Kyle Walker, and I speak for both of us when I say we could not be more excited about our forthcoming final between Brighton and Manchester City. Kyle, you've been here before. Just how electrifying is it to watch a final of this standard? Oh, it's so exciting. For the past few years, I've been able to see this happen, see this play out in front of me, and here we are, both of these teams, they know what 
what's on the line. £30,000 shared between them. They're already going to the E Champions League, but the spots at the FC Pro World Championships is what they want as well. This is what it's all about. The atmosphere in it feels a bit tense because you've got Manchester City, you've got Brighton, four players that are absolutely incredible. Very exciting. 20 teams have become two, and now just two legs stand between our players and the trophy. Let's start the grand final. From Manchester City, it's Tex and Matias Bonanno. And representing Brighton, Jaden and Morley. Well, here we have it. 58 matches have been played so far from 20 Premier League teams down to just two, but only one of them can be crowned E Premier League champion of 2024. I think we are ready to go. Our grand final will be getting underway very shortly. Brandon Smith, Richard Buckley, Ryan Pessoa, over to you guys. Thank you very much, Carl. It's that time of the year once again here at the Premier League, where two clubs are left from the 20 that first took part in this competition back in January in the group stages. And look, on one side of it, Manchester City, they were the favourites to go far in this competition, but it was always a question mark of who would maybe join them in the grand final, Richard. There were three or four clubs. It, when you talk to the experts, the punters, the pundits, whatever you want to call it, you're looking at Forest, you're probably looking maybe at Liverpool and Brighton. They were, they were in the cusp of who's going to compete against Manchester City, and it is Brighton Hove Albion. And I've got to say, Ryan, you broke down a bit of gameplay there from Bernardo, from Tex. Brighton have got better and better, and that was their best performance in the EPL up to date in the semis. Of course, you don't want to peak too early. You want to make sure that you've you've got the performance levels and you've got the reps in for the grand final. And I'm sure Jaden will be confident, but he'll also be nervous because he's up against a text that is in fine form. Well, the one thing we've got to remember as well, Brighton may have got better and better throughout this process, but Manchester City have got better and better and not considered a single goal, Richard. But they've not played... You always have a bad game in every tournament. I can't remember the last time someone walked a tournament all the way to the final and went into the middle of the stage and lifted yeah. a trophy without having any adversity. They have to face adversity at some point. Is it right now? That's the question. And what happens if they do face adversity in this game? Do, do they crumble? <laughs> they haven't tasted conceding a goal yet. This is the story of Manchester City so far. Matthias Bernardo, welcome to the Premier League, my friend. He hasn't lost a game. So throughout the group stages, four wins, back to back to back to back, into the knockout stages. Yeah, he might have added too many goals onto the uh, on the win against Spurs, but he added six of them onto the win in the semi-final stages against Luton Town. They had an incredible run in the knockout stages. For Brighton of Albion, though, Mark Marley, of course, has been in every single E Premier League, but Jaden Groden, on unbeaten. that Xbox side, is also unbeaten as well. He creates chances, he creates a number of opportunities. I think you're right, Rich. Is this the team that's going to just cause a few issues? Well, I think for me, Ryan, when you look at Mark, that was such a big win for yeah, him in that last game because yeah. such a big confidence boost. I think he needed that. As you said, it's not just about just, just winning the game. It's what it brings to the next game as well. And that confidence boost, just to make sure that he knows he's still got it on the biggest stages of all, and it will give Jaden a huge boost of confidence as well. You, you could see that, couldn't you? How, how that result affected Jaden. Look, against Stingray, you know you're dealing with a lot, but you managed to get through that game. We are playing on the Xbox first and foremost. Jaden Groden will take on Tex. It's an interesting story, this one. Across both sides of the screen, you've got the two most capped E Premier League grand finalists there is. Mark Marley's never missed an E Premier League final, and so is Tex. Yeah, they, they, they live and breathe this song. You can see the uh, audience here. Friends and family. A few familiar faces in there as well. Big stuff, former EPL grand finalist. I just went over and had a very, very brief conversation before the players walked out. And I said, that's a massive win. He went, yeah, the best performance they've had so far. Yep. And it's coming the semi-final. Ah, everything leads you to believe that Man City is going to win the EPL. Yep. They're going to win this trophy. They're going to step into the middle of the stage in 45 minutes time have FC Pro World Championship spots to their name. 
and Texas is going to be a two-time champion and Matty is going to be cleaning up domestic leagues like he's a cleaner. Um, but there's just that little bit in the back of your mind that says, Brighton are peaking at the right time, Ryan. Do you know what? I think, honestly, the only way I see Brighton winning this is if they score first. I know that's early to say. They can score the first minute and end up losing the game. But I think just that confidence knowing that the defence is penetrable. The first game score. is everything. Agreed. The first game is Jayden, everything. He needs to start off well. It's going to be hands for, isn't he? Against a player of Texas quality. I was just speaking tonight, which obviously coach of Lyrics through, through Spurs. And he said, that f it's just to back up your point, that first goal is everything. Yep. It really does determine which way it's going to, especially against a player like Tex. You go one up against him, panic. You've got to think you're playing a one leg, six minute half game. You know, in that level of time, if you score in the first 30 minutes, you've almost, you've nearly taken half the game out. Like, you, you, your opponent, especially when you play first, they can't press you, yeah. because if they press and concede two or three, the game's over. So if you score first, nine times out of 10, in the first game, you're going to get an advantage and you're going to go through and potentially pick up a victory for your team. You're just seeing the booth here in action. The admins in the Premier League, yellow referee tops, just making sure everything's ready to go. And I mean, Brighton Everyone, you've got to be ready for this moment. They've already guaranteed the Champions League tickets, by the way, alongside Manchester City, which is huge. Two more huge European clubs in that tournament later on this year in May. Remember that the domestic leagues in the FC Pro ecosystem will offer tickets directly into that competition. But imagine an extra win there. FC Pro World Championships. Hands on the trophy, which Mark Marley has come so close to before when he was a runner-up of Bournemouth. 30k as well. All the way back. Yeah. 30,000 pounds. is a, a huge thing. In 2020 and 30,000 pounds on top of that as well. Matisse Bernardo and Marley will have to just sit back and watch this first leg play out. Now, this is what it's all come down to. Your E Premier League Grand Final. Manchester City against Brighton, Hove, Albion. I feel as though I'm the, uh, the neutral player in the commentary booth because we've got an ex-Man City pro player for three or four years and we've got a lifelong Brighton and Hove Albion fan. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Richard. <laughs> I don't know what you are talking about. So it's going to be... Uh, I mean, we've just got out of, you, you, you know, the Europa League. You're now, back in. You're <laughs> back in. We're back in Europe. <laughs> a week later, we're back in Europe somehow. But it's going to be uh, a really, really tantalising affair. And just when you have a couple of these delays as well, Ryan, you've been in the booth where you're waiting for the game to kick off. It can't help. No, it. You know what? Sometimes we speak about sometimes when you when you rush into a game, you yeah. can get caught off guard. It, it works against you. But sometimes you can just use that just to take a breather, not to get too worked up and to too caught, get, get too caught up in the occasion. I'm sure that these players are experienced, as you mentioned. Mark Marley's been here for a number of years now. Jaden as well. They know what it takes to perform on the biggest stages of all. We're about to get into our grand final, Manchester City against Ooh, Brighton. Big game feel. This is it. We're loaded in. Match number one now on the Xbox sides. Who can, I mean, first and foremost, who can score against Manchester City in the knockout stages? The this, goal, a goal is so important. This could be make or break for the grand final. Because if Tex wins in an emphatic fashion, it's over. <laughs> it could be over. You're giving the controller to Matthias Bernano, who is an, a true expert. It's a rash bit defending straight away here. Straight away, Manchester City with the first real chance of the game. It's Tex already trying to feel out this Brighton side and find a way through. He might be on for an early goal in this game. What happened? I'm not sure what happened there for Erling Haaland. I think he tried for a Travella, but when you don't put enough power in a Travella, it ups for a flare shot, and that's exactly what happens. I know the confidence is oozing around Man City, <laughs> but I don't think that's the uh, the ultimate way of scoring a goal. Oh, good press. Two, three there. times there already. <laughs> you know, honestly, sometimes when you play a game in in previous experiences as well. The, the first couple minutes can genuinely just set the tempo. And against somebody like Tex, you want to sort of knock them off, off, knock him off guard a little bit, just to make him a bit fearful that you can keep possession well, you can start attacks. But if he's able to just pin you in your own half straight away, he just gains confidence and it keeps on growing. Oh, better into Almin Son, into Hullitz. It's the first warning shot fired at Brian of Albion. But it just goes wide of the left-hand post. If you're Jaden in this situation, you've got to be honest with for out your own half in the opening eight minutes, just showing text, just throwing a punch, letting him know that you're there. Yep, look at the pace from Harlan. I think he's gone here. Well, the fullback's completely out of position. We see Bruno Fernandes to come back and cover that. Van Dijk now has been pulled out, but does recover well, only to give a corner to Manchester City. This is as good as a penalty for, for Tex. Yeah. 
which sounds crazy to say. Watch Haaland. Here he comes in, Erling Haaland towards that front post. Manchester City will lead in the opening ten minutes. And Tex is back into that comfortable position. I hope that Zach Moore is getting his money because these corners that they have worked on since he has been brought in has been revolutionary. Well, you said it. It's like a penalty. Genuinely, they've worked so hard on it. We saw it from the group stages, let alone the grand finals of the Premier League, how important they have been. They're fundamental in tech scoring a lot of goals from there, and it, it just shows you when you put theory into practice, you can just create a lot of goal, goal scoring opportunities from When you have Haaland as well, it's, all the other yeah. ones have gone to near post. You just trust him to win the ball anyway. Yeah. You put it in the middle of the box, stick it on the penalty spot towards the back. It's so dominant with Erling Haaland in those situations that it's a match made in heaven. Man City lead against Brighton of Albion here in this year's E Premier League Grand Final. So the first match, there will be two matches to determine our overall winner here, Haaland. Back to De Bruyne, tries to punch it into the feet of Yomin Son. He was a little bit ruthless there defensively. Is a chance, looks to break away. Laurent Blanc, not the most popular choice of the bat, but certainly has been one for Tex, and he's performed well there. Yeah, it was a, a triggered run in behind. Tried to play the pass, lofted first time, but it was well read from Tex as well, and he's in behind again here. I think the, the defender's just going to get there. Just don't want to make any mistakes from the back when defending against Tex. But as I said, the, the thing is, it's not to just not to give him confidence. He smells blood. And this is the possession away again. Brian lost possession into Manchester City. Just the defending is so rash as well. Richard, talk to me. He's just pulling the defenders out. He's under a lot of pressure. He's stepped into a sauna and the, the heat's on too high. He doesn't know where to go. He's getting flustered right now. This is all just he's passing been, from he's the He's being very brave. There's the play a lot, which he was. Never so good at in that semi-final. Does go down to ground to everyone re into the book. And one of Texas players go. Cole Palmer and Ogbeni interchanging. It's Ogbeni on the left back side that wins the ball back. And Man City will look to break in numbers. A little delay there allows the likes of Haaland and Hullet to come into this attack also. Great pass into Haaland, Man City. Looking for a second company there, just does enough, but gives away a corner. This is where Man City have been dangerous. And this has come from an attacking Brighton free kick. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. That post. It just shows, he can, can turn defence to attack in an instant. And as I mentioned, Tex is gaining confidence from the way Jaden's playing. He knows Jaden's scared. And that's exactly what he's, he's aimed from this game. Tex is calm, composed. He's been in this situation before. Jaden, of course, a top player, and he just needs to to play his game, not be too fearful. We haven't really seen many player locks, which is a lot of, of things we associate with him. Here we go, right on cue. Just needs to try and be direct. Here's a chance for Brighton. The player lock was there, but the pass wasn't. Into the feet of Rude Hullet. Jaden is he, slowly settling into the game. That first 25 minutes was really, really frantic and Tex were in a great position to maybe get a second or a third, but you're just seeing the game starting to settle now. What a ball that is from Ben Chilwell, that's given them so much space, Man City. Yomin San left, right, couple of step-overs, Tex. Good defending, to be fair. Trying to find a way through. Kevin De Bruyne does enough to get Brian back on the ball. He's feeling himself into the game, Jaden. There it is, ball over the top. There's something that he wants to look for. It's Kai Havertz, is he round the right back? Yes, he is, cut back, finds Hullet, step-overs. And runs into the man mountain of Virgil van Dijk. Just didn't really have the support around him. That over the top through ball though, I know. Did just leave a little bit of space there, Tex. Over the top. I mean, just look at the, the radar right now at the bottom of your screen. Oh, Benny is so high up, and that is obviously how he wants to play. Fullbacks getting up and creating the overloads. Good step there from Jaden. It was a foul, actually, never mind. I thought it was a well timed tackle. But as you mentioned, the overlaps on the overloads, what we call in the FC24, just trying to create the mismatch of having two players against one is, is very effective. How long has been selected? What we're going to see from this, Coach Atmore chatting. It's going to be a gift Ooh. or not. It fell kindly to Hurley, but Allison, quickest to react. 
And probably the last chance of the half. Brighton of Albion will have an attack if they can find oh, money. Lauren Blanc. Great context to head it back there. I was going to say, I think it would be smarter to play for last attack, Rich. I don't know if you agree. We might get zero added minutes of injury time. If Tex doesn't throw it forward, the ref's just going to blow up. We do get one. Look at, look at Chihuahua in the open yeah. as well. He's gone. I don't think we're going to get anything. No, I don't think. He didn't play the pass. Which was going to go. It's not past the halfway line either. Are we going to play it? No, good first half. That will do us. Manchester City lead Brian by a goal to nil at half time. It's it zoomed past. I mean, it started off with Tex just being ruthless, didn't it? From the start, he was on him from the moment. The first whistle was blown. Then the, as the game started to unfold, we started to see a few more player locks coming from Jaden, and he tried to feel his way back into the game, but Tex did a great job of just dealing with everything. No, I think if you look at the the first half in two segments, the, the second half of that first half, from maybe 25 to 45, it was much better. Yeah. Jaden, for the first 25 minutes, it could have been two or three nil. That was the only goal that we did see. It was from a set piece. It was a corner whipped in, and Harland with a dominant header, as you would expect. But I think if you're Jaden Ryan, you're, you're feeling all right at the minute. You're feeling, he'd feel a lot better, as you mentioned, that second part of the first half, in the sense that he started up very sloppily, giving away possession, was sort of succumbing to the pressure from Tex, but he started to find his way a little bit more in this game. A few balls over the top would have given him confidence. They can get behind the defensive line of Tex. Back on the way. That's Brian of Albion, hub for a goal in this grand final against a Manchester City side that have not conceded since the knockouts. They've started this weekend in London for the Premier League finals. They were top of their group back in January, it gave them a fast track ticket to the quarter final stages with a 7 0 win and a 6 0 win. Well, Bene does give you a little bit of presence in the air, Aero Plus on the right back. Typically, I mean, it that moves the item is an attacking player, but yeah. you, you do put him in at right back and sort of you get a decent output out of him. Speaking of Ben, he's right at the back post. If there is a, a chance for Tex to find him through, back to Thierry Henry. Hullitz was just on side. It was a great save from Allison. And back to the corners again, which is taken really quickly. And fortunate enough for Jaden. They can just get Allison the ball and just take a breather for a minute. I think it's just key. Just take this thing out of the game. We haven't seen. In the previous first legs for Man City, they've been far and away. They've been Dominant. long gone in this, in this stage, sometimes three or four up by this moment. So one goal deficit is, of course, very retrievable. And, and Jaden will be confident if he can just sort of start to get a few shots at goal here. But great defending from Tex again. We just see as soon as Bruno Fernandes gets the ball, Tex is really quick to press him yeah. because he knows that that Bruno Fernandes player look, long ball pass ball is always on. Yeah. It's not the only way that Brighton score, but they've shown a couple of times that that's how they can score. Both Jaden and Mark. Speaking of switches... Both players have that left back just bombing up. Causing all sorts of problems, but if this is a 1-0 score in the end and the, the control has passed on to a second leg, it's still such an open game. It'll be the first time where Man City in the knockouts have got a second leg to play for, yeah, as well. Oh, the ball got trapped underneath Erling Haaland's feet. He's not a player that you want in those intricate positions where you can twist and turn. He's more so the player which you just want it in the air. Yeah, just a guessing game there from Hullet. In the in the penalty box, shooting, or in the air, winning the header. That's where he's best. In the build-up, you, you don't really want him dropping in deep or. Offering his support. Both Manchester City players unbeaten throughout the whole tournament. Any game that Tex did draw was in the group stage as his first opening game against Chelsea. It's Brian on the hunt for a wave. That's a great pass. Finds Haaland. Is there an option at the back post? Maybe. Hull is back on side or not? Off. Just offside. Just offside. You thought maybe there was a pass at the back post. Yeah, I thought that's where he was aiming for. Maybe he didn't. I don't know if he expected the player to be offside, but... He was off. Holly, and he ran back. But he was still slightly off. And yes. Tex again, trying to respond straight away from that chance. Man City could catch Brian sleeping it. It's a really quick attack. 
goes up for a goal kick in the end. Into a pause we go. Only 20 minutes left. <laughs> Keep on always proceeding on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. dive. <laughs> I'm glad he knew we where his pause was because it looked a lot closer than first inspection. Let's just have another look at this. Some. Maybe expecting to at the target there. I don't know if we can have a. I don't know if we can see it actually while we're just in a pause here. But that offside goal from uh, Rude Hullet, see how tight it was. Because that was really, really close for Brighton to get back into this game and potentially get an equaliser. Let's have a look at it. Because this, is so offside. Oh, it's really that's close. That's so close. That's oh, way oh, closer there, than I he, he plays it on. Yeah, that's, the, that's a lot closer than I thought it was. To be fair. And they know how close they came there as well. You'll see the reaction there from all the players backstage. We're back underway. Final 15 minutes. And then we jump over to oh, second match. It's a big win. Especially when you got on re running at you. It's good defending, to be fair. I think he looked for the finesse shot plus play style. De Bruyne. Henri. Man City could be on for a second text. Waiting for a way through. Henri on the angle, which isn't pretty, and it's two shots off target. I think in those positions there, that's why I asked Tex early on in the day, why did he opt for the Thierry Henry without the five-star skill moves? It sort of makes him one-dimensional on the edge of the box. He's very... He's not someone you'd want to twist and turn if he has the, the four-star skill moves. Jaden forcing a ball over the top where it was easily read by Tex. I mean, the game being separated at this moment by a set piece. Yeah. I thought Tech's going to lose possession in midfield. It's a bit passive defensively from Jaden. Maybe he's afraid to just push forward and create a gap. I think he wants to make sure at least if he loses this game, it's still he also a retrievable. His teammate. Uh, exactly, yeah. that's what I mentioned. And he wants to make it retrievable for Mark Marley. It's a poor touch. Heavy touch from Kai Havertz. Recovered well. Just about by Vincent Company or not. Haaland on the edge oh. of the box. He's great from Tex. The ball just about sticks to his feet. Kevin De Bruyne, a big save, Allison, to keep Brian alive at 1-0. But suddenly, in the last 15, 20 minutes, we're end-to-end. -end. A couple of shot cancels in there, Ryan. Incredible. Ball over the top again. Jaden doesn't hang about with these passes. Even if it doesn't work, he doesn't get discouraged. There's space. So much space. But it's a Bruno Fernandes. Who's going to be the person to take the shot? The step-overs. It was a smart idea. The text defending. Really well again. Another long-lofted ball, Haaland. This time. We'll bring the attack to life for City. Humming on one more pass. Oh, that's tackle. incredible. If that's a manual stat, that's incredible from Jaden. Only one goal between these two. This second leg, it's a game saving tackle. Yeah. If that goes in, it's a completely different complexion the second game. We still have so much on the line. Jaden will know, though. He scored late on against Mitch Haywood in that first he game. Yeah. If he can do it again here, this could be. That was the goal that really changed the game. Last kick of the game. Are Brighton going to make the most of this? No, they're not. And it's going to do us at the halfway point. Man City with a very small lead, but still a lead regardless. Tex leading by a goal to nil at the halfway point. It's all still to do, though, for Matias Bernardo or Mark Marley. A second leg to come up here very soon from the Premier League. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this.
Well, welcome back to London for this year's E Premier League final. Don't worry, we haven't concluded this as of yet. It's a very, very nervy ground final, this one, as Manchester City lead Brighton by a goal to nil. At the end of our first game, where we saw Tex beat Jaden Grodin by a goal to nil. It came early doors through a corner, Richard, and it's safe to say, still very much open this one. I think you said it right in the ad break that this is the first time that City have really been given a tough game like this. It certainly is, so we thought, what better way with the potential championship in an Argentine's hand to bring in someone who knows him very well to the commentary booth. Gravison, you've seen Matias Bernardo for a few years. You watched him, well, we all got the chance to watch him last year in Spain, lifting the Spanish league. Big moments for big players and there's not many bigger than Bernardo. I have competed against him as well. And I do think when it comes to finals, he's just different gravy. I mean, he just wins. It's, he wins finals. It's incredible to think that in his first e Premier League year, we know the move he's made to Manchester City, obviously literally moved from Argentina over to Europe to pursue this as a career as a professional FC Pro player. And the fact that the last game of the tournament is all on him. The pressure is on him. First time for Manchester City in an e Premier League final. Is it going to be two e Premier League trophies for Manchester City? They did it back in 2021 on a penalty shootout against Leeds United. But for Mark Marley, he'll be there before. Yeah, 2021. I'm oh, sorry, 2020 when Tom Lees was champion for Watford, losing in that grand final there. The heartbreak would have felt all that time ago, but still has never lost his hunger, Richard, for this competition to come back year after year and always place somewhere in the knockouts. He's a serial qualifier. Handshakes all round. He's up for the E Premier League 2023-24 trophy, the championship, the FC Pro qualification of the World Championship lies in the hands of Mark Marley for Brighton and Hove Albion and Matthias Bernardo for Manchester City. Here we go. Can Brighton and Albion pull this one back? Matthias Bernardo has still only considered five goals in this competition across six games up to this point. He's not lost a game. He's not drawn a game. He's been flawless. You have to remember, he won 6 0. I like this start from Mark Marley. A little bit of possession. Sort of feel your opponent out, see what he's made of. It was a frantic start for Tex against Jaden, and he did get that goal, what, 15 minutes in? It's a really good opening five minutes. I know it's only five minutes, but it's a good five minutes for Mark. Lofted in to Henri, but a positive start already. I mean, the player luck special. Seen it already. Special coming from Brighton. But yeah, I think Matias Bonanno thrives under pressure in these kind of matches. So it was really a good possession from Marley in this situation, but as we can see, he's just triggering runs with the fullbacks. He's playing well at the moment. Well, Matias Bernardo's first chance in the box of Brighton of Albion. Wins a corner. And I can assure you this one will be worked expertly well towards the front post. It was time green, Holland defensively. Nice press. Oh, him out. Yeah. Just pressed out of the box there. Free kick. Waved away, Omri. Back to Haaland, step over defensively. Sal Marmali again for Brighton of Albion. We could arguably say they are both best defenders of the competition in their respective consoles. I mean, Tex and, and Matias Bonanno, because Tex playing knockouts, he hasn't considered a goal. But Matias Bonanno as well, so. Possible cross. Lofted in to Haaland, keepers come out, he was brave, he had to be. That's what you've got to do when you see Haaland in that position, you've got to take a risk. Because if you don't bring the keeper or you don't try something different defensively, he's going to nod it down what and you're going to concede. This press is oh. relentless from Matias Bernardo and Manchester City, they are not letting Brighton breathe, let alone have a sniff of the ball, it's another big block from Virgil van Dijk, but how many times can he be the hero? Rashford again, another wave of pressure. Schweinsteiger back to Omri. De Bruyne. Omri, one more pass into Haaland. Petr Cech saves the day. He's playing really well. But another not quick corner at the front post. Haaland flick on, big save. And Brian of Albion just want a breath. They can't breathe. Now is his chance for just kind of trying to pass it to the 
right back if he can, because, I mean, Matias Bonal has been relentless again with the press. Player lock in. Does well there. Great feet from Hullet. Sends the broiler out the scenario, but look at the numbers. The Man City shirts around him. It's a force to bounce back. You, you take that. Move. You take that. No, you, you do take that if you mark, because you're penned in. Corner, 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 chance. Just a little bit of brain. A little break in play. One of the few players as well, as you pointed out in the semi finals, to give David Ginola a start. Look at right back. Yep. It could be through. Oh, Bene goes for a power shot, teases it, Harland. Back to Hulley, Pechek! One post. How many more saves? And can he defend this corner? You can just see him there defensively trying to mark up Harland to Harland. Virgil van Dijk is also bodying him. It goes in. So Harland goes all the way through. Can we see a finish on the edge of the box? Schweinsteiger, Omri White. That's four, five, six chances for Man City in these first 25 minutes. Close. Is it Brighton's day? It's not falling for Man City. This should be 3-0 up. It should, it should have, have scored at least twice in this game. Is it a question of the goal is coming if he continues this pressure and continues this wave of attack after attack after attack? Or is something looking down on Brighton and Hove Albion right now and looking down on Mark Marley? You've been here before in a final and you've got the silver medal. But Bernardo doesn't give freebies out. He's having to... Right, some luck via Petrchev, but also makes so many big decisions to Bruyne. How much more pressure can this Brighton defence take? Harlands back to Hulley. It's another massive block from Cole Palmer. He's defending for his life, Grosser. And he's throwing his body on the line. I mean, to win titles, you've got to suffer. And when the momentum is this, oh. you got to attack, but the momentum is not shifting. I can't get out of the half. Nice player, luck. Another Man City attack. Will it end in a goal this time? Rashford, Schweinsteiger, Matias Pedano cooking around the box, finally finds a feat of Rodri. It's been 37 minutes, pretty much, of City attacking. It's like a training drill. Attack the defence. Again, now they've got to strap themselves in for another wave of it. How much more can Mark Marley stand? Again, the press is amazing. We gotta look for the build up. Matias Manal build up, all starting for with the fullbacks every single time. Fullbacks, and then you're playing into the midfield, and then you're going back out wide. Pretty much. He is just moving you, he's working. You're around the box, Rashford. Defensively again, it's another massive block from Mark Marley. But he's defending well, Graf, Mark Marley. So he's not biting on anything. He could have went for the second man press, he could have went for the maybe try to predict a skill, but he was patient. Switch apply. Honestly, this first 45, the ball's been in this half. And he's alive. Yeah. He's surviving, he's still standing somehow. He's not only alive, he's in the game. It's only 1 0. For as much as we've talked about City dominating this game, it's only 1 0. This might be it. That's half time. Yep. Chance to breathe at the halfway point. Brighton still in this game. Manchester City 1 0 up still, but they'll be sitting there thinking, how are we 1 0? I would love to see the stats at half time, but the amount of chances that Matias Bernardo has had, we'll be able to see some of the missed chances from the game. I mean, Graveson, how are Man City not 2 0 up on aggregate? Probably because of the time finishing because of Peter Cech, because those saves, especially in the corners, have been a bit too much. This, for me, is the biggest one. I mean, I thought that was going in, but again, the time finishing wasn't green for two times in a row. Another huge chance, Haaland into Holly. Cole Palmer, throw. Cole Palmer. Body. That's Cole Palmer getting his way in front of it. Look at Zach in the back. He thought it were a goal. Look at everyone, but as you can see, everyone is kind of moving, everyone is kind of I don't know. You got two eyes locked on the screen from Bernardo. That's him. That's him. He didn't react to any of those misses. He didn't react to any of those misses. But again, I think we gotta talk about Man City's defense from both Mati and Tex. They haven't conceded a goal yet in the knockouts. 
remarkable. For Matisse Panano in this scenario, Gravison, is he feeling frustrated or is he thinking, look, I'm creating and I'm, I'm going to create more chances? I, I, it doesn't seem like he's frustrated, really. I mean, he seems like he's locked in. So, and the thing is, because he did have a couple of wrong time finishing, but then again, the last one, they were green, the last two of them. So, I think he he's not getting frustrated. And having a coach such as Edu behind him, who is, as we say, he's cold a size as well, I don't think he will get frustrated. He'll come and come and come until he scores. So, in my opinion, for Marley, he cannot allow the press to be made, like he has to go forward. He has to go forward, he has to driven pass, he has to try to player lock, because whenever he catches up a breath, Matias Bonanno is just pressing. Well, he's had about a couple of minutes now, hasn't he, Mark Marley? He's had a breather. We're back on the way. halfway point, we're jumping back in. <laughs> well, I think we're still gonna have a pause, aren't we? between the two players. Remember, this is the Premier League Grand Final. The winner will get £30,000, an invitation alongside the teammate of the team into the FC Pro World Championship Finals later on this year. The biggest event in the calendar, and we're jumping back in to this game now. Only one goal between the two. But Brian of Albion on another day could have been two, three, four, five nil down if it wasn't for some remarkable defensive work from Armani and Petacek. And one of the best games ever. He's defending everything. He's reading everything. If you try to go backwards, he stops it. If you go for the goal, he stops it as well. I do think he's having the perfect performance, pressing-wise, Matias Bonanno. Just needs a goal. One goal, and then the floodgates will open. Is he onside or better? Yes, he is. Corner. Goes Manchester City's way. Keep an eye on that front post, Harlem with a flick on! He's taking them very quick, Graf, so Mark Marley for Brighton can't quite get set up defensively, but in the quickness, maybe he's not fully on board with where he's putting that ball. Yeah, probably. I mean, Edu and him have a lot of corners, maybe the next one. It's a great ball. It's going to be a chance. chance. Is Harlem going to be in that box, potentially? Robbery waiting for some options to collect up in there. Well, it's De Bruyne. Matisse Bonanno has been superb in these areas. De Bruyne going to register their first real chance of the game. Ball falls back again, Carly Bruno Fernandez. And De Bruyne will interchange. As they try and open up any space along these two banks of four of Manchester City shirts. Still. Just recycling again and again. There's nowhere to go. Ten players back. Defended. Is there a way into this box? No, there isn't. A chance to break instead. And I out of position. Nice pass. It was really, really tantalising to watch because you had the, the possession play from Mark Marley, who was trying to probe and probe and probe and cut away through that defence. And Bernardo was reading every single pass. Good second man press. Especially from Bonanno, we any pro, none of the Premier League players had an answer for the Bruno Fernandez long pass ball, but he does have because the player switching and the second man press to Bruno Fernandez is just too quick for Marley to handle. Oh, he's done well to get around the. Oh, play. that's a lucky. The foul gets back. There's Vincent Company. Last 25 minutes in this one. Manchester City on their way to a second E Premier League Championship victory. And they'll be the only club to win the tournament more than once. And it's Brighton of Albion. It's, as crazy as this game's been, as one-sided as it's been, it's only one goal. It really is. You always get one chance in a game of FC. Massive switch of play, Erling Haaland. De Bruyne, yes. he fancy from this far out. Henri, one-on-one -on -one against fullback there. Lofted in, it's a bit desperate and it's not really worked out. It is true that he's not moving the keeper, Mati. So a finesse, finesse there. the finesse is there. You just have to trust it. Into a pause we go again, under 20 minutes left. 
This yes. game's flown by. And it's nil-nil. Might be the best nil-nil I've ever watched. Probably. Because of the defensive display we've seen from both of them. And because sometimes goals are necessary for a great final. Yeah. Even though a goal from Brighton could be... <laughs> You've watched a lot of one-sided games today, Brandon. I have, actually. I've been treated with this one, haven't I? <laughs> Oh my God, all of my games have had six plus goals in them throughout the knockout stages. I mean, last conversations before we find out who's going to be the e Premier League champion from the coaching staff and the teammates behind. His teammate looks on in text, praying that Matthias Bonanno can get this Manchester City side through to a victory here, as we said, not just the trophy, not just the money. World Championship. Final tickets of the FC Pro, the biggest tournament of the year, which you can achieve through this event now. So long ball four is a big win for Brian there. But he's just so isolated. As you see, every Man City sh shirt and player back in their own half, shuffling from side to side. So patient he's had to be, Marley. Defensively, offensively as well. It's good mid. He's teasing that player looking to the strike. He wants to punch it into Ginola. It's just opening up though. There's three shirts in the way. Harlan looks into. Oh! oh! Makes it so well. What's his save? But it's in. Brian Albion equalised with a first short target. He spun him with the step overs. And the little bit of keeper movement, Czech saved it. And he followed it on the rebound. And no reaction from Mike Marley. No reaction. No reaction. Whoa. Look at the player reaction. They were on a lifeline. Game on. But they did not stop believing. Their first shots. You always get a chance. You always get a chance, Richard Buckley. And Brian of Albion might just be on to cause some problems and maybe just find a winner. Surely not. Rodri finds on it. Last eight minutes now of this one. What a turnaround, what a story it would be. In an E-Premier League final for Mark Marley. Unfinished business from 2020. The point of Robert and Fernandez finds Erlen Hall. He's offside. Let's jump back straight into it now, Manchester City. It's the player look. We talked about the player look. But again, the right back. Oh my, what a game. That Matthias Bernardo, Manchester City got the last half instead. It's going right down to the wire here. Look how tight this was. Just went a fraction too early. 88 minutes on the clock, Man City. Go forward. Last kick of the game. Are they about to snatch it now? It's a big win, bam. It's going to be Brian of Albion that might get the last chance. Or might be going into extra time. Massive switch of play from right to left. Finds Cole Palmer. Who can try and steamroll this final attack forward. Matias Bernardo just needs to stand strong. And in time of one minute. One last more chance. attack. Bruno Fernandes. Fai Shinola. Back inside. Marie, what a save. Still alive, though. Time is needed for the first time with the between the Premier League all tournament long, and it's coming in the final. How have Man City? You sit here and you think, how have Man City not got for that game? Mark Marley, we've got to see that chance again as ice. We've got to see that chance again. Well, let's have a look at the offside chance again if we can see it now. This was the moment where this was the, we thought the last kick of the game. Sorry. The goalkeeper oh, movement. Genius. The goalkeeper movement. And the cojones to move the keeper. In that scenario right there. Whoa. You see all the other finalists for the EPL backstage. They thought he thought oh. they even thought what it was at. Mark, yes, Bernardo, though. Did he even blink? Fantastic goalkeeper movement. He has been so locked in. This was the moment where we thought Brian of Albion. Oh, so close. Were to snatch it. We need VAR. It has to be the knee, right? Wow. Extra time, 30 more minutes. We'll have to tell you what 
happens in this scenario because it will stick. If Brian were to win that in normal time, you'd be the typical person to look at the match facts. Uh, Matt Marley, 20 shots to two. And Matthias Bonanno, they stick on the console. They will take their clubs to glory. It's the first time we've been to extra time in the Premier League. And we're going in the grand final. 1-1 on aggregate. Tex won the first leg on the Xbox by Gold to deal. Mark Marley has just survived and put together a ridiculous performance over 19 game minutes. For about 65 minutes, he wasn't in the game. But then just said it, Richard. You always get one chance. A massive switch of play. Harlem might not be in the box, but there are options in there. Cole Palmer will try and weave his way towards a chance. There's to Bruyne fancy it from that far out was a bit too predictable. Still going to rework that chance again for Bruyne of Albion. You can just see the confidence difference in this final third. Cole Palmer down the byline, digs it into Omri. It should be defeated. Another chance. Just to bow. Ginola will try and fight for it. Manchester City will get back on the ball. You just have a look at the subs as well who have come on in extra time. I can see Timo Werner on the pitch, Mikhail Sacco. <laughs> Sacco. Not the centre-back, not Mamadou Sakho. <laughs> <laughs> Saka is on the pitch as well. The game is just switched. It has. This is the momentum we've talked about. Matias Bonanno was playing the perfect game for, we could say, 70 minutes. But then everything can change in just a second. And now Matias, you could say he's kind of shocked. What a ball. What can you do here? Cole Palmer is onside. Defended well by Timo Werner, of all people, that's come back to defend for Man City. Matthias Bernard just needs to get his foot back on the ball, start believing again. Bernard is making the run, yeah, he is. Look at Bernard. Cole Palmer will be out of position, he'll be a running race, is he offside? offside. He is, yeah. just. There's something about those players today. Yeah. Oh, he's just so calm. One additional minute. Left way is not there, he's going to punish. Van Dijk trying to man Mark Haaland, you can see Werner just pulling out. Bruno Fernandes, he's had to come back and do... That's it. Dirty work, it's gone off four. Are we go We're not going to penalties. No, no, please. We're 15 minutes away from it. To the sides, not just this trophy. It's so much Pro more. World Championship spots on the line as well. Matias Bonanno seems to be out of it at the moment. He had 65 minutes, 70 minutes, where the game was his, and he had to win the game in that spell. You're not going to play that level for 90 minutes. It's impossible. When you're playing well, you have to score. He didn't score. And what did that do? We said, it's only 1-0. It's only 1-0. It's only 1-0. And it just left the door open. He's not only come through the door, he's kicked the door down as Mark Marley. And he's living in the house right now. He's so composed still. He didn't celebrate the goal. No. He didn't celebrate the offside goal or the miss. I think that comes from six years in the Premier League of highs and lows and being so close to this trophy before which he was back in 2020. 15 minutes, Brandon. Let's get into it. Jaden can't even watch. I don't blame him. Tex watches on to his teammate Matias Bernardo, prays that he can do enough. 15 more minutes of extra time needed. Or is it penalties? I mean, it was penalties before when Manchester City won the Premier League. Man City to get us going. As we switch from side to side. Great run there from Timo Werner. We'll open up the space between the left-back and the, the centre-back. Oh. Still alive, Cup out! Oh. Oh. We need some company! Surely not a corner. A quick corner to come in. Takes his time a bit more with this one, though. You know where he's looking. Haaland is there! Great save! Pecek! Another corner towards Haaland! Pecek! Oh! oh, no! It's a terrible moment! No! But no! Manchester City won't care! That is heartbreaking! Oh! It's a gift of a goal! They're coming together in the box, you see it again! Pecek did so well, Virgil van Dijk and Cole Palmer run into each other. And the animations, doesn't matter how it goes in. City are 10 minutes away from an E-Premier League title. 
And you see exactly what it means to Manchester City. Takes off his feet, Matias Bernardo roaring. 10 minutes left to play. And what, from what we've seen, anything can happen now. Anything. Anything. Very rarely, you job on his ads. very rarely do you actually see a winner in extra time. A lot of the time it just goes straight to penalties because both players don't really fancy it. They don't want to try and win the game to lose the game. He said, Graf, a corner. Well, there was only so many times, better check. Could save the day again and again, seven minutes away now. Have Brian of Albion got anything left in the tank? Has Mark Marley got one more surprise for us? Cole Palmer. Finds Bruno Fernandes, back to Kevin De Bruyne, who fancies that one! Punched away for a corner. Time ticking away, four minutes left. Of normal time. Cole Palmer might think about lofting that one into the box. Pressure that he must be under now. De Bruyne, back to Henri, step overs. Charles wants to save again. Matias Bernardo matching it up. With some great goalkeeper movement. Not in time to come any seconds. Brian of Albion with their last real chance in this one. De Bruyne, Ginola, overlap so well. Oh, Benny, is there an option? Is there a cutback? Oh, oh good off a corner. Time has been played, but that might be it. This might be it. Unless there's an equaliser now, he's onside. Ginola, can he squeeze it through? He's trying his best. Another corner. Another corner, corner. corner to Brian of Albion. This is it. Has to go direct. direct. <laughs> Only time of one minute's played. I don't think there's going to be enough time. Howard selected. Haaland is there. That's it. And that will do us back. So, so close. Text back with another trophy next to his name. Matias Bernardo on his debut year in the Premier League. Text back on top. Bernardo never left the perch. And Manchester City, E Premier League champions. The Blue Moon has well and truly risen here at the E Premier League. Wow, what a game. Mark Marley, Brighton Hall Albion. Jaden. Yeah. Commiserations to the highest, highest degree. It's so hard to say. Such a cruel way to lose. It really is. A real, real tough pill to swallow for Brighton of Albion, who gave Manchester City a really, really tough well game. We'll speak to them in just a second. They are over the moon. Tex was running around the stage, but his Bernardo off his feet. Do you know what that reaction is? That reaction is, we've assembled this team of two of the best players on planet Earth. Everyone thought, everyone expected us to win. That's all that pressure and all that nerves being released. So when you have that level of pressure, it, you, everyone's wanting you to fail. Everyone wanted Man City not to win this trophy because that was what they expected. And they've gone and done it. Another E-Prem title for Tex and another regular league title for Matias Bonano. Incredible. Yeah. And another one for Manchester City as well. Let's go here from the now that with Frankie. They must be over the moon. What an ending to the Premier League. I had to grab these boys and drag them back here because they wanted to high five every single person in the building and I don't blame them. Matias Bonano, talk to me about that corner retake in extra time. How on earth did you manage to hold your nerve? Yeah, I, I have lucky because it was uh, Haaland and I think the goalkeeper uh, choking and I, I, I have lucky. <laughs> but we know that you have trained for this moment so intensely since you joined Manchester City. We know you also missed quite a few chances at the start of that match. Did you have to reset in your brain and have a conversation with Edu to make sure that you drove it home? 
Uh, yeah, he's in the beginning. I think in the first time I was uh, really, really good. But after uh, after the pause, uh, I think he's, he was better. And I think was a good performance in the first time. And after it was different when he scored, he take confidence. So it's different. Just quickly before I head over to your teammate, Tex, you've won in Argentina, you've conquered South America, you've dominated Spain, and now the E Premier League. What's it like to be a four-time champion? Yeah, I'm so proud of of, the, of myself, of my team. Uh, my team made incredible, incredible match. So I I, I want to say thank you for for my team. Yeah. Next up, E Champions League. Then, of course, the FC Pro World Championship. Tex, you ran around the studio when this man sealed the deal. What's it like playing with arguably the best partner you've ever had? My. That that was intense. That's the most I've ever celebrated in my life. Genuinely, white. Like, they say you make your own luck, and I think we did in that final a little bit. It should have been over early, but obviously, he's got the ice, he's got the composure, and extra time. That's Matty Banano. That is Matty Banano for you, the first leg, 1 0. Did you have a conversation with Banano as he went into that leg? Because you didn't give him much of a cushion, but you did win your match. Um. I, I, do you know what? I can't remember. I genuinely, I can't remember. I think at the start of that game of my leg, I just, I just wanted to win because I seen the way you played in the semi-final. Just give him a lead, and we ain't gonna lose, and we didn't lose. So I want to say thank you for City as well. They put a lot of trust in us uh, to come out and get the Prem Trophy, and that's what we've done. So come on. There is a reason that Manchester City put their trust in two boys standing with me right now. And they're about to show us exactly why as they lift the trophy. But before then, Kyle Walker is standing by with the boys from Brighton. Thank you, Frankie. I am indeed, obviously, heartbreak. This is difficult, I know. Let's go back to that first game. Incredibly tight, Jaden. Can you put into words how you're feeling right now? Yeah, it's just devastated, to be honest. Uh, all credit to Mark, he played absolutely amazing in the final there. And I really think we could have gone on and won it, but as well as. Mark, we can all see, I think everyone was reacting when you managed to pull it back and then in the final few minutes that happens. How do you even explain that, that second game and what happened in that final for you? Uh, yeah, it was just a strange start, to be honest. Just couldn't really get going, then we got the goal and I shot the wrong way in the 90th minute. That ends up costing, you know, World Cup and whatever, but... You know, I'm so proud of us as a team, we really tried our best. Let's try and find some positives. £15,000 between you. You've got the Champions League spots as well. I know it's difficult in this moment to do it, Jaden, but looking ahead, what can come from this season for yourselves? Yeah, we'll definitely work our hardest towards ECL and hopefully do as well as we did here. And Mark, for yourself, looking ahead to this season and what you've got left to play for, you've shown incredible stature, you two here. What can you go on to achieve this season? Yeah, we've just got to, you know, prepare the same way we did for this and hopefully we can go far in that tournament. Right, well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I know how difficult it is, but you've got plenty of fans, not just here, everyone that's been watching, that's seen how incredible you've been this entire tournament. Thank you so much for that one. Guys, I'll throw it back to you. Brandon, what a final that was. And I think it's time we look at our winners. Absolutely, Cole. Yeah, devastating for Brighton of Albion. The only team to actually score a goal against Man City in the knockout stage. And it's to come down to just that one moment in the game. World Cup spots on the line. You you can't put into words how, how he's feeling. I also just, for me personally, massive respect for the Brighton boys even saying yes as well to do the interview there because I think a lot of players, you lose the game in that way, in that fashion. They'd have been out of L Street Studios quicker than I can leave this studio. <laughs> uh, like It would have been a, a truly just devastating, devastating way to lose for City. The back on top, yeah. the back on top of FC in a real emphatic way. They've invested in this team, they've invested in these two players and they've delivered the goods. They'll be back in the Champions League. Without Absolutely. A Without a doubt. Yeah, they certainly will be indeed. Brighton of Albion, unfortunately, runners up for this year's E Premier League. Manchester City are incredible. They've just won this year's E Premier League once again. This was the moment, Richard, where they won. Yeah, what a moment for Manchester City. Back on top. Unbeaten throughout the tournament, Brandon. And it came down right to the wire. And this is their moment. 
An incredible group stage performance into a knockout that was full of goals. Tex and Matias Bernardo will be this year's E Premier League champions. Manchester City back on top. Tex and Bernardo. Congratulations, boys. I know there are so many people in this studio who just want to celebrate with you and to check out your new trophies. £30,000, of course, is yours as well. And the title of E Premier League Champions. Go and celebrate. We're going to bring a few familiar faces on to join us now. Ryan Pessoa and Leah Raval. And of course, Kyle Walker. Wow. I mean, this experience for you, what's your highlight been? I think it's the glitter in your hair currently, uh, Frankie, just there. We'll sort that out. What a day, what a tournament it's been. The celebrations just here, very, very special. You can see how much it means to Tex and to Matias Bonanno as well. They've worked incredibly hard. Tex said it himself, Ryan, you make your own look. Yep. They were very lucky in that one, but they're two of the best players in the world. Yeah, in fairness, I felt like at the start of the, the second leg, I felt as if City should have scored a couple. So as I said, you sometimes make your own luck and it, it fell in their favour. It really did. Leo, what's been your highlight of the weekend? It's hard to say. It's hard to take away from the moment because obviously this is the moment. I have to say Dragon. Dragon, Manchester City, he was last. Manchester United were last in the group and ended up dominating, came back from a 3-0 deficit from his partner yesterday and still had a dominating performance today. So I think they should be proud of that performance as well. And that's what's been so interesting about this season of the E Premier League. Because when you look at some of the names, we've had Marley, for example, showing exactly what he can do in the semi-finals and still holding Bonanno against the wall in that grand final. He's been here six times and he shows no sign of his momentum dwindling. And the same with players now. We're seeing Lyric come back. I mean, Ryan Pessoa, you've known Lyric for so many years. He might have gone down today, but yesterday he came up swinging. Yeah, yesterday he was flawless, genuinely. Didn't concede a goal, took on some top players as well and came out victorious. But I know we'll be disappointed with losing in that fashion, but they're positive to take. I want to talk about that game, Tex against Lyrics, Man City against Tottenham. Set the tone, it feels like, for Tex's yep. day and Matty's day as well. They've gone on to be crown champions. For Lyrics, for Tom, for Tottenham, they can't be down that they got beat by the eventual champions. Tex, he just shows what he can do. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a tough one to take, though, because it felt as if Tom didn't even get a chance to to give the, the second leg a good shot because of how good Tex was against Lyric. So it's a, yeah, it was a huge, huge win for the Man City. It really was. We're seeing players coming back in the mix. Ryan, are we going to see to you back at the Premier League anytime soon? I'll, I'll, I'll let Leah take it. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I think what a break performance. Them, Incredible. You guys can come in if you want. You come in to celebrate with us, all right? Tex and Matisse Bernardo, uh, they're back just here. Uh, Leah, a couple words on our champions. What have you made of their performance? I think it's inevitable they came into this competition with confidence, with experience, and it's no doubt that they have the trophies in their hands. And I have to say, while we haven't got a microphone to talk to you boys, I apologize for speaking on your behalf, but Tex, not for me, we got a microphone. <laughs> you really needed this win, didn't you? I've not won for so long, and every time I feel like I'm getting closer and closer, so when that second leg, should have been 3-0, 4-0. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, man, like this, this is, I'm never gonna win again. But me and Matty, we won, and now I'm buzzing, man, absolutely buzzing. Matty, we talked, so this is very quickly, by the way, domestic leagues, you've cleaned up, you've got the E Premier League just here. How does that feel? Come on, you've got it in your hands. Really, really happy, <coughs> really, really happy. Incredible, uh, my five team in, in my Prem, and we, we won, so I'm really happy. Is that three domestic trophies for Matty? Three domestic trophies for Matty, indeed. Congratulations. Frankie, what a weekend it's been. What a weekend it's been, but if you haven't been able to get enough, you've got to go to e.premierleague.com to check out all the highlights, all the analysis, and also sign up for 2025. Congratulations again to our champions for 2024, Manchester City, Bernardo and Tex. Yes, indeed. Now, the E Premier League will return next season. So if you think you've got what it takes to get up here on this stage, well, make sure you are across all of the Premier League social media, plus e.premierleague.com, and hopefully we'll see you next year. Goodbye. Bye. Welcome to 
the grand finals of the E Premier League. Who will hold their nerve and be crowned our champions? And Man City are really on a rampage here in London. It's party time for Town. Great goal by Jaden. Take him out. This really is the biggest air competition for the rest of these players. To Arlen for four! And it's not even half time! Kevin De Bruyne on the finish! Come on! Mamma mia. 20 Premier League teams down to just two. And Arlen towards that front post. Manchester City! 